50 to 60 miles an hour. The CNY Central First Alert Weather Team. Weather happening now. Get your local forecast anytime at cnycentral.com. It's the 123rd season opener in Notre Dame football history between two schools who have never met. Second year Notre Dame coach Brian Kelly tries to build on the momentum of late last year while South Florida's coach Skip Holtz returns to the campus where his father Lou won the team's last national title. Kickoff is coming right up, but first we head to our Notre Dame studio in New York. Welcome to the U.S. Bank NBC Sports Report. Here's your host, Liam McHugh. Hey everyone and welcome to our New York studio. After one of the ugliest off seasons in the history of the sport, it is fantastic to finally get back to the fun and games of college football. In mere moments, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish will open their season against Skip Holtz's South Florida Bulls. It's now my pleasure to welcome into NBC Sports 1984 Heisman Trophy winner Doug Flutie. Doug, today it's Notre Dame, it's South Florida. What are the keys to the game for the Irish? The number one key for the Irish, I talked to Dane Chris this week out at South Bend. Dane said, I have a lot of opportunities to audibleize. I have to get us in the right play at the right time and keep us out of the negative play. Get us in the right play. And when we have the opportunity one-on-one -on -one outside with Michael Floyd, I got to give him a shot to go get the ball. And we have to make those big plays when they give us that chance. So expectations are certainly high for Notre Dame. They were naturally high for Auburn coming off the BCS National Championship. No defending national champion has dropped their opener the next season since 1991. Pick up third quarter. The Utah State Aggies were leading until Barrett Trotter finds Trevante Stallworth. Don't let this play fool you. It made it look like Auburn had all kinds of time to throw the ball all day long. But Utah State slung it out with them. And I'll tell you what, offensively did a lot of good things. And Auburn wasn't disruptive defensively at all. Utah State appeared to have control of this game, but Auburn storms back two touchdowns in the final two minutes, seven seconds of this one. An onside kick in the middle, got the ball back, come down, score the go-ahead winning touchdown with 30 seconds to go. But I'll tell you what, Utah State converted on three fourth down conversions, one being a fake field goal that set up the touchdown to put them up by 10. Auburn came storming back. Should be that huge of a surprise. You do remember Utah State gave Oklahoma a bit of a scare in week one last year, but Auburn hangs on. That is all for now. Doug and I will see you at halftime. Notre Dame finished up last season with wins over Utah, Army, Southern Cal, and Miami, outscoring those opponents 108 to 39. The question is, can the Irish pick up where they left off? We'll send you back out to South Bend right after these messages. This has been the U.S. Bank NBC Sports Report. U.S. Bank, all of us serving you. When a pro athlete is suddenly called home. Help me build a team the way dad taught us. He'll find out how much he's been missing. Family Movie Night returns. Walmart and P&G present Tackling the Past. Tonight, 8, 7 Central on NBC. The Ford Best Place to Be sales event. It's a great place to be. Check out the Ford Escape with hands-free sync technology and 28 miles per gallon on the highway. Current competitive lessees. Lease a 2011 Escape with sun and sync for just $179 a month. Are you tired of a vehicle that flunks at the pump? Well, allow me to introduce you to the 2012 Kia Forte. Hey folks, it's Caroline and Dave here at Fusillo Kia and Clay. And Dave, how about the lease on the Forte this month? We're doing zero down. 259 a month, great gas mileage, 10 year 136 miles per gallon. 10 year 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty on this car. Five years roadside assistance. Folks, there's one word for it. I think Dave knows it. It's huge. At Upstate, we've always known the importance of giving patients an enhanced level of care. We know the comfort more medical options can bring. We know the value of our combined strengths and the expertise these dedicated caregivers can offer. That's why we know the addition of Community General Hospital to Upstate enhances our tradition of caring for the people of Central New York. Upstate University Health System. Knowing changes everything. The Ford Best Place to Be sales event. It's a great place to be. Check out the Ford F-150 with exclusive EcoBoost technology. That's 22 miles per gallon on the highway. Current competitive lessees. Lease the fuel-efficient Ford F-150 for just $249 a month. Weather alerts and storm warnings at cnycentral.com. For live reports from the sidelines throughout today's game, follow Alex Flanagan on Twitter at NDSideline. 
the Golden Dome on the campus of Notre Dame where they have been celebrating the rich history of Irish football for more than 120 years. And there's nothing like the anticipation of a season opener in South Bend where more than 80,000 are making their way into Notre Dame Stadium with hopes that this might be the year when their team looks more like the ones who won 11 national titles. So now in his second season, it's up to Brian Kelly to once again wake up the echoes at Notre Dame. Notre Dame is built in a tradition that is, in my opinion, second to none. Here come the Irish. But Kelly's inaugural season at South Bend was a series of challenges, dipping to a low point of excruciating mid-season defeats. Reese heaves for the end zone and traffic, and it is intercepted. But a team that could have totally unraveled, bounced back with four straight wins to end the season showing themselves and the Irish faithful a glimpse of the promise to come. Breeze drops to throw. He's throwing a long ball over the top. Touchdown, Notre Dame! So with key, talented performers coming back, it has set the stage for a return to glory in 2011. The last time the Irish won it all, Lou Holtz was the coach. Today, his son Skip brings his South Florida Bulls to the stadium where he played and coached for his father. The 2011 Notre Dame season kicks off next. consecutive sellout here. Brian Kelly in his second year coming off the inaugural 8-5 and five season last year. And his starting quarterback, which he named just a week ago last Tuesday, the day that students came back to school here at Notre Dame, Dane Chris with a nod over Tommy Reese, the freshman last year who led the Irish to those four wins to end the season. And taking on Skip Holtz and the South Florida Bulls as Holtz returns to South Bend and to Notre Dame Stadium for the first time since his dad's final game here back in 1996. And the first ever trip for the very young program of South Florida. Also coming off an eight and five year. They've had some big wins at some big schools on the road, but here they come out for the first time. So welcome to another season of Notre Dame football here on NBC. I'm Dan Hicks along with Mike Mayock who is also in his second season like the coaches that we have here. We talked about Dane Christ. It's not entirely on his shoulders because he's got a multitude of weapons offensively that he can go to. And what I like is a good base. Four or five starting offensive linemen are back, but very few programs around the country boast three difference makers amongst your skill position players. And that all starts with Michael Floyd. Now Floyd had 79 receptions a year ago. He's six three two and a quarter. He's going to win outside the numbers and in the red zone. So if you go over the top and double him with a safety then you're dealing with Theo Riddick converted running back make you miss ability. He's a big play waiting to happen. So if you want to play conservative zone two safeties over the top that opens up the run game. Sierra Wood to me averaged over five yards a carry. I think he's going to have a breakout season this year. So don't be surprised, Dan, if the Fighting Irish run the football in power formations more than they have in the past. Well, the South Florida Bulls head coach, Skip Holtz, the son of Lou, likes to refer to it, the media surrounding him, especially this week, as the circus. So that has been the big headline coming into this game for him. But if he is going to be successful on the field, Mike, he has to have a productive day from his elusive quarterback, B.J. Daniels. Yeah, and a year ago, I thought Notre Dame struggled with the talented spread-type quarterbacks. B.J. Daniels is a gift kid he's got 22 starts under his belt the question is which kid are you getting the quarterback at Clemson that went 20 for 27 one with both his feet and his arm or the quarterback against Florida and West Virginia 
through seven interceptions in two very winnable football games. So he's got special ability. He's a special kid. But, Dan, bottom line, he's got to take care of the football. And the good news for him is he's got the same offense for just the second year in a row for the first time in his career. First ever meeting between these schools, Notre Dame and South Florida, and it is a hot, humid day in South Bend. Temperature at 93 degrees, but the humidity is high, so it feels a lot hotter than that. And there is a very good chance of thunderstorms probably in the second half, but there's also a chance that they may skirt by us here, and we will go without a delay. So a huge day for Skip Holtz in the South Florida program. The program began just back in 1997, and we've talked about the history of Notre Dame celebrating its 123rd season opener. So it'll be the Bulls who kick off, and it'll be Marvin Kloss, number 27, to get the 2011 season going for South Florida. And back deep for the Irish, Theo Riddick, number six, will be a very busy player today. Ankle injury last year, just played in four and a half games, but he is back deep for the Irish as 2011 is underway, and Riddick takes it about five yards in his end zone and takes a knee, so... Dean Christ will come out for the first time at the 20 as we take a look at our starting lineups brought to you by Adidas. Dean Christ, two season ending knee injuries the last two seasons, the latest coming in game nine last year versus Tulsa. That is when Rees came on to provide the winning streak. Up front for Christ is an experienced offensive line. Chris Watt is the newcomer there at left guard. He's got a lot of weapons to go to as we discussed. Floyd out there, T.J. Jones, Riddick, Eifert the tight end, but Sierra Wood could be a big key today, and he's looking for a breakout year. So Notre Dame starts at the 20, and it's Chris to begin out of the shotgun. And he floats it out to the right out of the backfield and Sierra Wood, and Wood's got a first down and more! What into the clear in Bulls territory. Brought down finally by John Legist. But a huge gain of the first play of the year of 32 yards by Sierra Wood. When you have a gifted running back in open space, you really don't even have to make a big block. Look at Trevor Robinson come out. He's the right guard. He doesn't even get a body on 34 Lattimore, but it's just enough for the great cutback by Wood. That's the kid we highlighted in our open, and we did it for a reason. I really believe he's going to have a huge season this year, Dan. So Wood is out. Jonas Gray, number 25, is in, and he gets the carry. And maybe a yard at the most. So the defensive line for the South Florida Bulls up front, probably the most celebrated recruit they've ever had. Ryan Giddens, number 97, the one to watch. Michael Linares. Gets the start at linebacker Sam Barrington and D.D. Lattimore. Very quick linebackers as well. An experienced defensive backfield for USF, led by Quentin Washington, a fifth-year senior. And Chris to the air again, and Michael Floyd with his first reception of 2011. And he's down close to the 20-yard line. And another first down. It was a three-by-one set with Floyd backside. I don't know why Quentin Washington, number two, watch him flash. And Floyd's going to catch the football in behind him. He jumps it. He makes a mistake. Floyd catches the football, and then he makes the Bulls pay with real good run after catch. Again, I don't know where Washington went on that, but the slant, the big body receiver turns it into a first down. Floyd on track to totally rewrite the wide receiving record books here in Notre Dame. He came into the game eight from tying Jeff Samarja on the all-time receptions list, so he just moved closer. And Wood moving closer to the goal line, and another first down, perhaps. Jarrell Young, the free safety, coming up out of the defensive secondary. Athletic left tackle, Zach Martin, center Braxton Cave. Watch those guys get out in front of it, here and here. Real good athletic movement amongst the offensive line. Here comes Zach Martin, good block. You get him one-on-one -on, -one on the edge and a good tackle by Jarrell Young. But look at all that room. You got to have a contained player. And that time, Notre Dame went two tight ends and ran power football. So just short of the first down. Second down, less than a yard. And it's Wood again getting the first down. Interesting when we were talking to Brian Kelly. 
yesterday, he was telling us that we're going to find out if Sierra Wood this year is a BCS back. <laughs> well, and that's where Kelly gauges everything, the BCS. So you're good enough to get us there. Understand he was one of the most highly recruited running backs in the country three years ago. Didn't play as a freshman. Last year came out and had over five yards of carry. Now, he needs to step up to the next level, and to me, that demands patience. Patience to the hole, explode through the hole. So it's Wood again, pounding it up the middle, close to the two-yard line. There has not been a thousand-yard rusher for Notre Dame since Darius Walker back in 2006. Look at the interior push in here. The three guys on the inside, Watt, Gabe, and Robinson. Really good job by Chris Watt, the left guard, pushes the defensive tackle completely across the hole, and then Sierra Wood makes the correct cut, and then we talk in the open. You might see him run the ball more than you expect, and they certainly have in this first drive. Couldn't do much of a better start for Notre Dame on its opening drive. And once again, it's Wood close to the goal line. And he's short, which will bring up third and goal. So the Bulls' defense stiffens at the right time, but the Irish will get another chance to push it across. Yeah, and this was an unbalanced line to the right side. 75, Taylor Dever coming out on the pull, but a real good job by the Bulls inside. Corey Grissom and McCaskill especially. So Wood takes a breather, and it's Jonas Gray as Chris works from the center. They give it to Gray. And Gray is short, and the ball comes loose, and the Bulls have it. And that is number six, Kayvon Webster, with no one in front of him. You talk about a deflator. Now, that's going to be an interesting play to take a look at up in the booth and see when, when and where this football comes out. Because what a game changer, Dan, as you just said. Jonas Gray, this is their big back, 230 pounds. He drops his pad level right there now. The ball gets ripped out, and I believe he's still up. If a whistle didn't blow, that's a touchdown, folks. There's another angle. Now, he stopped there, and the ball's not out. But if the whistle didn't blow, he's certainly up. The ball's loose. South Florida very alertly is lined up for an extra point, and Notre Dame, and I think we're going to get a booth review. Here's a good look right here. The ruling on the field is that there was a fumble. The play is under further review. Wow. You want to talk about a game changer. Okay, there's the hit by Jarrell Young up top. He's the one that rips it away right here. Jarrell Young, the safety. There's the rip. There's no question he's up, and if a whistle did not blow, in my opinion, that is a legal play and a touchdown for South Florida. So taking a look at a 96-yard touchdown return by Kayvon Webster. And Notre Dame couldn't dominate a drive more than they just did in the air and on the ground. You get in a third and less than a foot situation. You put your big back in and he puts it on the ground. I know Brian Kelly a little bit. Jonas Gray might not see the light of day for the rest of the season after that one. After right. further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. You can't put the football on the ground, ever, let alone in that situation. And you can't quiet more than 80,000 quicker than that. Touchdown stands for Webster. And, and give Jarrell Young, number one, total credit here. Watch him rip the football right there. So Macon Bonani on to attempt the extra point for the Bulls. And after Notre Dame just ripped up the field with one big offensive play after another, Kayvon Webster picks up the fumble at the goal line and goes the distance the other way. Notre Dame Stadium in shock, down 7-0. The 2012 M-Class continually monitors blind spots, scans the road to reveal potential threats, even helps awaken its driver if he begins to doze. So in the blink of an eye, it will have performed more active safety measures than most cars will in a lifetime. Introducing the all-new 2012 M-Class, quite possibly the most advanced SUV ever from Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. 6.9 is a breakthrough. 6.9 is a physics 
No, what's the difference? Miller Lite has more taste. <laughs> I don't care, I just got one of these. Yeah, well, that's the second unmanly thing you've done today. What was the first? It's only gonna be two days. I know! I can't do this! I can't do this! That was unmanly. Man up. Choose a light beer with more taste. Grab a triple hops brewed Miller Lite with that great Pilsner taste. Wait, wait, this is the best part. I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. Notre Dame football is brought to you by the Miller Lite Aluminum Pint. Four more ounces of that great Pilsner taste. By Mercedes-Benz, experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. And by Northwestern Mutual, the power to predict your own financial future. Statue of the Four Horsemen at the football facility. The great sports writer Grantland Rice coining the phrase outlined against a blue-gray October sky. We've got a blue-gray September sky here with very hot and humid conditions. As you can go to Notre Dame Extra on NBCSports.com, get all the interviews in action. Keep up. Theo Riddick this time comes out for Notre Dame down 7 nothing, and Riddick gets it close to the 25-yard line. Remember the conversation we had with Skip Holstein when we were in Tampa earlier this week, and all head coaches fear first games. Why? Special teams, things they keep tackling, because you haven't done live tackling, but he also talked about the fear of turnovers. In that time, it was Notre Dame to turn the football over. Skip Holtz, guys, that's at least a 10-point differential, if not a 14-point turnaround right there. All sorts of talk. Hey, is your team going to be intimidated? And Skip Holtz has come in here on a business-like occasion. And at the 25-yard line, Notre Dame will try it again here and try to take care of the football this time as Wood is in there with another good game. And one of the quotes he threw out earlier this week, Mike, was, we're not getting off the bus with cameras around our necks, even though most of these guys have never been to South Bend, never experienced the Notre Dame atmosphere. So a great start for Holtz to get out in front. I've talked to a lot of coaches, visiting coaches that come in here, and they all don't want to get caught up with the pageantry and tradition. They respect it, but they don't want their kids caught up in it. Second and four after the game of six as Chris works out of the shotgun and to give again to Wood and he skirts around the left side and picks up a first down so Wood with a really solid start brought down by D.D. Lattimore the first linebacker. drive yeah six runs two passes on the first drive right back to the run watch what happens after the snap great job out there controlling on the edge by number 70 Zach Martin that allows him to get outside he breaks the tackle of Jarrell Young first down Wood came back rededicated this year. 5 a.m. workouts. And a guy that Kelly can really count on. And Wood, the workhorse so far. This time he stopped at the backfield. And there's Lattimore again from Athens, Georgia, who makes the stop. It's a good football program. We mentioned the program just started up in 1997. But Skip Holtz led the Bulls to their fifth straight eight-win season. They have... Now gone to six straight bowl games. They beat Clemson last year, 31-26 in the bowl game. Three straight wins in bowls. And so they came in here to South Bend thinking they could win this game. As Sierra Wood is very busy, makes another carry, but the Bulls defense honing in on him a little bit better now. And Elkino Watson on the stop. Elkino Watson, by the way, a true freshman defensive tackle for South Florida. They coaches talked the other day. Mark Snyder, their defensive coordinator, said this kid was so talented, they've got to play him right now. The kid's just too talented to put on the bench. And Jonas Gray in the game, down at the bottom of the field. Empty set after the fumble. That's Michael Floyd up top. They're trying to get them to make some decisions, spread the field. Chris looking for its way. He goes underneath, they go out to the midfield mark where he's got his tight end Tyler Eifert, but he is short of the first down, and that'll bring up a punting situation for Notre Dame. And we sat with Brian Kelly and talked about third down situations. 
last year they only converted 38 percent of the third downs when i said you know that's not a great number brian what do you need to do he said i gotta stay out of third and seven i'd rather be in third and two to four and that's what happened there third and long you're going to struggle to convert and your number is going to stay low back deep for the bulls is terrence mitchell number 10 as ben turk punts for the first time in a game and it's not exactly a stellar punt guy. Demetrius Murray, they kind of bump into each other in the backfield. And you'll see a lot of this play action option slide in and out of the back coming out. He may go out, roll out, pass. There's a lot of looks he can give. And sometimes the mesh point right there where the quarterback and the running back are connected, sometimes that gets sloppy because the quarterback's trying to do a great job and the tailback's trying to take the football. Well, it's still game four out of a somewhat bumble play and Daniels this time keeps it and it looks like he got the first down as he went out of bounds and again that is the danger of Daniels they have both planned and unplanned runs and you're going to see Evan Landy a former wide receiver who's now a tight end come around in front and he doesn't even have anybody to block Notre Dame loses contain inside both linebackers Danny Fox goes down First down. First too, down. Too easy right there. From too easy. the 38. Bulls already up 7-0. Daniels out of a shotgun. Runs it right up the middle. Gets close to more first down yardage. This is not the first time that B.J. Daniels has been to South Bend. In fact, after losing his helmet, he, he came to South Florida not only to play football, but also basketball. He came to Notre Dame as a part of the basketball team a couple of years ago and pointed out to us quickly that uh, they got uh, beat pretty badly by a, a superior Irish hoops team. Yeah, and he didn't have to wear the helmet then. And, and on that particular play, he didn't wear it now. Just short of the first down was the headless Daniels, the fake, and to the near side. And he's got Sterling Griffin, another one of those wide receivers who Daniels welcomes back after they were out. Evan Landy, the tight end slash wide receiver. He's the point man in bubble screen. You're going to see six to ten bubble screens today. They take care of you horizontally. Watch the block. Now, athlete in space. Good block on Landy by Landy. And Sterling Griffin gets up the field. Griffin's back after an ankle injury. Had him redshirting last year. So first and ten, Daniels with a play action fake. Looking downfield and deep. And overthrows Sterling Griffin. As we set the Notre Dame defense for you, Gary Gray was on the coverage there of Griffin. Ethan Johnson up front, the leading active sacker for Notre Dame with 12 and a half sacks. Swinar, Captain Lewis Moore join him up front. Manti Tail, who is on everybody's All-American list, anchors the Irish linebackers and Harrison Smith, who had all seven of his career interceptions last year as the leader of the secondary. Now, I played a lot of safety in my life, Dan, and I would hate playing this type of offense at South Florida runs. They spread you horizontally. We just talked about bubble screen, right? They came right back to it. Six to ten times you're going to see bubble screen. So they spread you horizontally, and then they run run game. They want to get it right up there. Darren Lynch, a defensive tackle. This is a 20 formation. It's heavy run and option. Watch out for option. Huge Notre Dame freshman getting their first action. And this is Daryl Scott who is stormed at the line of scrimmage. Notre Dame freshman class, Mike, the tallest in school history. 13 of 24 of them are some 64 or more. Yeah, and again, a lot of heralded young freshmen. But that time it was Captain Lewis Moore, one of the seniors. You saw Lewis Nix, the nose tackle, number nine. When you start mixing in Aaron Lynch, who's an 18-year-old freshman, with Lewis Nix, who's a redshirt freshman, all of a sudden, here comes a field goal opportunity, but all of a sudden, they're one of the most athletic and biggest defensive lines in the country. This is a 49-yard attempt by Bonani, who was 17 of 21 last year. It's got enough leg, and it is good. And South Florida adds to its lead. As Bonani makes it a 10-0 South Florida lead. Still in the first quarter, 4.45 left in the season opener at Notre Dame. You didn't bring Miller Lite? No. What's the difference? Miller Lite has more taste? I don't care, I just brought these. Well, that's the second unmanly thing you've done today. What was the first?
<laughs> yes, that was unmanly. Yes, it was. Man up. Choose a light beer with more taste. Grab a triple hops brewed Miller Lite with that great Pilsner taste. In you go. Get that fish away from me. <laughs> The 2012 M-Class continually monitors blind spots, scans the road to reveal potential threats, even helps awaken its driver if he begins to doze. So in the blink of an eye, it will have performed more active safety measures than most cars will in a lifetime. Introducing the all-new 2012 M-Class, quite possibly the most advanced SUV ever from Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Lightning fast, lightning strong. Verizon 4G LTE, America's fastest and largest 4G LTE network. Verizon, built so you can rule the air. 12 contestants compete in Ireland for two professional tour exemptions in Golf Channel's hit reality series, Big Break. So who are they rooting for? Ireland! Naturally, Big Break Ireland premieres September 20th, only on Golf Channel. So a 49-yard field goal by Mikon Bonani, which ties his career long. Makes it a 10-0 Bulls lead as Marvin Kloss gets set to kick off for South Florida. And again, Theo Riddick is back deep for Notre Dame. Theo Riddick, Ben of Jackson, deep in. Lost the kick. This is going to be Riddick coming out. And Riddick with a good return rolling over the 30-yard line. Brought down by Terrence Mitchell. 31-yard return by Theo Riddick, who handles all the returns for Notre Dame. And we'll be right back with more from South Bend in a moment. Are you curious about new ideas? Do you want to learn a new language? Or just a new word? Maybe you want to know more about anatomy or astronomy. You could master something new or uncover a hidden talent. There's never been a better time to learn. To football. The NFL season kicks off with a meeting of the past two Super Bowl champions. And don't miss live performances by Kid Rock, Lady Antebellum, and Maroon 5. NFL kickoff Thursday night on NBC. Fighting Irish trailing 10 0, 438 left in the first. As they begin this drive at their own 33 yard line, Dane Christ. And the handoff to Jonas Gray, who had the fumble earlier, which led to the 96-yard return for a touchdown. Jarrell Young makes the stop for South Florida. At the outset, we said there was a significant chance of thunderstorms reaching South Bend. So as we look out to the west over Notre Dame Stadium, you can see the dark skies. And by courtesy of our friends at the Weather Channel, the radar shows you a pretty big weather system out west. We are 
just below the tee in South Bend right there. So that seems to be approaching how much of it will get to us. Remains to be seen. Dane Chris rolling out and going downfield and over the head of Riddick. I like his patience. I thought he had a crossing receiver in the mid range, not the deep range there, but I like the patience to keep his eyes down the field and take a shot. So that'll bring up third and short. Just about a yard left for Brian Kelly and Chris. Kelly talks about the maturation process of Chris. He says he's so better mentally and so much better physically. In fact, Chris said he tried to be a little bit too perfect last year before he got hurt. I think he felt like before he could be a true leader, he had to be accountable in every area, and now he feels a lot more confidence in that. So on third and short, Chris from underneath, and a flag has come in. The defensive backfield of South Florida. Offense, five-yard penalty, third down. Now, Dan, we talked about makeable third downs, which Brian Kelly was preaching yesterday, which is that you know third and short underneath three. Now you take it from third and one back to third and six or seven, and it's a completely different defensive scheme set that you're up against. Talking about Chris Kelly also said, I'm looking for maybe a little bit more fire emotion. If a receiver runs a bad route, get in his face a little bit more. And when we talked with Dane Chris yesterday, he said, I've gotten better at that, especially after what you described as doing it on the field. A little too high for four. And that's another thing that they talked about is improving his accuracy. I thought Patrick Hampton almost jumped off sides here. You've got to make this play. You've got some room here on the slant, okay? You've, that's a makeable throw. The ball's up high. I'd also like to see Michael Floyd go get that with two hands. Maybe it's out of his range with two hands. That, that's just a bad throw. So when you start with accuracy as a prerequisite for your quarterback, that was a bad throw. So it's Ben Turk to punt it away again for Notre Dame, and Terrence Mitchell stands back at his 25-yard line. Turk had just a 23-yard punt the first time around, and Mitchell comes out with this one across midfield and well into Irish territory before he's finally dragged down at about the 40-yard line by the punter, Turk. 37-yard punt by Turk, 34-yard return. Now, this kid's got special make-you-miss ability. Terrence Mitchell is only 5'10", 154. Look at the cut. Now he wants to get outside, breaks the leg tackle right there, gets all the way to the sideline, 154 pounds. He's a converted corner. He makes the first guy miss, which is what you got to do as a punt returner, picks up good yardage down the field, and then the first drive, it looked like a Notre Dame game. And since then, it's been all USF. Mitchell from Hillsborough High School in Tampa. Another one of those players, more and more of them staying home in Tampa and going to South Florida. And on the ground here is Lindsey Lamar. We said he was going to be active in the offense. And that was a gain of 17 before Harrison Smith brought him down. Lindsey Lamar is the cousin of Terrence Mitchell. Same hometown, same high school. The two return guys, Lamar and Mitchell, are cousins. And you want to see some make you miss. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 22. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. So Smith made the stop but grabbed onto the mask. Yeah, but, you know, before that, the tackle was missed by Zeke Mata. Right there is 22, Harrison Smith, who I think is one of the better safeties in the country. He gets a piece. That's a good call. And the Bulls on the move. Ball just outside the 10. And the ball is loose. Daniels has it. But now that was incredible. And another flag comes in. I think that's going to be another face mask. Maybe on Smith? It could be back-to-back -back on Harrison Smith. And again, he's their best. Personal foul, face mask, defense, penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. Wow, the leader of that uh, defensive secondary. Second straight face mask. And here's Harrison Smith again. Going too high, gets a piece. That's a good call. Now, give... 
Daniels credit. He doesn't even see the football coming. One hand. Remember, he was pops a basketball in the player. One hand, the pair pops it up. So instead of negative yardage, they get the penalty. Everything going their way. If you're a Bull fan, you want them to pop it in right now and go up 17-0. First and goal. Ball just outside the Notre Dame five. And Daniels pitches it to Daryl Scott, and Scott pounds his way close to the one. Scott was the number one running back prospect out of high school, but he went to Colorado. He transferred there, sat out all last year, but he's in the lineup for South Florida. Yeah, down, down, and pull around. This is a 236-pound load. And when I say a load, I mean that complimentary. Good hit by Harrison Smith to keep him out of the end zone, but you're talking about a 236-pound kid with 4'5 speed. Had some injuries there at Colorado, didn't work out, got frustrated. And now on second and goal, here he is again. Still no call made, as he is very close. Another bad snap. Remember, Chaz They're Hines. going quick, they're going quick. We're yep. going to go quick here, Off the line of scrimmage. <laughs> on third and goal. They caught him. Notre Dame scrambling to get in position. Daniels wants to sneak it across, but he didn't get in that time. Hey, you know, Dan, there's a situation where Daniels had what he wanted. I don't know why he didn't snap the football and get the penalty. Notre Dame had guys running off the field. Okay, look, all the confusion out there. Get under it and snap it because Notre Dame had people. Here comes another guy. There's nobody on the slot. If I'm Daniels, B.J. Daniels, in that situation, you do what a Peyton Manning would do. You get under center and you take advantage of the confusion. So on fourth and goal, Mikeon Bonani, who already hit a 49-yarder, this a chip shot from 17 yards. And he busts it through for a 13-0 South Florida lead with just over a minute left in the first. You know, I've been looking at the numbers, and I think our campus is spending too much money on printing. I'd like to put you in charge of cutting costs. Calm down. I know that it is not your job. What I'm saying... Excuse me? All right. Fine. No, you don't have to do it, okay? Notre Dame knows it's better for Xerox to control their printing costs so they can focus on winning on and off the field. Are you sure I can't? Okay, no, I get it. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. Here you go, big guy. And? Wow. You've got the job. And? Stock options. Those are nice jeans. And? I get off at four. <laughs> Thank you. Marcy forgot to arm her home security system, but with new ADT Pulse solutions, she can do it right from her phone. When Gary travels, he can program his home to help save energy, which can help save money. And with secure video through ADT Pulse, Lisa can know when her daughter is home from school. Introducing ADT Pulse. Now manage and help protect your home from your phone or computer. Plus, save $250. Call or visit ADTPulse.com for a free in-home review. Outside of Notre Dame Stadium at Lou Holtz Gate, where the Irish trail South Florida 13 to nothing. And it is probably here where you find the most poignant link between South Florida head coach Skip Holtz and this university. It's a statue of Lou Holtz erected in 2008, depicting Holtz calling a play. And you see there the wide receiver Tim Brown as Holtz is looking at. A lot of people think that this man right here is quarterback Tony Rice. Well, it's not. It is Skip Holtz. Skip played here in 86 for his father as a walk on was, of course, an assistant on his father's staff in the early 90s. And Dan uh, Skip Holtz has told his team a lot about the history and legacy of Notre Dame, but he has not showed them this statue trying to downplay it all week long. Thanks, Alex. I think he's not going to show him, and partly because what he told us, he said, you know what? 
I'm a lot taller than my dad, and it wasn't depicted in that statue just outside the Correct. stadium. Everybody was the same height, including Tim Brown. So Marvin Kloss kicks off, and this is Bennett Jackson on the return for Notre Dame. So they'll start at the 32-yard line, down 13 to nothing. Well, Skip Holtz did not get a lot of playing time outside of special teams. This is not his favorite highlight. Didn't have a lot of them to begin with, but this was back in 1986 as the Irish played USC. That is Skip Holtz running into the punter. And you don't think he didn't hear about this one, especially after we dug up you want, me to break that one? you want me to break that one down? You Slow, you can't jump, bad angle. <laughs> Other than that, compounded a, by a penalty. A promising player. <laughs> First down and 10 now for Dane Christ and Notre Dame. Shut out so far. They took the opening drive right down the field. This is T.J. Jones, though, for a good game and a first down. Gain of 13 for Jones, who lost his father earlier this year from a brain aneurysm. Very sad day earlier. They looked for the stutter right in here at the slot. I like the read. The stutter wasn't there, and this is an older quarterback. Sees it's not there, comes back to the secondary receiver. Good job by Dane Christ. His father played defensive end on the 88 National Championship team. Sierra Wood for another first down. Jarrell Young caught him in the secondary, but not for board a gain of 18. I told Michael Floyd yesterday in our meeting that I love the way he blocked. Watch him down the field work. He knows his run play. You've got a corner that's running away. All you got to do is get in the way. You don't have to kill people in the run game at wide out. You've got to use proper leverage and let your running back break off of it. Wood now has 60 yards on nine carries. And this looks a lot like the opening drive for Notre Dame when they charge down the field. He's checking. He's got... His big receiver here, but a safety over the top. Here comes Blitz from the corner. The quick hit to Floyd on the corner, and Floyd close to another first down. I think he got it. That's the perfect call against the corner blitz. The corner, Washington, comes off the edge, and they do a great job anticipating it. Now the safety has to come over the top and cover Michael Floyd. He's playing soft and off. Terrell Young makes the tackle down the field. So the end of the first quarter in South Bend, Tommy Rees giving Dane Christ a pat on the back, but down 13 to nothing. And we'll return to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local NBC station. Notre Dame football, you're watching on NBC. I don't understand why guys wear jerseys while they watch sports games. You're not on the team. That's like me watching SVU dressed as a dead hooker. Whitney, coming to Thursdays after The Office on NBC. The Ford Best Place to Be sales event. It's a great place to be. Check out the 2012 Ford Focus, up to 40 miles per gallon on the highway and an available active park assist. During the Best Place to Be sales event, lease a 2012 Focus for just $189 a month. Just $189. Hey folks, Tom Park reminding you that this Labor Day weekend, your Fusilla dealerships are going to be closed on Sunday the 4th and Monday Labor Day on the 5th. But we'll be back strong on the 6th because we're going back to huge here at Fusillos. Back to huge selection, back to huge savings, huge finance opportunities. Enjoy your Labor Day weekend and then come see us during the month of September. And don't miss the back to huge event because you know what it's going to be like Labor Day. Huge. Jim Kenyon investigation. Do you have any comment on this No party? comments. No comments. None. The tough questions. Well, how am I to believe you after all that evidence? Exclusive stories impacting your community. Four children were living in this squalor. You can see evidence that they did live here. Fighting to protect your family. So overall now, what do you think of this home affordable program? It's a whole lie. It's wrong. Jim Kenyon investigations only on the networks of CNY Central. Wayne Mahar, Central New York's meteorologist. Decades of experience tracking storms as they develop. We've been breaking in all afternoon long about this uh, strong area of thunderstorms. Weather alerts threatening your neighborhood. The most important news right this minute is the fact that we still have officially a tornado warning in effect. Precise forecasting you can depend on to plan your day. Well, now let's zero in on who's getting hit right now. Wayne Mahar, Central New York's meteorologist. Only on the networks of CNY Central. Weather happening now. 
The Ford Best Place to Be sales event. It's a great place to be. Check out the Ford Fusion with hands-free sync technology and 33 miles per gallon on the highway. Current competitive lessees. Lease a 2011 Fusion for just $159 a month. Just $159. Find out about community events at cnycentral.com. 16th ranked Notre Dame trailing South Florida 13 0 as they have a first down at the Bulls 26. And this first down line brought to you by Xerox. Chris the fake. And the pass complete to Mike Lagone, the tight end, who backs up Tyler Eifert. And a good, again, a good half field read by Chris. They had the deep route to the corner, which was well covered. Chris looks down the field. Deep route is not there, so you check it down to Ragone. Wide open in the flat, put the football away. Good tackle by Quentin Washington, but a real solid play by Notre Dame offense. Yeah, and that's good enough for a first down for Ragone, who's been plagued by injuries. Missed his sophomore year with a knee, slowed by a quad injury, and they keep it on the ground to Wood. And not much of a game there at all. So more than 80,000 here, but silent. Very, right? very quiet in the stand. Barrington has moved to the Sam linebacker today. Linares moved up in his place. And as you look around the stadium, it, I think people are stunned. 13 nothing, especially and after two. that first drive. And Dan, this is a key point of the game. You hate to say that early, but Notre Dame's got to put points on the board and get this thing turned around right now. So second down and eight. This is Wood. He's got a first down, and he's in for the touchdown. A flag flies in right when he crosses the goal line. I think there's a hold on the outside, and it might even be the receiver. I'm almost sure it's a no hold on Notre Dame out wide. Could be Floyd. Holding. Offense number three. Yep. Ten-yard penalty. Second down. Just complimented him on his blocking, and you can walk into the end zone here. Floyd up the top of the screen. That's good to there. But you can see the hands holding right there on number two, I believe it was. Quentin, yep, he's on Wash, excuse me, Washington, and there's the hold. You can see it much better. Whenever a ref sees fabric pulled, you know he's going to throw his own cloth. Boy, mistakes. You're talking about the first drive fumble, two face masks, the punt return by South Florida, and look at the penalties. Seventh in the country a year ago. They've already totaled that much today for an early in the second quarter. Second down and 18. Kelly wants to get the offense going. Chris caught from behind, escapes, slides in for maybe a first down. Ryan Giddens was there before just when Chris slid. Giddens is their best pass rusher. Coming on number 75, Taylor Dever on the right side. Comes off the edge, he dips and rips. Good job by Chris, feeling the pressure, stepping up into it. Is he the most athletic kid in the country at that position? No, but that's a really good job. So they're going to come out to measure to see if Chris gets the first and goal. Just short. This is important. We talked about game one situations, Dan. Mistakes that head coaches like Brian Kelly are scared to death of, and Notre Dame's done them all, and South Florida's played clean. Key to the game, play clean. It's third and one. And there is Wood for the first down. First and goal, Notre Dame. You notice Jonas Gray has not touched the football since the fumble. Sierra Woods going to get a ton of carries today. Good wedge blocking inside. Drop the pad level. You only needed about a foot. And now it's first and goal inside the five. With the leading rusher last year, more than half of his yards coming in those last four games for Notre Dame, which they won going down the stretch of the season with Tommy Reese at quarterback. Chris hands it off to Wood, and this time he's caught for a loss by Keith McCaskill, the senior from Tallahassee, whose twin brother Kevin is an offensive guard on this South Florida team. 
And this is penetration against a zone run play. Watch what happens with the penetration right through here. You've got to get the cutoff. It's not done when you miss the cutoff, and that's Braxton Cave. Watch the center, 52, Cave. Front side zone, he gets his hand on McCaskill, doesn't want to hold him. That's just good one-gap penetration by the defensive tackle McCaskill for a negative play. Second and goal from the seven. On a good play by McCaskill. Chris to the air in the end zone and in and out of the arms of T.J. Jones. Kayvon Webster on the coverage, the man that took back the fumble 96 yards for the touchdown earlier. T.J. Jones has got to catch this. As bad as the last slant was by Chris, he put that right on his number. Webster was on him tightly, but you got to make that catch right there. That's the difference between a touchdown or potentially having to settle for a field goal if you don't convert here. So third and goal. Chris to the end zone, intercepted. And it's D.D. Lattimore wow. who stops the iris drive. That was horribly underthrown. If you're going to throw the football and he's covered, it's got to go into the band. It's got to go right to the tuba player. You can't underthrow that ball and take points off the board. That, that's a really poor decision by Dane Crest. Good coverage by Lattimore, who undercuts it, but it's short and behind him. You can't make a worse throw than that. So the latest turnover by the Irish. Again, costly as South Florida takes over. down on drinking and driving. Drive sober or get pulled over. USA Prime Credit. My name Peggy. You have problem? Peggy? Okay. Lost my car. Need a replacement sent to my hotel tomorrow. One month. Let's try this again. Do you believe in yourself? Yes. I believe in you too, Peggy. You could be my go-to guy. Or girl. Now stand tall and get out to replace my card. You inspire me. Three weeks. Okay, let's start over. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover. Ranked number one in customer loyalty. It pays to Discover. So your 2.30 canceled. Are you forgetting something? Confirmed. My breakfast. Get me something delicious. Something wholesome. Okay. Okay, I got some tasty choices. Fruit and maple oatmeal, an egg McMuffin, fruit and yogurt parfait, fruit and walnuts, and they're each 300 calories or less. Get out of here! Good job. The simple joy of a delicious breakfast. She's in a really good mood. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. By Discover Card, it pays to discover. By Coca-Cola Zero, real Coke taste and zero calories. And by McDonald's, I'm loving it. One of the statues outside Notre Dame Stadium. Newt Rockney in his 13 year tenure racked up 105 wins, three national titles. That's a look of a football coach from the 20s. You're not kidding, pal. So South Florida going to work and right to work. Sterling Griffin. And that's a gain of 11, so another first down for South Florida. All the Notre Dame miscues so far, Mike. We talk about the first game and all the intangibles. You drive it down the one-yard line, third and one. Jonas Gray gets stripped by Terrell Young. It's taken back 96 yards. Then back-to-back -back face masks, two penalties, and then here's a touchdown. Meanwhile, South Florida in this uh, hurry-up offense, Daryl Scott on the first down carry. But they take a touchdown off the board because of the Michael Floyd penalty. And then after that, Dane Chris makes a horrible decision and throw. So no field goal. They're doing everything they can to shoot themselves in the foot. But let's give South Florida a lot of credit. They're playing well also. Gain of four, second and six. And Daniels gives it to Scott again. And Daryl Scott is driven out of bounds by Harrison Smith, who's been called for a couple of face mask penalties. 
Some of those young pups are on the field too. Ishaq Williams was out there, Stefan Tuitt, Troy Nicholas, three of their, their big recruits in that front seven. So Scott, 6'1, 230 from Ventura, California, picks up the Bulls first down, approaching the 11 minute mark. Empty set, quarterback draw. Great block. Daniels gets a good block on the corner. Oh, oh. Takes it up for a big game. <laughs> Joel Miller absolutely on the crack. It's not a crack back because the defender had an ability to see the block. But watch that out here. That's Joel Miller, the slot. When the ball gets cut back, he is going to absolutely eye up Danny Fox and destroy him. What a hit by Victor Mark. So just about three left for a first down. And Daniels with a quick hit. He had two receivers out there, Sterling Griffin and Joel Miller. They both wanted it, right? And they both wanted it. <laughs> I mean, who was it intended for? I guess that's the question. I think Griffin is the guy they want to get the football to, and it's Griffin out wide. You would think he'd be the blocker, but no. In this particular play, it should have gone to Mark. Excuse me, to Miller. <laughs> Just short of their own 49 on third and three. Fans waking up just a little bit, hoping for a stop. And a good second effort by Scott, but here's he is short, just short of the first down. And again, Scott was the number one recruit in the country at the tailback position three years ago, like you had said, Dan. Went to Colorado. People in Texas cried foul. They thought he was going to go to the University of Texas. Had two very, very average seasons chose to transfer and one of the reasons he went to South Florida is he grew up in that area he's got a cousin in the program and there's some comfort level with knowing people in the area and because they had a tailback graduate a year ago I think he felt like he could step in and play day one yeah he came out of high school the same year that Sierra Wood did and they were two of the most uh, celebrated high school running back recruits as they come out to measure to see if Scott picked up the first down he's that short now interesting what do you do I love this now it's fourth and and what but less than the length of a football you're up 13 nothing everything's going your way you're on the plus side of the 50 skip Holtz has got a huge decision to make right here you know the players want to go for it they just brought their big bodied in Charles excuse me Chris Wright the fullback so they're either going to try and draw them off sides and punt or I think skip Holtz is going for it right here you can see their fourth down conversions last year Half the time and eight. This is unbalanced. They only have two players on this side of the football. Powers to the left. Here comes the tight end. And a pitch to Scott. And he's got the first down. Blanton ran him out. They had a chance to get him behind the first down marker, but. Scott was able to skirt around to move the chains. Yeah, Carlo Calabrese, the linebacker, who's a short yardage goal line guy for Notre Dame, right here. He gets penetration. Now, once you're through, man, you got to make that tackle. That's a difference maker again. Let's give Darrell Scott a ton of credit for running through the arm tackle. Bulls into Notre Dame territory at the Irish 47, leading 13 to nothing. And Daniels with a fake, keeps it himself. Another first down. Robert Blanton ran him out of bounds. But again, another example of what makes him so dangerous. Gain of 12 as he faked it up the middle. Zone read. Again, and watch what happens backside. As we run this replay, you're going to see the contain completely. Darius Fleming, who's a senior, he bites. There's got to be more discipline on the backside for Notre Dame. Daniels to the air. Evan Landy complete. And clock continuing to roll with 9.20 left as we take a look at the Miller Light Taste Greatness. And we take a closer look at what Notre Dame's defense did last year. Wasn't a good start to the season in 2010. First nine games, you look at the record points per game, rushing yards per game, and then the last four games when they tightened up and went unbeaten down the stretch. Second down and five. Demetrius Murray gives Scott a break. And this time, Notre Dame's defense is all over him. Now, I've talked a lot about this offense in South Florida. I watched six of their games on tape from last year. Would hate to play against them. Dan, I, I said six to ten bubble screens. I think they've already run at least five. 
So they spread you horizontally, and now they got a third and five situation. They've got bubble out here, or they can run it back that way. Spread you across the field. Just inside the 30. Left of Notre Dame. Flags come in, stops the play. It might have been tackled, Polpak, 74. False start, offense, number 74, five yard penalty, third down. That is a drive staller right there. Popex right here has nine starts in his career. You can see how anxious he is. He knows it's a rollout to his right. He can't lose a guy inside. He couldn't wait to cut off that inside gap. So now with a penalty, it's third and nine. Moves the ball back. To the 34. And out of the shotgun. Daniels trying to get out of trouble. Brought down the line of scrimmage. Mentai Tail haven't called his name really at all so far, but coming off a year when he made 133 tackles, the most by a Notre Dame player in nearly 20 years last year. Tao, just great individual effort, makes the tackle. Huge play. So that brings up fourth down. And again, it's Mikan Bonani who's already hit a couple. One from 49. This would be a career long from 52. So I guess he's feeling it. And the Bulls give him a go. And it's no good. So Bonani misses for the first time today after helping South Florida to a 13 0 lead. Look at all this stuff for coffee. Oh, there's tons. French presses, espresso tampers, filters. It can get really complicated. Not nearly as complicated as shipping it, though. I mean, shipping is a hassle. Not with priority mail flat rate boxes from the Postal Service. If it fits, it ships anywhere in the country for a low flat rate. That is easy. Best news I've heard all day. I'm so amped. I mean, not amped, excited. I mean, that's sort of amped, really kind of in between. Have you ever thought about decaf? You think that'll help? Yeah. Priority mail flat rate shipping starts at just $4.95, only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. Michael, every day you make me proud. Here's to a future that's as bright as you are. With over 165 years of experience, New York Life can help ensure your loved ones are always taken care of. It's the most selfless gift you can give. Take great stats, one exceptionally smooth taste, and you have yourself the superior light beer. Michelob Ultra, perfectly balanced for the ultra life. It seems everyone is saying they have the best unlimited plan. Here's the truth. AT&T and Verizon give you unlimited text and talk, but charge you extra for going over two gigabytes of data. T-Mobile claims they're unlimited, but use your phone a lot and they slow down your data speed. With Sprint, you don't get charged extra, you don't slow down, and you get unlimited data, text, and calling to any mobile for only $79.99. The best unlimited plan wins. Notre Dame trailing South Florida 13 to nothing. Dane Christ now about ready to try and get something going on offense. In his last series, he threw a pick, and Brian Kelly with an absolutely livid reaction to it, telling his quarterback that he had his receiver, Michael Floyd, in the end zone wide open, Dan. All right. And there it is. are looking at it now, Alex. He forced it. It was underthrown. So I didn't like the decision. I didn't like the throw. You expect more out of a seasoned quarterback. So with a miss, Bonani field goal. Notre Dame sets up at the 35, and flags wow. come in, stop the action. False start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty. First down. How many? How many penalties so far, guys? I mean. There are five penalties, and last year they averaged four and a half per game. So we got five halfway through the second quarter. That was Andrew Nuss, the third guard. Five penalties, which have accounted for 38 yards. So it's Jonas Gray. There he is touching the football and hangs on to it this time for a good game of 10. And as a sports fan, what you really want is the whole story. Don't miss NBC Sports Talk. It's the brand new series that takes you deeper inside sports. Get the whole story every weeknight. NBC Sports Talk premieres this Thursday, September 8th on Versus.
Second down out of the shotgun. Crisp rolling to his left. It was intended for Eifert, but it is knocked away by Michael Linares. Ball is thrown late, and a good job by Linares undercutting the tight end. See him on the edge. Linares is going to undercut right there. Really good job with the correct arm, not interfering with the throw to Eifert. I'd like to see that out about two steps earlier. Make the decision, get the football out, and again, another big third down. So Notre Dame from its own 39 to third and five. Chris over the middle and out of the arms of Riddick. Man. Penalties, fumbles, interceptions, drop footballs in key third down situations. You know, Riddick's been around. He's got to catch this football. That was a real good throw, a very good decision. Catch the football. Nobody's hitting you. There's some heavy, heavy frustration right now, and he's going to get in his face a little bit, which is what we talked about a little bit earlier. So on fourth and five, Notre Dame set up to punt. And again, it's Turk wow. with Terrence Mitchell back deep. Another bad And punt. another weak punt by Turk. As they let it fall just at about at the 23-yard line. It's been all bulls of USF so far. Forty years. Fourteen thousand six hundred and ten days. One point two billion seconds of Gatorade science, passion, and evolution. All for the one second you needed. The G Series. Prime. Perform. Recover. Life will have to flash by even faster. Auto drive brakes on the Cadillac SRX activate after rain is detected to help improve braking performance. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. Now's the time to move from where you are to where you want to go. Look up with US Bank. Let's get the wheels turning. Use our strength and stability to open new opportunities. I can see clear. To lend and lift every business, every dream, to new heights of prosperity. Good things are happening. Just look up with U.S. Bank. In the program's very first visit to South Bend to take on Notre Dame, Skip Holtz and the Bulls have themselves a 13-0 lead over 16th-ranked Notre Dame. Skip Holtz and his path to Tampa and South Florida. He was a wide receivers coach, your offensive coordinator for his father, Lou Holtz. And then he went on to Connecticut to become the head coach for five years. On to South Carolina in an assistant job. And then again, a head job at East Carolina for another five years before landing in Tampa for his third head coaching job now in his second year. His father, of course, college football analyst. Never picks against Notre Dame, but he had to go with his son's team, South Florida, right now, and he's looking like a, a winner in that department as Daniels rolling out. And on the near sideline, B.J. Daniels had Evan Landy. Success reads confidence. I love where this throw went. It play action off zone read. Landy with the hands catch, but he's out of bounds because he didn't control the football. You can see that late. Don't even worry about his feet or anything. Watch where the football goes. It's the ground, pops up in the air, never controls it through the process. Second down and 10. James is bobbled again as Daniels was locked up there with Scott, almost as if he was indecisive on whether he was going to give him the ball or not. It's at the mesh point again. This was a planned run. Jeremiah Warren, the left guard, pulls out. Watch at the mesh point for the second time today. <laughs> when that left guard pulls like that, that should have been a gift. They were setting up a give, and I think the quarterback was wrong there. So that's a loss of three. Third down and 13. Ball back at the 20. 
Daniel sets, fires, complete at the 30 to a Sterling Griffin who is stretching for the first down mark, but he's short. And Gary Gray, the senior cornerback out of Columbia, South Carolina, on the stop for the Irish. And no Notre Dame rotates late here. You can see Harrison Smith coming down. That opens up the play in here. One-on-one. -on -one. Really good effort by Sterling Griffin. Almost gets the first down. So that brings up fourth down and about a yard. And in the punt, Justin Brockhouse Kahn. Number 18 and back deep for Notre Dame. Theo Riddick again. A good punt by Brockhouse Kahn, his father. Aaron for the 49ers, and that one is bobbled. And South Florida takes over again. Victor Mark recovered it for the Bulls. Victor Mark had the big hit on that crack back block. Now, come on, Riddick has been around. You can't make that mistake. He hands it to Victor Mark effectively. If Victor could have kept his feet, he walks into the end zone. But once again, another huge Notre Dame mistake. He's back there because A, he's sure-handed supposedly, and B, he's got explosive make you miss ability, and he should be upset. This Notre Dame team needs to step up and make a play. All the momentum going to South Florida. And stop turning the ball over. First and 10, South Florida in business at the Irish 20. 5.03 left in the opening half. Daniels with a play action. Fires the ball is bottled and incomplete. Intended for A.J. Love. Wow, another opportunity to make a play. Trying to hit the big body receiver, Love. When the ball gets tipped right there, Zeke Mata, ball goes in the air. Good hustle, but you got to end up making a play. And, and Dan, the total yardage right now, Notre Dame's got 70 more total yards, but obviously they're minus three in the turnover department. Second down and 10. Daniels fakes it to the left, rolls right, and dumps it to Demetrius Murray. And Murray's inside the 20, but a long way away from a first down. It'll be third and long. I see some maturity and development with B.J. Daniels. They wanted to run a quick halfback screen to the left. Hopak is going to pull out. Now, watch what happens. Notre Dame gets penetration. It's not there. So B.J. Daniels pulls it down and makes a little something out of nothing. I like that a lot. It shows me his maturity and the fact that he understands situational football. Third and nine. And this is in and out of the arms of Joel Miller. I don't know. Davis Estenor might have caught it. What do you think? <laughs> the right guard. Let me make a play. Everybody else is making a play. Watch what happens when the ball goes up in the air. Good decision just to check it down a little bit. Now the ball goes in the air. Look at 60, Estenor. That's me. I got it. It's all mine. Good job by Notre Dame. Harrison Smith driving on the football. Smith's done well today except for those two major penalties. Two face masks with extended drive. So Bonetti, who missed a 52-yarder on the previous attempt, this from 37 yards, he's already got two in. And this one is up and good. In South Florida, increases the lead over Notre Dame, 16 to nothing. There you go, big guy. And? Wow. You've got the job. And? Stock options. Those are nice jeans. And? I get off at four. <laughs> Thank you. Could switching to Geico really save you 15% or more on car insurance? Do people use smartphones to do dumb things? Send that is the weekend. Yeah, dog. Allow me to crack the bubble in. No man, my dude. Is a gentleman with a bro stash invited to this party? Only if he's ready to rock. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 
We've discovered the original sporting silt in our grandfather's attic. All right, let her rip. We knew we were on something. Just throw that thing over yeah. your back, and you could just shoot down any hill. And you get the sky, and you get the sun, and the trees. Taking your product and making it a reality is really what it's all about. I'm Billy Smith, and I started my business with LegalZoom. We created LegalZoom to help people start their business and launch their dreams. Go to LegalZoom.com today and make your business dream a reality. At LegalZoom.com, we put the law on your side. Tomorrow, only 100 remain as the second leg of the PGA Tour playoffs begin. The Deutsche Bank Championship tomorrow live on Golf Channel and at 3 on NBC. It's 1 versus 100. Brian Kelly in his inaugural season last year got off to the 1-3 and three start. They won three in a row and then the tough losses to Navy and Tulsa. And then they reeled off the four straight wins to end the season to post eight and five, but down in a 16 nothing hole here to South Florida. And I guess they're lucky they're only down uh, 16 to nothing because uh, despite the fumble return for a touchdown by South Florida, the three successive scores with all the turnovers that Notre Dame has made have been only field goals. So silver lining is your defense is hanging in there and giving you a chance to win this game. So it's class to kick off. And back deep is Bennett Jackson, who gets no further than the 25 yard line. Back in a moment to Notre Dame. I've been riding since I was 17, flat out my whole life. Ran into a pretty serious medical issue. I was prescribed one drug one place, another somewhere else. Turns out if I'd have taken both drugs together, I'd have been in real trouble. But United Healthcare spotted the danger and warned my pharmacist in time. We only get one shot, and I want to leave this life exhausted. We're more than 78,000 people looking out for 70 million Americans. That's health in numbers. United Healthcare. Tired sucks. Not end of a long day tired, but middle of the day, places to go, things to do, deadlines to meet, but all I want to do is close my eyes tired. Five Hour Energy fixes tired, fast. One shot, back to work, problem solved. Five Hour Energy, fix the tired. How can power consumption in China impact wool exports from New Zealand? textile production in Spain, and the use of medical technology in the U.S. At T. Rowe Price, we understand the connections of a complex global economy. It's just one reason over 75% of our mutual funds beat their 10-year LIBOR average. T. Rowe Price, invest with confidence. Request a prospectus or summary prospectus with investment information, risks, fees, and expenses to read and consider carefully before investing. Thursday, it's time to get back to football. A new NFL season kicks off with a meeting of the past two Super Bowl champions. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers take on Drew Brees and the Saints. NFL kickoff Thursday night on NBC. 16-0, cause and effect. You turn the football over, the other team's going to score. Jonas Gray, after a great drive, has the ball stripped by Darrell Young. 96 yards later, it's a touchdown. D.D. Lattimore steps in front of a poor Dane Chris Bass. And finally, come on, Theo Riddick. Ball pops up in the air. Great job by Notre Dame's defense, stopping South Florida, forces the field goal. But I'm telling you right now, Irish are fortunate to only be down 16 nothing and the turnover average last year already above that in this opener of 2011 Dane Chris with four minutes left in the opening half flushed out of the pocket and down he goes at the 15 yard line Julius Forte the third defensive end they, his nickname is Juju and he's got an explosive edge pass rush ability coming off this side, here he comes. He flushes and keeps him. He doesn't lose contain. Working against Taylor Dever. Really good job by Julius Forte. Loss of 11 as Sierra Wood takes it across the 20 and gets close to getting back to the original line of scrimmage. Now, Dan, let's, let's talk big picture. 16 0, you're losing. You've got a third down situation here after a first down sack. You've got three and a quarter left in the first half. So you've got to make a play here, but you can't take a sack or throw an interception. 
and your punt game, by the way, hasn't been real good either. What, a 23 or 24-yard punt and another short punt? Mm -hmm. So everything they're doing, you look, Brian Kelly's got no answers. Third and long. Chris steps up, and that was intended for Eifert, and he should have caught the ball and knows it. It doesn't get any worse than this, and you start to lose your confidence as a team when guys start not being able to make plays. Look at Brian. It's right there. Now, you want it on the front hip, but it's on the back hip. Tyler Eifert can make that catch. Is it, is it the wrong side? Absolutely. Dane Chris had plenty of room to drive that to the front side. However, Tyler Eifert's got to make the play. That's where you pick each other up. And South Florida might have a chance here in the closing three minutes of the opening half. Turk gets a little better one off this time as Mitchell comes up to make a fair catch. But South Florida has good field position with 2.52 left. As we remind you that coming up, it's the Discover Card Halftime Report. Doug Flutie paid a visit to South Bend earlier this week, met up with Dane Crist. We'll see what those two QBs had to talk about. Liam McHugh is in our New York studio. He'll have all the scores and highlights from around a big Saturday in college football. And Mike Florio will join him with all the NFL news, including a look at Thursday night's season opener in Green Bay between the Saints and the Packers. So first down and 10 now for South Florida. Today's first down line brought to you by Xerox as the Bulls at the 41 or 42 call it DJ Daniels with a keep and he gains a few brought down by Manti Teo I am really surprised at the lack of contain on Zoden Reed all day by Notre Dame and that time again it was Darius Fleming coming down and Daniels getting outside him for an excellent gain on first down well Manti Teo told us that he gets a text from his father who's his only football coach growing up always at halftime he says it's always good news when it's short I, I have a good feeling it might be pretty long this time I agree and by the way I just saw lightning outside the stadium and it is raining now on second and five for Daniels who gives it to Daryl Scott Scott close to midfield short of the first down brought down by Teo Fleming with good penetration he forced the bounce Teo cleaned it up and now we're looking at a third and short South Florida has all three timeouts and plenty of time. A minute 50 and ticking. There's a look at the weather. Raining, lightning in the distance. They made an announcement earlier in the game to the fans the possibility of weather coming in. On third and two, Daniels thought about running and instead throws it away. Really good coverage by Robert Blanton on that play. They're looking for slant. He took it away. Then he bounced it back outside. He took it away. Excellent job by Blanton. And a smart play by Daniels. Just Throw throwing it away. it away, not trying to force anything. He had 13 interceptions last year. There's a look at the dark skies. So we knew the weather was coming. And as I look at the radar right now, that green stuff doesn't look good but maybe it will skirt a little bit to the north of us that's where it seems to be heading at the moment Theo Riddick who mishandled a previous punt stands back there catch comes up oh, that's just great hangs on wow at the 13 I'm not even sure you want to catch that football when you right after you drop one look at look at the motion here That's great concentration because right there 51 from South Florida Bullock almost made the play 16 nothing South Florida Hey host what you looking at the game Boy done lost his mind Let me educate you on something This ain't no game. These are numbers It's on only DirecTV gives you every game every Sunday afternoon, live, right on your phone. Baby, look what the little man that showed me. Wow, aren't you just the slow cutest? Slow your baby, slow your roll. Now NFL Sunday ticket is included at no extra charge. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. I manage all my own investments, and I try to learn as much as I can about a company before I invest in it. That's why I like Fidelity. They give me tools and research I can't get anywhere else. Their stock screener lets me search for stocks with more than 140 criteria. I can see what their experts are thinking and even call them to bounce an idea off of one of their investment professionals. A good strategy relies on good insight. If you wanted to learn more about a company, I think you'd actually have to be there. Fidelity Investments. Turn here.
Look at the darkening skies west of South Bend, but the only good news right now is it's dropped the temperature just a little bit. There's a look at the radar. Again, we're in the bottom of that T in South Bend, so maybe we'll get lucky and the weather will head north of us. Dane Crisp on first and ten, tosses it out to Theo Riddick, who's brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Lattimore. You know, Lattimore is an interesting kid. He's only a sophomore. Last year, he was Big East freshman player, all freshman team, 69 tackles. He can run, and this whole defense can run. Here we go with a hurry-up offense. Chris intended for Eifert, incomplete. Second down. Dan, I really think Notre Dame's a little surprised by the defensive team speed of South Florida. Correction, third down for the Irish, under a minute left in the opening half. Irish are shell, shell shocked. Can't even say it. Incomplete pass, of course, stop the clock. Advantage for South Florida getting the football back. Interesting to see what happens in the second half. Brian yes. Kelly said, let's, get, the yeah, let's get in the locker room. There was a possibility with bringing up the be a timeout like that. As, as the boos come in now, there was a possibility that Everett Golson, the true freshman from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, applies with boot and quarterback would come in and give Brian Kelly a change of pace on offense. It's a distinct possibility. It wouldn't have been a surprise to see it in the first half. We haven't seen it yet, but you have to wonder about that for the second half. He's a special kid with, with tremendous ability, both with his arm and his feet. Now, Brian Kelly's working with an upperclassman in Dane Christ. I'm not sure he wants to put a true freshman in the crucible of a game like this down 16-0 and saying, okay, kid, you turn it around. Right. That's a lot to ask for, and the game could get out of hand quickly if he turns it over. But he's a kid that we got to keep our eye on because he's got special ability. In fact, there's a separate set of plays for Everett Golson and Andrew Hendricks who back up Chris and Tommy Reese so on fourth down it is Mitchell standing at midfield for Turk on his goal line bit of a high snap Turk just gets it off and Mitchell lets it fall smart and so that will stop the clock with 35 seconds left in the opening half in South Florida up 16 to nothing. And again, I, I'm telling you, 35 seconds, the ball's on the 45-yard line. Looking at the field goal distances already today, plus or minus 50-yard field goal, you've got to get to the 33-yard line. That's 17 plus 6, 23 yards you need to get in. 35 seconds with all, excuse me, with two timeouts remaining. I think that's what Skip Holtz has to be thinking about. Let's get three more. South Florida at their own 44. I look like draw screen or something underneath to kickstart this thing. Pitch. Daniels out to Griffin. And Griffin stops short of midfield by Gary Gray. The two timeouts left. By Gary Gray. I thought they might take one there. Taking really taking their time lining up. Second and four. 19 seconds and rolling. Quick hit by Daniels to Griffin again. And he picks up the first down. Again, Gray on the coverage. This time there's a timeout. Skip Holtz jumping off the sideline looking for a timeout. South Florida, second timeout of the half. And there's the Bulls with one, which is 10 seconds left. Skip Holtz and again trying to not put too much focus on this game and all the hype that came with it said you know what no matter what happens here in South Bend still goal number one is win the Big East. They haven't been in the Big East long but the best they've done there is four and three. He said it would be a great win obviously for the image and the perception of this program Tampa or, or South Florida in Tampa is the ninth largest university in the country. We paid a visit there right. earlier this week, yep. and I was just shocked by the size of the campus. Everybody thinks of those directional schools as some little town, some little school where. Now, this is a state university with 45,000 students. And to your point, they'd much rather be playing for the Big East Championship on December 1st against West Virginia, regardless of this outcome. And Daniel steps up. He just falls on it, running out of bounds. 
Well, I thought he had Sterling Griffin on the, on about what they needed was 15 yards. Sterling Griffin ran a little dig route. You got to rip that one to give yourself a chance to kick a field goal. Like he wanted to throw it, and then he darted back out to the outside with one second left. Actually, they're going to reset it. They put more on the clock with three left. Jeez, I, I really thought he had a chance to make a play there. So. Sterling Griffin is working outside in. Take a look at what happens right there. I know you've got Harrison Smith sitting inside and he saw Harrison Smith, but if you rip it and that receiver sits down, all of a sudden you're in field goal range. And they're just going to fall on it here. And that will bring the opening half to a close and Notre Dame goes to the tunnel hearing boos at Notre Dame Stadium as South Florida has built a 16-0 lead over the 16th ranked Irish of Notre Dame. Turnovers, they got down deep Notre Dame with impressive drives, turned the ball over as we go down to Alex Flanagan. So Skip, how important was it for you to come out here and hit them hard, do something meaningful early? Well, physical, playing a physical brand of football, I mean, that's that's part of what we do. That's how we've been playing. Uh, I just hate that we've had so many opportunities in the first half and haven't been able to capitalize on them like I would have liked to. You still do, though, have a 16-point lead here. We've seen it happen in college football before. Right. How do you keep this lead? Well, we just got to gotta stay focused. We've got to stop some of the mistakes that we've made. I think our defense is playing well. We've given up some big plays, but uh, they had not slowed down. I mean, they're, we're just playing to the whistle, and offensively, we've been in the red zone a couple of times and we've settled for too many field goals. we got to get something going, especially in the passing game. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. South Florida shutting out Notre Dame. Yeah, and the name Holtz looming large once again in South Bend, up 16 to nothing. Stay tuned for the Discover Card halftime report. And don't forget the halftime performance of the Notre Dame band can be seen on NBCSports.com as we send you to Liam McHugh in our Notre Dame studio in New York. Welcome to the Discover Card halftime report, brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. Hey everybody, welcome to the Discover Card Halftime Report. Lee McHugh alongside Doug Flutie. Let's just throw it out there, Doug. Notre Dame is getting crushed by the Blunders right now. They're losing the turnover battle three to zip and they're coughing it up in some bad spots. What's the problem? Just terrible momentum mistakes. Turnovers, penalties, you name it. They march the ball right down the field. A lot of confidence all the way. Sarah Wood comes out of the game. Jonas comes in, Jonas Gray, and fumbles on the carry down the goal line. Turns around, 14-point turnaround. Bad interception in the end zone, getting back into the game. And then a fumble punt. You cannot turn the ball over against a good football team and win. And so far, that's been the problem. South Florida up on Notre Dame right now. Last season, only two FBS programs ran the table, TCU and BCS national champ Auburn. TCU lost to Baylor last night. Let's find out what happened to Auburn today. Utah State, fourth quarter, we pick it up. They're up 31-28, they fake a field goal. That is their third, fourth down conversion of the game to set up a touchdown, hammer the ball in to take a 10-point game with three and a half minutes to go. They were not outmatched at all by this Auburn team. After an Auburn TD cut the Aggie lead to three, an onside kick picked up out of the air by Emery Blake. The ball ruled dead at the spot of the recovery. Auburn caps an eight-play, 56-yard drive. Michael Dyer dives under the pile for the lead. And afterwards, Gene Chizik shaking Gary Anderson's hand, thanking him for the heart attack there on the opening day, 42-38. to 38. No consensus national champ has lost in their ensuing opener since 1991 Miami. Moving on, Alabama, Kent State, Skip Holtz, not the only coach playing his alma mater. Nick Saban went to Kent State, and Nick Saban's got a new quarterback in A.J. McCarron. I'll tell you what, McCarron turns this one loose, hits Mays right up the seam for the touchdown. Nice timing and touch on the throw. He had a nice day overall. As for Trent Richardson, 13 carries, 37 yards. Not exactly Heisman statistics, but he did have three touchdowns on the day. That one gave Bama a 21-0 lead. Kent State 0-22 all-time against ranked opponents. Outscored 182-17 in their last five such contests. Moving on. Let's go Ohio State and Akron. The Luke Fickle era has officially begun in Columbus. Terrell Pryor, he took his body arc to the NFL. The new quarterback is Joe Bozerman. Turns the wrong way, misses a handoff, but makes something out of nothing. He's athletic enough to make a play. He had a very good start. Three touchdown passes, goes off the play action, has a tight end matched up with a linebacker. I'll tell you what, Stoneburner at tight end is a force. We're going to listen to this guy's name all year long making plays. It was watch Bozerman run, then watch Bozerman throw 12 of 16, three touchdowns for Bozerman. 42-0 the final in that one. Indiana State and Penn State. 
84 year old Joe Paterno in the coach's box upstairs and this is how Joe Pa likes to open up a season the opening kickoff Chaz Powell from his own five I loved how Chaz came under control early and allowed it to develop read his blocks and then hit the crease and accelerated took off he just cruised home this one was all Penn State Silas Red rushes in for nine yards out one of his one of two first half touchdowns for him that made it 14 nothing Penn State led 28 to nothing at the half. They go on and roll 41 to 7. Take a look at Northwestern versus the fighting Doug Fluties. Northwestern quarterback Dan Purse is still recovering from a ruptured Achilles tendon. In steps Kane Coulter. Interception by Luke Keekley. He is just a great all-around linebacker. Has a nose for the ball. Sets up Boston College on the one-yard line. This was their only touchdown until the end of the ball game. Boston College had no offense on the day. Things turn Northwestern's way. 21 unanswered points. The Wildcats 24 to 17 winners classes haven't started at Northwestern so it is clearly time to party. Let's take a look at some in progress scores from around the country. Florida State no problem with Louisiana Monroe. Nebraska likewise with Chattanooga. USC taking care of business against Minnesota but check out Houston 31 to 14 over UCLA. Case Keenum lighting it up there still to come. Dane Chris battled back from injuries and then won a QB battle against Tommy Reese. And in the second half, he'll look to lead the Fighting Irish in a comeback against South Florida. Earlier this week, Chris visited with our Heisman winner. Here's my secret fantasy. You're standing behind me. And you call my name because you know I'm weak. You put your hands on my chest. What you do next completely relieves me and takes the weight off my shoulders. Because you offered to take the baby Bjorn for a minute. Come on, honey, please. My shoulders are on fire. The premiere of Up All Night, one week from Wednesday, after the finale of America's Got Talent on NBC. Soft 100% cotton, unbreakable buttons, non-iron for easy care. Right now at Men's Warehouse, it's buy one, get one free on everything in the store. Buy one, get one free on everything. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. It's back to huge season, and Billy is packing in the savings all month long this month of September. Hey, folks, it's Caroline and Dave here at Fusillo Kia in Clay. And Dave, what a deal on the Sorrento this month. This is the all-new 2012 Sorrento, and this month at Fusillo Kia of Clay, we're offering for zero down, $3.39 a month. So $3.39 a month, zero down. That's a brand new vehicle with That's a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty. Absolutely. Come on down and see us here, and we're going to make you... We'll make you huge. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, hey, our new season's coming up, and I've got some big changes planned. Times are tough, so I'm going to slash ticket prices in half. We don't charge. What? We don't charge? Free? We'll never make money off of this thing. Well, okay, you know what? We're not going to change a thing, because my mama used to say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's broken. Fix it. My mama used to also say, stop eating. Your brother's still hungry. Is this Saturday? Where's my audience? Luxurious fabrics, distinctive details, famous designers. Right now at Men's Warehouse, it's buy one, get one free on everything in the store. Buy one, get one free on everything. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Looking for information? Click on Best Bets at CNYCentral.com. Welcome back. Halftime in South Bend. Notre Dame currently being blanked by South Florida 16 to nothing. The fact that his last two seasons ended in physical agony had seemed to only make Dane Chris stronger mentally. And he'd better be after a tough first half, which included a tongue lashing for Brian Kelly. Earlier this week, Doug Flutie had a much calmer, gentler conversation with the QB. Well, we're on the campus of Notre Dame. I'm kind of fired up because when I think of Notre Dame, I start thinking tradition and history. And for me, it was like Joe Montana and Joe Theismann. Mm -hmm. What brought you or what made you decide to come to Notre Dame? I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, growing up, uh, you know, I was a huge USC fan. Uh, you know, I knew of Notre Dame just because of, you know, their interaction with USC and things like that. But, um, you know, I really didn't understand and get it until I stepped foot on campus. I love everything about this place. You know, I love um, competing and, and trying to bring success to the university. There's nothing like it. And then you get banged up a couple of times yeah. and that kind of puts a damper on things, but you fight through that. How'd you get through that? And then afterwards, is everything 100% full go, stronger than ever? Yeah, I mean, right now, um, I'm more than anything, I'm just more blessed than, than anything to be in the situation I am and, and to have no residual effects of, 
of the surgery and you know any limits you know on my body and you know I can't even imagine um, you know not playing again and I know that clock ends for everybody but you know my clock wasn't ready to end you know I, I couldn't give it up and I'm just incredibly thankful for everybody you know around me in my circle. So you get healthy again, you're ready to rock, everything's going good. Now you got to compete for the starting job again. Yeah. You and Tommy neck and neck, everything you know you're fighting for a position. How'd that affect, number one, your relationship with the team, but mostly with Tommy throughout this, now that it's said and done and you're the starter? Yeah, I mean, and um, a lot of people don't understand the relationship that Tommy and I have. Um, you know, I, I really look to him as like a little brother to me, and I think that he looks to me as an older brother a little bit, and it was a tough competition, and I think it was very even at times, and, um, you know, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it made, you know, made both of us better, and it, I definitely think it made the offense better as well. Second and goal from the 10-yard line as Chris Escapes for a moment, tiptoes down the sideline, and has the touchdown. Dane Christ improvising. A lot of expectations this year. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your expectations of this football team for this year? You know, really just going out there, showing um, consistency, um, making you know, showing that you can lead the offense, manage the offense, and put points on the board. I mean, doing those things and taking one game at a time. I think that we've got a special group and a mature group that understands how important those things are, and um, you know, we want to win every game on our schedule. He's obviously an upbeat kid, but the play that's going to be haunting him from that first half, Doug, second quarter inside the 10, he throws an interception. What did you see that he did not? Well, it was an opportunity to close the gap and get back in the ball game. And the bottom line is Theo Reddick is here in the middle, going up the middle of the field. It's a wide receiver versus a linebacker. Put the ball to the back of the end zone now if you're going to throw it. If not, you come off. If you don't like the relationship, you got to come off that and have a shot at Michael Floyd dragging underneath your secondary receiver. The problem was he was a just a fraction of a second late on the throw, and he was poorly underthrown at the time. So he locked in. He had a great matchup, thought he was going to have a play, but when it's not there, pull it down, hit the check down underneath, which would have been Michael Floyd coming underneath. We heard Chris talk about little brother, big brother. Maybe we have a sibling rivalry once again. Tommy Reese was the quarterback when Notre Dame won four straight to end last season. So if you're Brian Kelly, what's your plan for the QBs the rest of this one? I'll tell you what. Notre Dame came out and ran the ball well early, and Dane made a couple plays. But once a negative play happened, it did nothing but go downhill. I wouldn't be surprised to see him pull the trigger quickly. I'd give him one drive, see if he's making anything happen. If Dane Chris can't make it happen early, boom, I'm going to Tommy because he knows he can win with Tommy as well. One half of football in, we may already have a QB controversy. Much more to do here on the Discover Halftime Show. The NFL season kicks off Thursday night. And when we come back, I'll chat with Pro Football Talk's Mike Florio to get the latest news from around the league. USA Prime Credit, tell Peggy your problem. Hey, Peggy, I got five dadgum charges here for Miss Priss's Cat Emporium. Dadgum? Now, Peggy, tell me, do, do I sound like a man who'd have five dadgum charges at a Miss Priss's Cat Emporium? You break up, call back next week. I'm not too old to find you, son. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover. Rank number one in customer loyalty. It pays to Discover. At Exxon and Mobil, we engineer smart gasoline that works at the molecular level to help your engine run more smoothly by helping remove deposits and cleaning up intake valves. So when you fill up at an Exxon or Mobil station, you can rest assured we help your engine run more smoothly while leaving behind cleaner emissions. It's how we make gasoline work harder for you. Exxon and Mobil. Thursday night, back to football. The past two Super Bowl champions face off. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers take on Drew Brees and the Saints. Then, Sunday night, it's football night. The Cowboys take on Rex Ryan's Jets. Don't miss the season premiere of Sunday Night Football. You know the score and you've seen the highlight. What you really want is the whole story. NBC Sports Talk takes you deeper inside the game, giving you the analysis you can't get anywhere else. NBC Sports Talk premieres this week on Versus. Welcome back. The pro game kicks off in five days, so it is time for NFL in the Loop presented by Verizon. Joining me now is Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk at NBCSports.com. Mike, let's begin with the vest heading to the NFL. Disgraced former Ohio State coach Jim Tressel has been hired by the Colts as a replay consultant. His quarterback, Terrell Pryor, was suspended by the NFL for five games because of misdeeds in college. So what does the NFL do with Tressel? Well, for every transaction like this, Liam, the NFL has to approve it. 
and the Colts have not sought the approval of the NFL to hire Jim Tressel. So they have to submit the contract, and then the commissioner will take a hard look at the situation, reviewing all of the facts and circumstances, and making a decision as to whether or not Tressel's eligibility, they don't like to think of it as a suspension, but whether his eligibility must be delayed like it was for Terrell Pryor. And there's a balance there. You want to be fair to Pryor, but at the same time, I think the NFL wants to be careful not to look like it's trying to help the NCAA enforce its rules. It's going to be a tough call for the NFL on this one. Speaking of awkward situations, let's talk about Carson Palmer. He said he would retire if Cincinnati didn't trade him, but he never filed his paperwork. And now there's talk he could report to Cincy. What's the latest? Well, the Bengals are bracing, Liam, for Carson Palmer to show up this week. Palmer's camp is very quiet, but he could show up at any time. And if he's on the roster week one, his $11.5 million salary becomes fully guaranteed. The thinking is the Bengals would welcome him back and get him ready to play. And that's something that Carson Palmer doesn't want to do. He wants to play, doesn't want to play for the Bengals. Intriguing week one matchup, Colts and Texans. Peyton Manning is a big-time question mark. So is NFL rushing champ slash MRI technician Arian Foster. Where does this leave these teams? <laughs> Well, with Peyton Manning, the, the, the reality is there's a huge drop-off to the next guy up, whether it's Kerry Collins or someone else. For the Texans, they may have two Arian Fosters. They like Ben Tate. He was a second-round pick in 2010, missed all of his rookie season, has looked great in the preseason. Hamstring's a pretty important muscle for a running back. I think it makes sense to put Foster on the bench until he's truly 100 percent and go with Ben Tate. All right, Mike, the NFL season opens up Thursday night here on NBC. Saints, Packers, a matchup of the last two Super Bowl champs. It's only week one, but what's at stake here? Well, usually I say throw out the first two weeks of the regular season, but keep this in mind. In that marquee matchup to start the season, the team that has lost since 2005 has not made it to the playoffs. And the home team has won every game in this Thursday night opener since 2003. So that could be good news for the Packers, maybe bad news for the Saints. Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk, thanks so much for your time. The long, painful wait is almost over. Thursday night, the NFL returns. The Packers host the Saints on NBC for live streaming video of NFL Sunday and Thursday night games. Text NFL to 8915 to download NFL Mobile only from Verizon. As for the college game, it's halftime in South Bend. We'll get you back to the action right after this. Been watching the Discover Card Halftime Report brought to you by Discover Card. It pays to discover. Join our team. Become a fan of Sunday Night Football on Facebook. And for live reports throughout tonight's game, follow Michelle Tafoya on Twitter at SNF on NBC. Every game has a turning point. Matthews with the biggest play of the game today. Just keep coming, and we'll find a way to win. It's that time of year, fellas. This is where you put everything you got into it. There's only one person that carries the ball right here. There's one moment in every game. Now it's time to put the throttle down. That changes everything. NFL Turning Point, an all-new weekly series on Versus. Thinking summer work and play? Think Chevy Silverado. No pickup in its Class Beat Silverado's mileage. Lease Silverado now for $269 a month during Chevy's Model Year Epoch at your central New York Chevy dealer. CNYChevy.com. This back-to-school season, it's all about multiple choice here at the Fusillo Auto Mall. Hey, folks, Tom Park with just examples of vehicles all at the same price of $14,888. Take your choice. If you're looking for a Jeep Liberty, a Chevy Impala or Malibu. These are all 14888. Here's a Ford Focus, a Nissan Sentra, We've got a Hyundai Sonata, 14888 or 199 a month, and these are only examples. See more at fusillo.com and don't prejudge your credit. We can help. Remember, it's back to huge. Hey, are you looking for something new and fun to do? Get ready for the ride of your life, because the new Outdoor Adventure Center is now open at Greek Peak Mountain Resort. Get your adrenaline going by flying on four zip lines, including a 1,300-foot mountainside zip. Or learn some tricks on the Euro bungee jump. The Outdoor Adventure Center even has this really amazing mountain coaster that goes up to 30 miles per hour. But you control how fast it goes, so even Mom will have fun. There's an adventure waiting for you at the Outdoor Adventure Center, now open in Cortland, New York. Visit GreekPeakMTNResort.com for more information. Thinking summer work and play? Think Chevy Silverado. No pickup in its Class Beat Silverado's mileage. Now with 0% or up to 6,000 total value. Chevy's model year wrap-up at your central New York Chevy dealer. CNYChevy.com. Make CNYCentral.com your homepage for news anytime. 
back here at Notre Dame Stadium and just as both the Notre Dame Fighting Irish and the South Florida Bulls were running into the locker room the announcer on the PA here at Notre Dame Stadium announced an evacuation of the stadium you can see a lot of folks have not paid heed to that advice as they have stuck around here with weather in the area another look at the weather channel radar shows you all of the stuff north of us and coming in from the west again we're just below the T in the south there of South Bend and we talked to officials about the distinct possibility of it yesterday and when I asked them they said they do not believe they've ever had to evacuate Notre Dame Stadium and that's a lot of history but you shot the clown that's boy. exactly the, that's exactly the situation <laughs> that are, we are in right now and for more we go down to Alex Flanagan Alex well down the stadium slowly being evacuated those who are not taking cover here are being moved to other buildings uh, to the Joyce Center to other buildings nearby but I have to tell you it doesn't seem like people are taking it all that seriously I'm looking out the gate here just outside the stadium and there's thousands of people just kind of hanging out there walking around talking to each other uh, the teams meanwhile both in their respective locker rooms but a very different atmosphere is from what I can tell uh, South Florida the players have taken off their pads they have their feet up taken off their shoes they're using this as a time to relax and kind of um, just take some time and get ready for the second half I've been told that they also are very used to this they practice in Vero Beach uh, they're used to this type of weather in fact they had this happen at a scrimmage earlier in August so they've been through this drill really before now meanwhile I've been told in the Notre Dame locker room it's a much more serious atmosphere I've been told that it is a teaching moment that is going on right now inside right behind me here in the Notre Dame locker room you would imagine that Brian Kelly is using this time to regroup his team and try and come out a much stronger and better in the second half Dan so at this point Mike no telling how long this delay will be uh, the PA announcer here at Notre Dame Stadium also telling the spectators here don't worry we will give you plenty of time to make your way back into the stadium uh, when that moment comes when they think it is safe it is an NCAA regulation that when lightning gets within eight miles of the stadium they need to evacuate not saying that that's exactly what's happened but we have seen some strikes out in the area and they thought this storm was serious enough to go ahead and make what we think is the first ever evacuation of Notre Dame Stadium. I'm happy you're here. I never heard of that particular <laughs> NCAA regulation. If you look at the NCAA manual you need a PhD to get through it. There are so many rules and regulations and you know I look at this thing and, and it, I think it's actually an advantage for Notre Dame. Alex used the term a teaching moment. Mm -hmm. Now. I kind of giggled when I heard that, but it's true. I usually coaches don't go in and scream and yell and go nuts. This is a time to take a step back and say, hey, fellas, we're fortunate that it's only 16 to nothing with the way we played in the first half. Defense, good job, fellas. You know, in a, a fumble return for a touchdown, and you force them into field goals despite everything we did to you on special teams and offense. So I think there's some positives you take out of it, but then you sit down and you get with Dane Christ in that offense and you say, guys, Sierra Wood has, I think, 16 touches for 115 yards. You're moving the football. Run the ball. It's nothing. It's 16 to nothing. Ooh, wow. Huge bolt of lightning just off to the side, the side of us here, and that they, is going to get a lot of these people, people moving. Up. There's a, probably about three, four thousand at, at least people that are still in the stands, and I'm seeing a lot of them go after that. No lightning longer. strike oh, and yes, crack. Uh, no sun. longer an apathetic crowd. They are all hustling out of here now. If that isn't an attention grabber, I don't know what is. <laughs> and now the rain is falling harder now. But, you know, Dan, just to finish that thought from a football perspective, I think Brian Kelly's been around the block enough times. He's been doing this for 20 years. I think it's an advantage. You've got a time now to settle down, get everybody under control. You've got a lot of young players that played snaps and tell these guys, we can still climb back into this thing. We can play Notre Dame football. And then the flip side for Skip Holtz is let's not get too high. Fellas, we're playing okay. It should be worse. We haven't taken advantage of everything, but both coaches will use this time for teaching moments. The hard thing is there's no definition as to how long it's going to last. And we will use this time to uh, do our Northwestern Mutual doing the right thing, presented by Northwestern Mutual. Not a lot of great things done by Notre Dame when they had opportunities early. Well, what they're doing is they're forcing turnovers. Jarrell Young right there turned it into seven. Again, underneath D.D. Lattimore with the pick. Poorly thrown play, but you take advantage of it. And finally, Theo Riddick on the punt return. Poor job by Riddick with South Florida. Hustling down the field, doing the right thing, taking advantage of the turnovers. And after a minus three turnover differential, I can't emphasize enough, 
how fortunate Notre Dame is to only be down 16. It is really coming down right now here. The rain has increased more lightning strikes in the distance and just a few dozen fans mingling about Notre Dame Stadium. Here is the strike that we kind of brought us out of our chairs <laughs> for just a moment or two that uh, wow. OK, struck, and that that got my attention. You know, that'll do more than just uh, the guy on the PA saying to evacuate the stadium. Well, wow. it could have been worse for Notre Dame because you look at the 16 to nothing score and the fact that they have gotten the better of the Bulls in total yards. Um, I guess they're lucky to be down just 16 zip. 191 yards. You're winning the total yards battle, but where you're losing is the most important stat of them all and what determines more football games at every level than any other, and that's turnover differential. Minus three in one half, you're not going to win many games that way. And throughout the season, we will again look at many of the unique things that Notre Dame students and professors are engaged in off the field. My son Marlon is five years old. He didn't have to live through Hurricane Katrina. He didn't have to see his entire city flooded. He didn't have to leave his home and wonder if he'd ever return. He didn't have to watch bodies floating and wondering if there were people we knew. He didn't have to experience what I did. And my hope is that he never will. Through the development of advanced storm surge modeling, Notre Dame professor Johannes Westerink is helping guide the Army Corps of Engineers in the reconstruction of the New Orleans Hurricane Protection System. Storm surge is the rising water that's driven in by hurricanes, winds, and waves. During Hurricane Katrina, an unprecedented level of storm surge developed, and it simply overwhelmed the levees. At Notre Dame, we're able to pinpoint exactly what went wrong during Katrina, and also what can go wrong during hundreds of future storms. Utilizing the results from Dr. Westering's lab, the Corps of Engineers has redesigned the levee and gate closure systems that protect Greater New Orleans. Dr. Westering has been a vital source to rebuilding of New Orleans, not only for the short term, but the long term. His contributions have been absolutely astounding. What inspires me is a, a sense of discovery, a sense of improving technologies, and ultimately helping people live better and safer lives. The University of Notre Dame asks, what would you fight for? Fighting to protect my city. We are the Fighting Irish. Weather delay continues at Notre Dame Stadium and the rain coming down harder and harder. And again, they'll make the announcement when they feel it is safe for the fans and the players to come back out into the field and resume this game. But uh, who knows when that is going to be because you've got about 80,000 people who have evacuated the stadium. That will take quite a long time to get everybody back in. And then the players got to come out, warm up. And so the first evacuation that uh, officials can ever remember here in Notre Dame history happening here in the season opener. And we're a little used to this, Mike, on the PGA Tour, but they haven't had any problems with the weather. The Deutsche Bank Championship thus far as the PGA Tour playoffs for the FedEx Cup continue tomorrow at 3 Eastern time on NBC at TPC Boston. I'm not used to it. Do they have sub air here on the gridiron at Notre Dame Stadium like they do it? What's sub air? <laughs> Sucks out all the water, the greens, or the... All right, let's uh, let's save ourselves and go down to Alex Flanagan. Alex. Hey, Dan. Well, it looks like we might be in for a little bit of a lengthy delay. I'm being told that we are a minimum 30 minutes away from before they reevaluate this storm. That lightning strike that you guys showed that opened the skies and started uh, letting down the rain was kind of what uh, prompted them to reevaluate the situation. Say we're going to wait now 30 minutes and then we will reevaluate again. Now, okay. Best case scenario, if at 30 minutes the storm has passed, they clear the field and it is safe at. That that point they will then go to the two head coaches get them together 
and ask them how much time they both need to get their teams warmed up again. Now, again, I don't know if there's any NCAA uh, precedent for this at all, but it sounds like the coaches get to kind of negotiate, decide how long they need to get their players on the field, to get them warmed up, to get this game started. And then using that information, they will then decide a start time. So at least 30 minutes away before we reevaluate when they might be able to get back on the field, Dan. All right, so 16 nothing South Florida Bulls in the season opener here as that uh, is the first meeting between the two teams and Skip Holtz uh, trying to come out of here triumphant in the very same school that his uh, father won the national championship, the last of 11 national championships for Notre Dame back in uh, 1988. He probably can't wait to get out on the field in Notre Dame, as you said, probably going to use this time to really talk about what went wrong in that first half. Yeah, I'm not sure a lengthy delay helps anybody. You're talking about an hour or two hours. That's just so atypical for football teams to have to deal with. You're used to it in the golf world. We're certainly not used to it in the football world. There's the whole macho thing. We play through bad weather, <laughs> snow, whatever, you know, and we don't have a retractable roof here, of course. So bottom line is, while there's lightning in the area, they're going to have to deal with it. But for the short term, I really do believe it played to Notre Dame's advantage. Well, as the uh, first half was coming to a close, we alluded to the possibility that the young freshman Everett Golson out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, might come into the game for a change of pace for Notre Dame's offense. This was Golson at the spring blue gold game where he was pretty impressive, Mike. You were here in South Bend for that day. Yeah, I did the game, actually. And, and one of the things that's so exciting about this kid is you want to just label him an athlete because he certainly is that. But he's got a big arm. Does he have to work on his accuracy, et cetera? Yeah, he does. But I had a chance to talk to some of the people about his recruiting process also. And he was an early commit to the University of North Carolina. Now, Tony Alford, uh, the wide receiver coach, who's one of their best recruiting coaches, he got on him a little bit late. They worked him hard. They worked him hard. They got him to decommit from North Carolina. And not only did they get the decommit, but they got him to enroll early participate in spring football. You saw that what we just saw as far as the highlights from the spring game. So the question is, do you roll the dice with mm -hmm. a freshman, a true freshman who's 18 years old and has never played a college snap and throw him out there down 16 nothing? And I know you're not a big fan of high school statistics, but I'm it, not. It, it is worth noting that this guy <laughs> threw 151 touchdown passes in high school, which I guess is sixth all time in high school football history. So does even that impress you just the least bit? You and Alex get all <laughs> carried away with this stuff. I mean, did, did he play in western Pennsylvania or did he play in eastern Wyoming? Was it the five, Division 5 game? You have game? the mentality of a coach's <laughs> I mean, let's put the tape on and see if the kid can play. And he's, he passes that smell test. Well, he certainly is impressive, and he's just part of a really impressive uh, Notre Dame freshman class. We also talked about the guys on the defensive side of the football where they added some huge, huge size and depth. And one of those guys is number 19, Aaron Lynch. You're we're talking about six foot six, 270 pounds. He already looks like body type, like an NFL five technique to me, which is a defensive end in a three four. He's gifted. He dominated the spring game. And another recruiting story for you is that he was an early, he was a Florida State commit. Mm -hmm. So it's not like the old days where you commit and you stay. There's all these verbal things, and I think it makes it very difficult for the coaching staffs. You end up offering over 100 kids because there's all these decommits out there. So he was a Florida State kid. They got him to come to campus in January. He loved it so much that not only did he decommit from Florida State, he went home, got his stuff, enrolled <laughs> in school, and stayed for spring. Well, he's a part of a freshman class uh, that they had 24 or so guys, and 13 of those 24 are six foot four or more. They are big and they are talented, and we hope to see them in the second half here as we continue in a weather delay from Notre Dame Stadium. straight to you. Introducing NFL Mobile for 2011. Built to bring you the game. Only from Verizon. Built so you can rule the air. Now's the time to move from where you are to where you want to go. Look up with U.S. Bank. Let's get the wheels turning. Use our strength and stability to open new opportunities. I can see clearly to lend and lift every business, every dream to new heights of prosperity. Good things are happening. 
Just look up with U.S. Bank. Six point nine is a breakthrough. Six point nine is a physics lesson. Six point nine is the outer limits. Six point nine is an explosion. Uh oh, he just got faster. Six point nine is ounces, and that makes this the lightest ever. Well, perhaps Mother Nature can slow down the South Florida Bulls. At halftime, we are in a weather delay, and South Florida leads Notre Dame by a score of 16 to zip. Hey, everybody, Lee McHugh alongside Doug Flutie. So South Florida is rolling right now. Notre Dame just stalling at this point. Dane Chris, though, Brian Kelly said that he selected him because of his leadership qualities. Are you seeing that leadership out there? Well, I think that was the biggest question mark going into this year were his leadership qualities. And he came around, matured. Coach Kelly thought that going through all the adversity, the injuries, he had matured and become much more of a vocal leader and a, a leader by example on the field. But we haven't seen that in the first half. In the first half, once a mistake was made early in the game, it was a nice first drive, but once that mistake was made, things have gone downhill. And as a leader of that team, you got to pick the guys up around you and elevate your play instead of letting that snowball start to roll downhill, which is what has happened in the first half. And we'll see how this QB situation plays out for Notre Dame in the second half when we get there. Yeah, it may be raining at times. It may be thunder and lightning, but no coach in the country feels the heat like the Notre Dame football head coach. Earlier this week, Brian Kelly spoke to Dan Hicks about the pressure of this situation. So you've got one year under your belt here in South Bend. What have you learned about what this program and expectations are all about here? It's what I thought. Uh, I mean, I, I took the job with my eyes wide open, knowing what the expectations are. Um, I, I think Notre Dame football uh, is relevant, uh, but we now need to win football games. So for me, it's about getting our football team to continue to do the things they've done off the field, graduate our players, but we need to start winning. This is the highest ranking in preseason that this uh, that your program has had in some five years. All sorts of high expectations, sure. people talking BCS. What are your realistic expectations? Well, you know, we, we undertake this to win them all. I mean, nobody comes in saying, well, you know, we'll win this one and lose that one. We understand the expectations are high. They have to be. There's no conference championship to play for. So really all you're left with is to, to get to a BCS. So. We want to be part of those elite programs that year in and year out are, are vying for BCS uh, championships. And that's where we have to be at Notre Dame. You gotta say Roscoe! You gotta say Roscoe! We play the game with our head, we play it with our pads, and we play it because we love to play it. One of your matches has been getting back to Notre Dame football. What do you mean by that? Uh, tough, physical, mentally tough for four quarters, uh, never given in. Uh, just some basic traditional values that, uh, that I was brought up on watching Irish football. You know, just that, uh, that grit and determination um, that also represents uh, our fan base as well. Chris escapes for a moment, tiptoes down the sideline, and has the touchdown. The quarterback job was essentially open uh, less than two weeks into the opener. What finally made you decide on Dane Christ? Uh, I think Dane, in his ability to overcome so much adversity, Dane had to overcome another knee injury, his second year in a row where he overcame, in, in large degree, an injury that could have been career-threatening. Um, and his physical tools continued to develop. So I think the mental and the physical, uh, at the end of the day, probably gave him the edge against Tommy. Since 2001, only Mac Brown and Bob Stoops in the FBS have had more victories than Brian Kelly. This weather delay, is this kind of an advantage for the Irish? I think it is a good momentum breaker and allows Notre Dame to come out, start fresh, settle your team down in the locker room, start coaching. I think Brian Kelly really is in there coaching, and Alex Flanagan mentioned it, that he's in there with a calm demeanor right now, coaching his team. Maybe just before you go out, get them all fired up and hyped up. Make your quarterback decision. If it is staying with Dane Chris, coach him up on his mistakes, and let's look forward to the second half and what we have to do in the second half. And the bottom line there is just execute. 
They're running the football extremely well. Make a couple plays in the pass game. And keep the mental game, improve on that mental game. Last year, Notre Dame finished up the season with four straight victories. TCU and Auburn were the only two FBS teams to run the table. Auburn getting a scare, though. The BCS national champ play in Utah State fourth quarter. And the fake punt up 31-28. That's the third fourth down conversion. It being a fake punt that set up this one-yard touchdown run to give a 10-point lead with three and a half minutes to go for Utah State. But Auburn would storm back after TD cut the Aggie lead to three. The onside kick is picked up out of the air by Emery Blake. The ball's real dead at the spot of the recovery, but they cap an eight-play 56-yard drive as Michael Dyer dives under the pile on for, under the pile for the lead. Hug it out at the end. <laughs> Sweet relief for Gene Chizik. Auburn, 42 to 38. What an execution of the onside kick. Getting that big hop up in the air so your player can go get it at its highest point. Great execution by Auburn. Way not to panic. Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide opening their season at home against Kent State. Nick Saban got his education at Kent State, and today he taught them that mercy is for the week. Alabama, they have a new quarterback. His name is A.J. McCarron. That was the big question mark coming in. McCarron, nice anticipation up through the middle of the field, touchdown pass. He had a real solid day overall, and Trent Richardson is the guy that we thought might put up Heisman Trophy numbers. Not the greatest numbers on the day. 13 carries, 37 yards. He did have three touchdowns. Kent State, they should maybe rethink scheduling teams that are ranked. <laughs> oh, and 22 all time. Good payday. 48 to 7, exactly. Cut the check. Moving on, Akron and Ohio State. The Luke Fickle era has officially begun in Columbus. Terrell Pryor has taken his ink off to the NFL, and here is Joe Bosserman. I'll tell you what, man. Make a play out of nothing. He went the wrong way on the handoff, turns into a bootleg, a couple of shakes, and he's in the end zone, so he didn't panic. Here, nice play action pass, one-on-one -on -one with his big tight end, Stoneburner. Stoneburner match up on the linebacker, no contest. 28-yard touchdown there. That gave Ohio State a 14-0 lead, and they rolled in this one final. 42 to nothing. Bosserman, three touchdown passes. Some considered number 21, Missouri, a dark horse in the Big 12. Not that they impressive they today against run. Miami of Ohio. First quarter, James Franklin runs it in himself. That makes it 7 nothing. Red Hawks driving, but Zach Dyser picked off. Nice reaction to the ball. Seeing the ball thrown in the air in a zone coverage, reacting to the quarterback's eyes, and beautiful interception. Missouri leading 10-6. Franklin hits Marcus Lucas in the back of the end zone. 10-yard touchdown pass. Missouri goes up 17-6, and that is the final in this one. Not the most impressive start to the season. Indiana State and Penn State. 84-year-old Joe Paterno in the coach's box upstairs, and this is how Joe Pa likes to open up a season. First kickoff, Penn State's Chaz Powell takes it at the five, and he's gone. I like how Chaz delayed on the beginning of the return, allowed the blockers to set up a cross block right in front of him. Then he accelerated, took off, and cruised on home. Still in the first quarter, up 7 nothing. Double that. Silas Red from nine yards out. They made a 14 zip. Penn State led this one 28 to nothing at the half. 41 to 7 is the final over the Sycamores. Northwestern taking on the fighting Doug Fluties. Northwestern quarterback Dan Purse is still recovering from a ruptured Achilles tendon. He didn't play. In steps Kane Coulter. Nice reaction to the ball by Luke Keekley. He's the guy that has a nose for the ball, leads his team in tackles, everything else, sets up Boston College at the one yard line. But Dan Purse, I'm telling you what, one of the best, the best quarterback in the Big Ten not playing was a big factor today. Northwestern got by without him 21 unanswered in the second. Classes haven't started at Northwestern, so it is time to party. 24 to 17 is the final. That's an update on all the scores and highlights. Right now, we'll send you back, we'll send you to commercial, and after that, to South Bend for more football slash meteorology. Enjoy. <laughs> It seems everyone is saying they have the best unlimited plan. Here's the truth. AT&T and Verizon give you unlimited text and talk, but charge you extra for going over two gigabytes of data. T-Mobile claims they're unlimited, but use your phone a lot and they slow down your data speed. With Sprint, you don't get charged extra, you don't slow down, and you get unlimited data, text, and calling to any mobile for only $79.99. The best unlimited plan wins.
Sometimes your hands could use a hand. Delta Touch 2O technology is now in the bathroom. Another way Delta is more than just a faucet. See what Delta can do. <laughs> see you before you see them. Cops are cracking down on drinking and driving. Drive sober or get pulled over. Well, everybody waiting it out here in South Bend, including the uh, referees, which by now should throw a little delay of game flag <laughs> maybe through the gates there. They've already thrown too many penalties. All right, now. have a look at the uh, weather channel. We go to our local meteorologist, <laughs> Mike Mayock. That's some serious weather out to the west of us. Yeah, I'm told that we're right under the tee. Let's call it that, right in there. And obviously all this, I'm having fun. I've never done this before, huh? The weather thing, this is pretty cool. Now, here comes the front. Now, is it going to skirt us to the north and we'll be okay in a little while or are we going to catch this flush right in the face? All this stuff coming this way. I don't know. If this uh, football thing doesn't work out, you're, it, you're set. I got no shot. So there are the fans kind of leaning in through the tunnel there. The weather looks better. It stopped raining for the moment. But again, a weather delay, which was announced just as the teams ran out after the close of the first half. Let's uh, get another report from Alex Flanagan. Well, Dan, I am joined by a familiar face here. We found former Notre Dame tight end Kyle Rudolph here in the bowels of the stadium back uh, on a break with the Minnesota Vikings right now. Kyle, take me inside that locker room right behind us right now. After this start for your Irish, what do you imagine Brian Kelly is doing in there and telling his players? Um, he's using this extra time as a, you know, an opportunity to calm the guys down, um, to reiterate things he might have said in pregame, and to teach. You know, they have their adjustments that they were going to make at halftime, and instead of having 15 minutes, you know, they're going to have a half hour, an hour, and who knows how long it's going to be. What surprised you about the first half of this game? Uh, the biggest surprise for me was the turnovers. I think, um, you know, that's one of the things, you know, in my past for the first game, that's a big, you know, place huge emphasis on ball control. It's the first game, like, you know, make sure you have control of the ball and, you know, going out there and seeing a few turnovers, I think that surprised me the most. You're one of your best friends is the quarterback, Dane Christ. Not a great start for him. He told me that he expected to be nervous coming into this game. Are you seeing that he's calmed down yet? Um, definitely. You know, in that first drive, I, th I feel like he looked, you know, his best. And, you know, he was calm, making throws. He hit Michael on a big play. And after, you know, the turnover and a few, uh, a few things went wrong, you, you could tell those nerves were back a little bit. And I expect him to take this time to calm back down and come out here and just play in the second half. Okay, while we have you for a few seconds, update us. A good preseason for you up there in Minnesota. How's it going? Thank you. It's going well. You know, uh, this preseason was huge for me coming off the injury last year uh, to be able to get four games in. And, you know, those situations, uh, they're not exactly game like, you know, the regular season, but um, it's great experience for me, and I'm excited for week one. Mike, I know you know this guy well as you've called a lot of the Vikings preseason games here. And uh, Kyle's telling me we should pick him up in our fantasy leagues. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> and Thank you know you what? He had his first touchdown now. Obviously, it's not a regular season yet, but I think it's the first of many. I can tell you right now, I did all four of the Vikings preseason games. The coaching staff loves the kid. They feel like they got a steal in the second round. Obviously, he had the hamstring injury and, and wasn't able to work out like he wanted to in the offseason. He had made a couple great catches, had his first touchdown catch this past week, and nothing but brightness in the future for Kyle Rudolph. Yeah, and a long line of outstanding tight ends uh, here at Notre Dame. Kyle Rudolph, uh, Sierra Wood got off to a uh, really good start in this game. He's really one of the bright spots for Notre Dame, despite being down 16 to nothing. We talked about it. 15 carries in the first half for 84 yards. He also has a reception, one catch for 31. So 16 touches. 115 yards, and if they're not turning the football over, we're probably talking about a different first half score. Sierra Wood, I think, has been one of the few people in the Irish that has played well, has lived up to expectations, and again, it's just all about the turnovers, and I think Dane Chris started out six for eight, like Kyle said, and then one for seven with an interception after that. We've been talking about how it could be even a more lopsided score in favor of South Florida, uh, but let's give them a little credit here. Uh, they had the longest 
touch or a fumble return for a touchdown. 96 yards turned in by Kayvon West Webster. Yep. This after the opening drive for Notre Dame. This guy returned it 96 yards. Again, the longest fumble return for a touchdown by a Notre Dame opponent in team history. So uh, that got things going off to a great start after Notre Dame just drove it right down the field. I mean, turning point. And it's, it's hard to say it that early in a game, but Notre Dame drives all the way down. And, and let's give Jarrell Young some credit also. Now, Jarrell Young is the one that stripped the football. Watch number one come in right here late. Young jumps in and watch the strip right there. Ball is out. Kayvon Webster is going to jump on it and again go 96 yards. I think that turned the entire game around. And the other thing I kind of like, Dan, we highlighted B.J. Daniels. And here's the run again. Jonas Gray. Jonas Gray. Has a strip. Yep, there's the strip. Ball's out. Absolutely the biggest play of the game. And Kayvon Webster, ironically, is probably their fastest defensive player. So when he picks it up in the clear and has all kinds of room to run, nobody's going to get anywhere close yeah, to him. The crowd was on their feet. This, yep. this place was jumping, and then that just kind of was the deflator as he took it the other way. Again, we are continuing to wait out a weather delay here in a mostly empty Notre Dame stadium at the moment. So continue to talk about the Bulls on offense. And at the outset, you talked about how B.J. Daniels had to stay away from turnovers. He's done just that so far. He, he really has. Quarterback draw. That's a planned play. He's probably their best running back. Look at the catch on the bad snap. Make something out of nothing. Huge hit. I love the hit right there. Number 25, Joel Miller put on. And then the throw outside to Sterling Griffin. Griffin's got five catches already for 48 yards. So what I see from the quarterback, B.J. Daniels, is nothing really spectacular. He's been efficient. He's taken care of the football. No turnovers. It's been a total team effort here for South Florida. First ever meeting between the two schools. The first ever trip for South Florida to Notre Dame. And it's gotten even more bizarre. They not only lead it 16 to nothing, but we are in first evacuation in the history of Notre Dame Stadium as we continue to wait it out in South Bend. Tired sucks. Not end of a long day tired, but middle of the day. Places to go, things to do, deadlines to meet. But all I want to do is close my eyes tired. Five-hour energy fixes tired fast. One shot, back to work, problem solved. Five-hour energy fix the tired. Dominate your fantasy football draft? Go to rotoworld.com for your fantasy football draft guide with customizable cheat sheets, mock drafts, and player outlooks for proven results. Rotoworld.com. Dominate your draft. Thursday night, it is back to football. Super Bowl champion Packers take on the Saints, NFL kickoff. And then Sunday night, it is the Cowboys heading to New York to take on the Jets. Bob Costas has Football Night in America live from MetLife Stadium. Coverage begins 7 Eastern or Pacific only on NBC. So a good one to look forward to in the opener in Green Bay. And then the Cowboys and Jets on Sunday night here on NBC. And the weather looking a little better uh, out there at the moment, but again, we have a uh, weather delay. It's going to be a fun uh, Sunday night game. Cowboys and Jets. You've got uh, Rob Ryan, the defensive coordinator for Dallas, going on to take his brother, the head coach uh, of the New York Jets. Uh, that should be fun. And I'm a Ryan fan. I mean, there's so much a breath of fresh, fresh air in the National Football League. You can tell that the apple didn't fall too far from the tree with their dad, Buddy Ryan. And I'll tell you a couple things about them. Number one, they're going to pressure the quarterback. Real pressure or perceived pressure, it's the same thing. Number two, players love to play for him. That's why players will sign with the Jets. While they'll sign 
nine with the Cowboys. And what's really intriguing to me right now in Dallas is the makeover of their offensive line. I've been saying for two years now they're old and unathletic. Well, they take Tyron Smith with the ninth pick and overall. He's their right tackle. They released Andre Garad. Yeah. Hey, they're saying error's over. Okay, new offensive line. Phil Costa, who's he? Everybody's saying he's your new center. John Moffitt, late round pick out of Wisconsin. That entire offensive line's being remade. They're younger, they're more athletic, and they better be ready against Rex Ryan's pressure defense. You want to work on your fantasy football roster? Give no. this guy a call. He, no. he might have a little bit of insight. <laughs> uh, if it just joined us, we uh, continue to wait out a weather delay here at Notre Dame Stadium. There are some of the bolts of lightning that came across the South Bend sky. And they announced an evacuation of the stadium just as the teams headed to the locker room at halftime. Uh, some folks uh, stuck around and then about four or five thousand finally got out of the stadium when those uh, lightning cracks came through the sky and the rains came. No rain at the moment. But as we continue to wait out the weather delay, we uh, mentioned that the uh, Notre Dame Fighting Irish ended the season with four straight wins last year, but there was a big turning point. The season could have totally unraveled after the uh, losses to Navy and Tulsa, but they got back on the winning track against a pretty good football team in Utah, which came in as the number 15 team in the country. So we take you back to that game last year with Tom Hammond with a call and you, Mike Mayock. First meeting between these two schools and the Utes with an 8 and 1 record. Notre Dame riding an 11 game losing streak to AP ranked teams, and they've lost six straight in the month of November, including the last two Senior Day matchups. So Utah is set to kick it off with Nick Marsh. And taken by Jackson. Here's Bennett Jackson getting to the corner, and Jackson crosses the 35, knocked out of bounds after a good return all the way to the 44-yard line. Bennett Jackson getting the game underway with a rousing start for the Irish. And let's take a look at our Adidas starting lineups for, first of all, the Irish of Notre Dame, Chris Stewart. Farewell game for him, the law student slash football player. And today the Irish will open with two tight ends, Eifert and Ragone. And Tommy Reese, the 18-year-old quarterback, won't be 19 until May of 2011. And here he is at Notre Dame Stadium on senior day against a ranked opponent. down handoff to Sierra Wood. Wood replacing the injured Armando Allen. And there's Tommy Reese from the Chicago area. The first Notre Dame freshman to start since Jimmy Clausen did it three years ago. And coming from Lake Forest High School in Illinois, which ran a similar sort of offense to this one. So had a little bit of a head start. He also came in early from high school. Came in in January. Second down. Wood again fumbles the football. But it's going to be ruled down. No fumble. The ball ruled down as Wood crossed with a midfield strike. The ball came free, but he'll be ruled down by this Mountain West Conference officiating crew. And you kind of see the good and the bad with Sierra Wood here. Nice contact, nice running through a tackle, but you've got to hold on to the football. I know he's ruled down. But that's something that will drive Brian Kelly nuts. He's a supremely talented kid. But if you don't protect the football, I promise you, you won't beat Utah. Third down and three for the Irish. Opening drive of the game. Reese, handoff. Wood got nothing. Stacked up in the line of scrimmage. And the first to get there was Silver Salinga from his defensive tackle spot. Pretty interesting first three snaps. Now the quarterback is still on the field. The ball's on the 50-yard line. Are they going to go for it here? Three consecutive runs. It's fourth and a long three. See the signals coming in from the sideline for Notre Dame. And they are going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and three. Toss. Wood. It appears to be short. And so the Irish gambling going for it on fourth down around midfield. And it was Brian Blacken that made the stop 
for the Utes. They hold on fourth down and take over with great field position. And Blecken is just off the screen here. Watch what happens with support. Blecken number two, the true freshman, sees it, trusts it, beats the block, and makes the hit. That is a great job at defeating the block of Eifert and making a ta tackle. We talk about the true freshman, Tommy Reese. How about the true freshman, Brian Blecken, coming up large? So the Irish defense put in a spot here against the ninth-ranked scoring offense in NCAA football, averaging 41 a game. Handoff, Asiata, tailback, makes it to midfield and just beyond the midfield stripe into Irish territory. Look at our Adidas starting lineups for the Irish offense. The senior center, Zane Taylor, all Mountain West, and the strongest player on the team. And Brooks, the leading receiver, he has 40 catches and four touchdowns this season. Tom, I really disagree with the decision by Brian Kelly not to punt the football with a freshman quarterback. Put the ball back at the 10-yard line, give Utah a long field, and take that pressure off of your quarterback as far as field position is concerned. And the Irish unable to run the ball, as has been the case in the last few weeks. Jordan Wynn, the quarterback from the shotgun. Wynn fires across the middle to Smiths, and it's complete. First down for Utah. Darius Fleming, the outside linebacker, he got right in behind him. No redirection, gets behind Fleming, forcing 22 Harrison Smith to make the tackle. And that's the kind of rhythm that Jordan Wynn is most efficient in. Short passes, he can throw the slant, the double slant, and you got to watch these guys with run after catch. 11-yard gain to the Irish 38. That'll be a false start against the Utes. Looked like John Cullen, the left tackle. <laughs> He's got good feet, but you don't want to show him there, John. And as we said, a Mountain West officiating crew. Scott Novak is the referee as we look at the Adidas starting lineups for the Notre Dame defense. Senior Day, of course, finds Ian Williams on the sidelines with an injury, so Sean Swinar starts at the nose for the Irish. That's a crucial position in their defense. First down and 15 after the false start penalty. Four down linemen. They want to run the rush the quarterback. Fake it one way. Hand it off to Asiata, and he stopped for no gain on the play. Irish not fooled as they uh, faked the wide run. Instead, gave it up the middle to Asiata. And here are Adidas Notre Dame starting lineups on defense. And a look at Schwan Schwinar getting that start at the nose tackle with Ian Williams out with an injury. And uh, Manti Teo, 100 tackles, remains among the national leaders. And it's the final home game for Darren Walls with his four career interceptions. Second down, 15. Win retreats the pass. As a man wide open, catch is made. Devontae Christopher grabs the football, but uh, Notre Dame was giving him a little room and uh, preventing the run after the catch, and Gary Gray did just that. Stopped him, it'll bring up third and long after a gain of five yards. And you're right, exactly. It's a soft corner here, and a nice job by Jordan Wynn. They ran the vertical with the inside player, and there's the little hitch. Good tackle, but they pick up seven yards or so, get it back into a manageable third down situation after the penalty. Empty backfield. It's a three by two set. Win being chased. Got away. Now looking downfield. Fires and it is complete. It's going to be close to the first down and they'll mark it apparently enough for the first down. Fatu Moala. Only uh, his third reception of the season as Jordan Wynn did a good job scrambling and finding his man. Coming off the edge, right there, you've got to make a play. Catherine Lewis Moore, you can't allow unimpeded progress of the quarterback to the edge. He has all day to identify his target, Moala, and Blanton comes up late and another big play by Utah. 11 yard gain, first down as they convert a third and long and keep the drive going now to the Irish 27. Win hands off to wide Eddie wide with his first carry of the day goes inside the Irish 25 yard line. 
when they get in that two back set they want to run the football tom that's what we talked about up up top they, they want to get back to the basics who are they they're a balanced offensive team that's a much better offensive team when they run first and allow jordan win to play action there you see the numbers for win through nine games 65 percent completions <laughs> and i mentioned that the notre dame freshman looked like about 12. Jordan Wynn may be a sophomore, but I'm not sure he looks any older either. <laughs> Here's a sophomore who played six games last year, five of them starts as he rolls again to get away from Darius Fleming and has to throw it away. So Wynn throws it away to save a sack. Jordan Wynn from Oceanside, California, sophomore who played uh, six games, five starts last year with eight touchdowns and four interceptions he wound up in a big way though as MVP in the poinsettia bowl throwing three touchdowns against Cal there's Brian Smith and the whole key with what they do is, is disrupting that crossing route that's who we wanted as soon as he disrupted the route all of a sudden there's nowhere to go he's got to throw the football away and that's what you want Utah wants to do hit their guys run after catch and underneath crossing route. another third and long for the Utes man covers across the board and a penalty against Utah for a false, false start, start on the offense. Number 72, my guard penalty. Third down. Slaughter off. Left guard. False start. It's going to make it uh, third down and even longer. Third and 12 now. Their second false start on this drive. Little twitch there by the left guard. Slaughter off. And as you said, Dom, now you're in third and seven. You've got a certain percentage of your playbook. Third and 12, it's a whole different equation here. Keep in mind, field goal wise, right on the borderline also. Win changing the protection. Jordan Wynn stands and heaves to the end zone. And incomplete off the hands of Luke Matthews. Matthews and Gary Gray fighting down the field, and the pass falls incomplete. It'll be fourth down. And this is a man-to-man -man situation. He allows the outside release of Luke Matthews with a little bit of separation. Almost offensive interference with Matthews pushing off, but good coverage by Gray. Ball's overthrown, and now a long field goal attempt. Senior Joe Phillips will attempt it. He's hit 9 of 10 field goals. 48 is his longest. This one will be 47 yards. From 47 yards, Phillips' kick is up, and... It is good. So given a short field after Notre Dame was stopped going for it on fourth down, the Utes are able to get a field goal, and they lead Notre Dame 3-0. The 2012 M-Class continually monitors blind spots, scans the road to reveal potential threats, even helps awaken its driver if he begins to doze. So in the blink of an eye, it will have performed more active safety measures than most cars will in a lifetime. Introducing the all-new 2012 M-Class, quite possibly the most advanced SUV ever from Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing. Sarah, every day spent with you has been a gift. So here's a gift for our new life together. With over 165 years of experience, New York Life can help ensure your loved ones are always taken care of. It's the most selfless gift you can give. You know, I've been looking at the numbers, and I think our campus is spending too much money on printing. I'd like to put you in charge of cutting costs. Calm down. I know that it is not your job. What I'm saying, excuse me? All right, fine. No, you don't have to do it, OK? Notre Dame knows it's better for Xerox to control their printing costs so they can focus on winning on and off the field. Are you sure I can't? Okay, no, I get it. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. We have it in us to be the better men. We already are. Who's with me? X-Men First Class. Thursday, it's time to get back to football. A new NFL season kicks off with a meeting of the past two Super Bowl champions. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers take on Drew Brees and the Saints. NFL kickoff Thursday night on NBC. 
This was happening just a few minutes ago. Skip Holtz, the South Florida head football coach, talking to the respective ADs for both schools. Doug Woolard, director of intercollegiate athletics at USF, and Jack Swarbrick, the Notre Dame athletic director. And then there is uh, Mr. Swarbrick counseling with Brian Kelly, the head coach at Notre Dame. And uh, for more with uh, Jack, we go down to Alex. Thank you, Dan. Well, Jack, bring us all up to date on the very latest with the weather delay. Well, we uh, we had one significant storm move through that had lightning with it. And so uh, we, of course, got everybody uh, to safety. Um, there's another front of some significant size. It's moving fast. It'll come through probably a significantly greater wind and uh, potentially a lot of lightning with it, too. We're going to let that one pass. Um, I'm no meteorologist. We'll see what's on the other side of that. And uh, Hope we can still play some football. So we'll be watching that. You'll be tracking that storm, I'm assuming. And when that cell is, when you're at the back end of it, then you'll reevaluate. Exactly. We'll, you know, we've got a meteorologist up in the operations booth. Uh, we've got real-time weather data and radar, and uh, he's in a position to look at it and interpret it for us. And we're following his lead. I'm guessing that lightning is obviously the concern. So you need to make sure that the lightning is cleared before you can get the players and the fans back in. That's right. I mean, obviously, a, a, a great concern that. Everybody has uh, some shelter if we have uh, lightning that's hitting the ground, and we had some of that. And this next front may pack some significant winds, so we also want to make sure people are in safe places. We saw you meeting with the head coaches and, and your uh, counterpart, the AD for South Florida. What's that? What are those meetings like? What are you telling the coaches? Well, you know, none of us have much experience with this, and so you want to make sure that both teams are operating in the same manner. So we want to get nutrition to both teams. So you set that up. We, nobody watches video, so that's a you know that's one of the things you do during a period like this. So you just want to make sure both teams have the exact same uh, understanding of the information and are operating under the same rules as we work our way through this. Some of the things that you might not think about, Dan. Back up to you. Thank you, Alex. And there is a look at the uh, latest radar. There's the stuff coming in uh, to the west of us. And again, Mike indicating in the telestrator where we are at Notre Dame Stadium. And as Jack indicated, Mike, uh, this uh, weather system that uh, is set to come through in about 15, 20 minutes or so is going to pack uh, more punch than uh, the lightning and the somewhat light rain, heavy just for a little short period of time. But uh, there could be wind involved here. And so this weather delay uh, looks like it's going to last for uh, quite a long time from now. Well, let's just hope the second cell comes through and brings whatever it's going to bring. And on the other side of that, if it's rain and it's wind, it's OK. That's what football's all about. It's supposed to be about the elements. Obviously, you don't want to deal with lightning for safety purposes. But once the lightning is eradicated from the forecast, what I'm hoping is regardless of anything else, let's get out and play some football. I mean, right. this isn't golf, big boy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like you know I'm at a saying? golf tournament. I, I, well, I, trust <laughs> let's, me. Let's go back to last year's tournament. But, <laughs> but you know what we're going to do? We're going to go back to November 13th in a game you called with Tom Hammond okay. that helped turn around the Notre Dame season. So, again, we head back to South Bend from last November and your call with Tom. First down, Irish from their own 23-yard line. There's a movement. Looks like it might have been offside, which drew the uh, Irish player. Selinga, was it uh, an offside call? Offside. Was indeed. Defense number 98 jumped into neutral zone, caused the offensive player to react. Five yard penalty. First down. Selinga with the offside gives the Irish a first and five situation. There's a look at uh, Kalani Sataki, the defensive coordinator of the Utes, who is the only one of the players and staff, or at least the only one of the staff, uh, that has really been into Notre Dame Stadium. He played as a member of the BYU Cougars at Notre Dame Stadium. Almost jumped again. Number four consecutive runs for nine yards the first possession. They're going to start to throw the football. <laughs> and now the Irish forced to spend a timeout. <laughs> Look at Brian. He's going, come on. Keep in mind. Notre Dame wants a fast pace. And even though you've got a freshman quarterback who you're trying to help, you got to get over the football and go. Well, we mentioned Kalani Sataki, the defensive coordinator of Utah. Uh, no stranger to Notre Dame Stadium. Back in 1994, he was a freshman when the BYU Cougars came in to Notre Dame Stadium. And he would provide the key block on a Jamal Willis touchdown that helped BYU defeat the Irish that day, 21 to 14. That was pretty cool talking to him. He remembered it like it was yesterday. And so after uh, spending the timeout, Notre Dame ready to go on first and five. 
Sierra Wood still unable to run. Stop for a loss in the play. The Irish uh, running game has just been non existent in recent games. They just have not been able to run the football. And they really do need to be able to, and they're trying to take the pressure off them. And Braxton Cave, watch him get out on the defensive tackle. Now he's underneath them and he buries them. That's a situation where the running back Wood has to help him and cut it up inside that block. And that's what Brian Kelly told us the other day. Wood's got to be more patient. On second down, Reeves' pass is incomplete, batted down. Christian Cox came away with the football, but it'll be an incomplete pass. It's going to bring up third down for the Irish offense, and Reese and company have not been able to get anything going. Yeah, it was a corner blitz from the backside picked up by Wood, and then the knockdown. It looked like uh, Silver Silinga there got his big paw up there, and Cox almost got the interception, bringing up a third and about six, Tom. Reese. In the pocket, got protection, threw it into a crowd, and it's incomplete. Intended for Damal Kamara, who's making his final appearance at Notre Dame Stadium. A dangerous pass from Reese. It falls incomplete. You know, I really felt like he did a great job sliding in the pocket, but then he forced it to Kamara. There's too many people around Kamara. You can't throw that. Michael Floyd coming the other way was wide open as he broke his route and moved inside. Now here's Shaky Smithson, who leads the nation in punt returns, averaging nearly 23 yards a return, number one in FBS. And then the punt trying to punt it away from Smithson, who catches up to it at the 30. Now trying to go outside to get some running room, corralled and taken down at the 30-yard line. That time, uh, the nation's leading punt returner did not get a single yard after a 41-yard boot. So you see there's a flag on the play. During the return, blocking it back, return team number 49, 10-yard penalty, first down, timeout. So another Utah penalty, this one by Trevor Riley. It'll cost the Utes, but they'll have the ball when we return to Notre Dame Stadium. Another good thing about GEICO is they've got, like, real live people working there 24-7. So, like, say you need to report a claim, right? A real person will be there to help you. Then you can use geico.com to view photos of the damage, track your claim, print an estimate. You want an English muffin? They literally hand you a toasted muffin with butter and jam. <sighs> oh, tasty. That's a, that's a complete dramatization, of course, but you get my point. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Here you go, big guy. And? Wow. You've got the job. And? Stock options. Those are nice jeans. And? I can off it for. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm in a timeout because apparently riding the dog like it's a small horse is frowned upon in this establishment. Luckily, though, I, you know, I can conceal this bad boy underneath my blanket just so I can get on E-Trade, check my investment portfolio, research stocks. Wait, wh why are you taking... Oh, I see. Solitary. Just a man and his thoughts and a smartphone with an E-Trade app. Nobody knows... E-Trade. Investing unleashed. Sir, no smoking. Country is free, huh? Put it out. Huh? Maybe I put you out. Hey! Thank you. Prime Suspect, coming to Thursdays at 10, 9 central on NBC. Right now, it's buy one, get one free on everything big and tall in the store. Everything. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. This back-to-school season, it's back to huge here at Fusillo Hyundai on the Boulevard. Hey, folks, Tom Park, and many lessons and extra credits are online at Fusillo.com. One of the many lessons you'll learn is that you'll see all of our inventory, new and pre-owned, right there at Fusillo.com. Set a service appointment. Value your trade-in. You know, you can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and see more on YouTube as well. There's a lot to learn 
online at Fusillo Hyundai. It's huge. That's what he calls himself. No, that's fine. Hey, guys, I'm kind of freaking out. I have to upload a movie project for finals or else I won't graduate. So please, shut that stuff down until I'm done, okay? Sure, no problem. Living with Wi-Fi hogs? Let me play. No. Get super fast wideband from Time Warner Cable. Thank you. Thank you. You can go back on now. I got it. You are lifesavers. All the bandwidth you could ever need. Sure. No problem. From our fastest internet ever. Hey, are you looking for something new and fun to do? Get ready for the ride of your life, because the new Outdoor Adventure Center is now open at Greek Peak Mountain Resort. Get your adrenaline going by flying on four zip lines, including a 1,300-foot mountainside zip. Or learn some tricks on the Euro bungee jump. The Outdoor Adventure Center even has this really amazing mountain coaster that goes up to 30 miles per hour. But you control how fast it goes, so even Mom will have fun. There's an adventure waiting for you at the Outdoor Adventure Center, now open in Cortland, New York. Visit GreekPeakMTNResort.com for more information. Luxurious fabrics, distinctive details, famous designers. Right now at Men's Warehouse, it's buy one, get one free on everything in the store. Buy one, get one free on everything. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Today in Central New York, what's happening now? And in motion is done. And this time they'll give it to Wide. And stepped up. Just shy of the first down marker, it would appear. It'll be marked short. It'll be third down and about a yard for the Utes. And that's a setup play right there. The jet sweep with number 14, Reggie Dunn. They fake that. Ultimately, they'll come back to that. They're hoping that Notre Dame's defense, as he comes across, they're hoping Notre Dame widens and they give the football inside. Later on, they'll come back and hand the ball off. Nice job by Notre Dame. But a short third and short situation for the youth. Third down and one from the 28 yard line. The defensive tackle right there lined up at tight end. That's their heavy group. Number 92 and 93, both defensive tackles, Asad and Sekoli. Counter play, they give to wide, and he picks up the first down before being thrown back and losing his helmet. On the hit by Notre Dame, led by Brian Smith, the first man to arrive on the scene. Backside guard Tavita Stevens pulls. See Tavita Stevens pull and then watch the block at the point. Try to collapse it downhill. Good job by Stevens. The running back cuts it up inside. And Tom, exactly what we talked about in our pre show, which is this is not a finesse run team. And I think they got away from their running attack way too early when they got down 14 0 early last week against TCU. First down from the 33. Rolling to his left, Wynn loads and fires, and the pass is picked up. Intercepted by Harrison Smith. Boy, did he do a great job. He tracked the wide receiver, Jeremy Brooks, all the way across the field in man coverage, and then undercut the receiver and made the play. I give him a ton of credit there. Watch 22 here. He's going to come all the way across. Watch what happens off the play action. Safety inverts. He picks up the crossing receiver. That's textbook safety play. Now he comes underneath, makes the play on the ball. That is a big-time play by Harrison Smith. Harrison Smith, the senior from Knoxville, Tennessee, although he is eligible to apply to the university for another year of eligibility. So we'll see if the offense now can do anything with the turnover. He's going to get Michael Floyd involved here. And the second timeout taken by the Irish. And Brian Kelly says, son. <laughs> Can't repeat what else he's saying. Oh, man. You know what, Tom? I was a 14-year-old high school quarterback with my father. And I, I know that one. Notre Dame timeout. We'll be back. Get crazy for a shot. Two-time Olympic gold medalist and defending champion Sean White joins Paul Rodriguez as they rip up Salt Lake City at the Toyota Challenge. Coverage begins next Saturday on NBC. Hi. Right now, it's buy one, get one free on everything big and tall in the store. Everything. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. This back to school season, it's back to huge here at Fusillo Hyundai on the Boulevard. Hey folks, Tom Park, and 
Many lessons and extra credits are online at Fusillo.com. One of the many lessons you'll learn is that you'll see all of our inventory, new and pre-owned, right there at Fusillo.com. Set a service appointment, value your trade-in. You know, you can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and see more on YouTube as well. There's a lot to learn online at Fusillo Hyundai. It's huge. That's what he calls himself. No, that's fine. I'm kind of freaking out. I have to upload a movie project for finals or else I won't graduate. So please, shut that stuff down until I'm done, okay? Sure. No problem. Living with Wi-Fi hogs? Let me play. No. Get super fast wideband from Time Warner Cable. Thank you. Thank you. You can go back on now. I got it. You are lifesavers. All the bandwidth you could ever need. Sure. No problem. From our fastest internet ever. Hey, are you looking for something new and fun to do? Get ready for the ride of your life, because the new Outdoor Adventure Center is now open at Greek Peak Mountain Resort. Get your adrenaline going by flying on four zip lines, including a 1,300-foot mountainside zip, or learn some tricks on the Euro bungee jump. The Outdoor Adventure Center even has this really amazing mountain coaster that goes up to 30 miles per hour, but you control how fast it goes, so even mom will have fun. There's an adventure waiting for you at the Outdoor Adventure Center, now open in Cortland, New York. Visit GreekPeakMTNResort.com for more information. Luxurious fabrics, distinctive details, famous designers. Right now at Men's Warehouse, it's buy one, get one free on everything in the store. Buy one, get one free on everything. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. Today in Central New York, what's happening now? Harrison Smith with his third career interception has given the Irish good field position. Our first down line brought to you by Xerox. Irish having to spend the time out. Now here's the first down play. Reese will be sacked. Back to the 48 yard line after that sack. The sack was by uh, Salinga and uh, Shelby. As we look at the Adidas starting lineup for that youth defense with Christian Cox, seven and a half career sacks. Chaz Walker, the former walk on their top tackler. A couple of small corners today now. Burton 5'9, Chapman 5'8. But the Irish so far unable to take advantage. That one tipped by Derek Shelby, incomplete. So Notre Dame's offense, two possessions, two plus, counting this one. Now with the nine plays, they've gained less than 10 yards and have not picked up a first down and have spent two timeouts. So it's been a frustrating start for Tommy Reese and the Irish offense. Yeah, ineffective in the run game and no completions yet in the pass game. You'd show blitz and then back out of it. So Reese finds Michael Floyd. Actually, it was Hughes, 33 instead of three, who made the catch right on the sideline. Yeah, they rotated to a cover three look where the corner comes up and then the linebacker, and he threw, actually sprinted right into it and rolled into it. Martinez had an easy play and a good tackle. Ben Turk will punt it. And Shaky Smithson, high towering punt. Smithson calls for a fair catch and makes it with an Irish player right in his face. And now it's time for our Gatorade Prime to perform. Utah's Shaky Smithson put on a couple of punt return clinics. Touchdowns already this season, September 11th. He went 55 yards against UNLV for a score. And the next week at New Mexico, 73 yards for a touchdown on a punt return. Leads the FBS with 22.8 yards per punt return. And that's our Gatorade Pride to perform. He also went 78 yards against Iowa State, but didn't score. Got tackled on the two-yard line. Kid special in the return game. Hughes back up to their 13-yard line. Fake handoff. Asiata. Nice run on first down. Stopped by Harrison Smith after a gain of nine. Nice job again up front. Utah blocking well. I think one of the real strength of this football team is up front. They're with a the two back set here. A lot of cross motion. Nice job with the backside guard. Tavita Stevens pulling and wrapping. And again, Asiata, the big physical tailback, gets north and south. Under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Notre Dame still does not have a first down. They've had good field position, but unable to do anything with it. Had a good kickoff return to start the game, had an interception. No first down. 
Reggie Dunn the handoff. And he'll have a Utah first down. Situation where Matt Asiata's brother, Sean, playing that offset fullback position on a good block on the edge, but Harrison Smith made the tackle. And Tom, I'm telling you, they're trying to get Reggie Dunn involved in this game. Only three catches on the year, eight, re excuse me, three runs and eight receptions. Already very busy today. Here's Wynn adjusting things. Play clock to three. Got the playoff. And a swing it wide to Asiata. Good defensive play by the Irish. Allow him only a yard or so. Kerry Neal was the first man there. Really good job by Curry Neal. Disrupted the cross route, reacted up on the flare, creating a second long. Asiata, Matt, and his brother Sean from West Valley, California. Second down and long. Plenty of protection. Rolls and throws it out of bounds. Ethan Johnson chasing him. They had to unload it. The Utes have allowed only four sacks this season. Three-man rush. They drop eight on a second long situation. Did a nice job both bracketing the deep receiver, Devontae Christopher, and then on the other side. This is the away from the ball side. Good job by Teo running underneath the tight end, Moe Ai. Integrated pass defense when you drop eight. It's very difficult for a quarterback to find an open receiver if you play zones to wrap. Third down and long. Win. Again, the protection is good, and the pass is nearly intercepted. It was uh, dropped by Brian Smith. He nearly was able to pick it off. He's got to catch that football. Cover two. He's going to run underneath and undercut Moiai down the seam. There he is. Redirects. Now comes underneath. If he doesn't get it, Teo might. But when you get opportunities, you've got to take advantage of it. Brian Smith, good play, but finish it. But the good news is they held on fourth on third down. So now fourth down for the Utes. Punting with Sean Selwood. Got it. Blocked. And recovered by Robert Blanton. He blocked it and recovered it untouched off the edge. This is a poor job by Utah and a tremendously athletic play by Blanton. Blanton with the block and the recovery and the Irish touchdown. He's going to come off the edge. up the Sunday hop touchdown and so Rucker will attempt the extra point and it is good so the Irish offense sputtering what do you do how about a block punt for a touchdown Robert Glenn blocks it recovers it and the Irish have the lead for the first time Notre Dame football brought to you by Valvoline So, how smart is your business security system? Is it lean? Is it efficient? Is your system a catalyst for new opportunities? Can it help your whole operation run better, safer, faster? Can it help optimize your business? So, how smart is it? Is it ADT smart? ADT Business Solutions. Security is just the start. What if we told you that Cadillac borrowed technology from Ferrari to develop its suspension system? Or what if we told you that Ferrari borrowed technology from Cadillac to develop its suspension system? Magnetic ride control, pioneered by Cadillac, perfected in the 556 horsepower CTSV. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. 
It seems everyone is saying they have the best unlimited plan. Here's the truth. AT&T and Verizon give you unlimited text and talk, but charge you extra for going over two gigabytes of data. T-Mobile claims they're unlimited, but use your phone a lot and they slow down your data speed. With Sprint, you don't get charged extra, you don't slow down, and you get unlimited data, text, and calling to any mobile for only $79.99. The best unlimited plan wins. Still in this uh, weather delay as you look at a live shot, Notre Dame Stadium expecting the next uh, severe weather storm to come in here in just a few minutes. Uh, this lightning strike just happened a few moments ago across the skies of South Bend. Light rain is falling right now. We've been in a weather delay for about an hour and a half. So as Jack Swarbrick, the uh, athletic director for Notre Dame, indicated they are taking nutrition, food, and water, and plenty of uh, stuff for the players to have in the locker room as they continue to wait this out and we have uh, tracked down terry mccauley the head of the Big East conference referees now there was a rumor going around earlier that if you get three quarters of football in it is an official game in the ncaa but uh, you, you can dispel that right no, now that's that, not the case that's that's not true at all there's in the case of a suspended game there's several options they'll they'll have and it since this is a non-conference game it will be, be between the athletic directors to decide they can, they can uh, end the game with a predetermined score. They can have a forfeit, uh, no, contest, no contest, or they can choose to finish at a later date. End the game with a predetermined score. Would that be if, it was, uh, if the game was going on and on and on, it was a lopsided game? Probably. And you would, you would, would say well, you would yes. agree to end it, you get the win, we get the loss type Correct. of thing. Correct. A lot of different scenarios can happen from this point on. Right. I, I can't predict what they would do if, if for some reason we couldn't finish tonight, but I, I, I'm pretty sure they would try to finish it at some point. How late There's, can they go into the night? Yeah, is there any uh, limit uh, on that? There is no limit, no. They would have to take the safety and the health of the players into, into account there. Uh, travel schedules. I, I don't know what they would do with that, but but hopefully this will get out of here in a little bit and uh, and we can get going again. So so the bottom line is, the athletic directors control this. Yes. Not the officials. Correct. Well, they could with the what they they control, what would happen if we can't continue the game tonight? Right now the officials control. That's, it. The that's referee the controls. I the referee okay. controls when when we're able to go out and and let me let me say what we do with that and, and this is the kind of technology that's come into play uh we we now take our advice from the meteorologist they, right. they have a meteorologist on site and he's telling he's telling our referee exactly where the storms are when, how long it's going to take him to get through and when he thinks it's going to be safe so basically, and you guys don't like taking advice from anybody now, so let's start from that press. Except announcers. But, we but, love to but, take but, advice from announcers. I know. That's what your pet peeve. <laughs> but, but so what's going to happen is they're going to listen to a media, meteorologist who's saying, here comes this big cell. Yes. So we're going to wait and see what happens at the end of that. Right. Then you inform the players and coaches through the athletic director of both teams. The referee actually will go to, go to both coaches okay. to tell them. Yes. And at some point, you're probably going to go to the athletic directors and coaches and say, look, there's interminable storms behind this it's four or five hours and mm -hmm. at that point that's where the athletic directors get together yes. and say let's replay because obviously notre dame is not going to say ah oh, you win thanks guys no, for that coming out. Right. That, that's yes. not happening so right. either we're going to play point, this game with a half of football oh left. it's not happening yeah. what i mean is either we're going to play this game at some point maybe we'll get a prime time game on nbc tonight <laughs> so we're either going to play this game i'm looking at the positives i'm a football guy hey, they're going to play, play the, the first game. they're going to play the first game uh, in the history uh, at michigan stadium uh, next week at, so we might as well make it two night let's, games let's in a row night game let's play some football or if we can't do it then they'll probably reschedule at some point which is kind of crazy uh to have to play another half of football well the lights are on right here right now at notre dame stadium and uh this is uh, not a pretty picture out in the distance very dark clouds and uh, as we indicated earlier some lightning uh, some more rain and some high winds uh continuing to sweep through south bend as we send it back down to alex it's pretty stormy right now dan but the good news is is that i'm told that we're kind of in the middle of that storm cell right now and that it is expected to move past us and move past us fairly quickly uh, notre dame ad jack swarbrick just stopped by and gave me the update He's saying that they believe that as soon as this cell passes over us again, we're kind of going through the worst of it. They think right now they will get ready to go out and play again. Again, remember all the rules that we have to go through. The coaches have to meet, determine how much time they need for warm-ups, which I'm being told by the referee will be about 12 to 15 minutes that they will allow the players to get back on the field. They'll kind of go back to like a pregame situation where they get to warm up and stretch and get ready for the game. But right now it is looking rather hopeful, Dan.
All right, Alex. Um, and again, you've got to figure out a way to get some 80,000 back into Notre Dame Stadium. They got 12 to 15 minutes to get them back. Let's when go. you deem right? that it is safe. Correct. Right. You, Correct. It's all about the football players. Man, right. It's got to get in. All right. Let's go back to uh, last year's game. Again, the November contest, which uh, really helped turn around the Notre Dame season against Utah. 2.04 to go, first quarter. Notre Dame with its first lead after Robert Blanton, the native of Matthews, North Carolina, suburb of Charlotte, blocked the punt and recovered it for a touchdown. So Ruffer set to kick off for the Irish to Smithson. Smithson, one of the deep men for the Utes. And we'll take it. At about the one or two yard line. Smithson picking his way forward. Flags flying everywhere. Smithson changing his route. You see why they call him Shaky. <laughs> Caught from behind and ridden down at the 45 yard line, but flags came in early. On the return by Smithson, Shaky 44 yards, but I think it's going to be nullified. Yeah, that was a block in the back early in that return. During the return, holding number 51 of the return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Now let's, here's the penalty. You can see the block in the back or the hold right there on Jackson. The cool thing is Jackson got off the ground and made the tackle. That freshman hustles his tail off. Now let's go back to the punt and the touchdown. Ten up. They're expecting a block. So these guys here are looking inside. Look at this. Comes untouched. There are only two people rushing. Now look at it from a different angle. You get a great look at this. Nelly Asa. You've got to have some vision. He's locked in up front. Receiver fell down. Jordan Wynn, just as he released it, Devontae Christopher fell down. So it'll be second down and 10. And again, it's a little bit wet out there. It was down on the field before the game. We've had some intermittent rain. Receivers have to be conscious of it during making their breaks. And Tom, this is, if you're a Notre Dame fan, what you want to see is a big play, an interception, a block punt. Now you want your defense to get a three and out. That's what good teams do. Win with a shovel pass. It's complete to wide. Eddie Wide uses his blockers well, then blasted out of bounds at about the 20 yard line by Brian Smith. But a good play by the Utes. It'll be a first down, Utah. Yeah, just a shovel pass. I really like they've got a four-man rush with a twist on. The twist opens up the inside. Eddie Wide takes it. Good block on the edge. Gray's trying to keep outside leverage. Just enough for a first down. Utes from the 20. Wynn changing the play. Make sure everybody knows what's going on. Makes a handoff up the middle to Wide. And Eddie Wide continues to get a workout in the running game for the Utes. Stopped after a couple of yards by the front of the Irish defense. You know that they pull their guards an awful lot in their scheme. And, and 54 to be the Stevens, I think, is one of the better pulling guards I've seen this year. Watch him come out. A lot of misdirection here. Wraps into the hole with correct leverage. Really a good job. That's about the fourth or fifth time he's wrapped into the hole and made the correct block. Inside the final minute of the first quarter. Win. Slides down at about the 25 yard line. And Tom, we had a chance to meet him yesterday, and no surprise to me, he, he needs a slide right there. Con contact might break him in half. He's very slight. 6'1, listed as 195. We he has never seen 195 <laughs> in his life. He's skeptical of that a bit from Oceanside High School, Oceanside, California, where he was twice all state and a four year member of the honor roll. He'll go to the sideline as the opening quarter will come to a close. That's the end of the first quarter with Notre Dame leading Utah.
Utah 7-3. Back to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC presented by Valvoline. Look at all this stuff for coffee. Oh, there's tons. French presses, espresso tampers, filters. It can get really complicated. Not nearly as complicated as shipping it, though. I mean, shipping is a hassle. Not with priority mail flat rate boxes from the Postal Service. If it fits, it ships anywhere in the country for a low flat rate. That is easy. Best news I've heard all day. I'm so amped! I mean, not amped. Excited. I mean, that's sort of amped. I'm really kind of in between. Have you ever thought about decaf? You think that'll help? Yeah. Priority mail flat rate shipping starts at just $4.95, only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. Chloe is nine months old. <laughs> she is the greatest thing ever. One little smile, one little laugh. Anybody? <laughs> we would do anything for her. My name is Kim Bryant, and my husband and I made a will on LegalZoom. It was really easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> we created LegalZoom to help you take care of the ones you love. Go to LegalZoom.com today and complete your will in minutes. At LegalZoom.com, we put the law on your side. An Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. We are the University of Notre Dame. I just couldn't help myself. I make more money than my father. Don't let the fluffy tails fool you. Papa, please. You killed the wrong guy. The Playboy Club, coming to Mondays, 10, 9 central on NBC. The Utes make their first trip to Notre Dame Stadium, and we start the second quarter with the Irish up 7-3, despite no first downs and just nine yards of offense, thanks to a Robert Blanton block punt and a scoop and score. Third down and six for Utah. Will has to pull it down and run for it, and he'll slide. I don't think I he don't had think it. He, I think he slid a little too soon. He's going to be marked short of the first down, covered there by Manti Teo. Yeah, he had to get past the 30, and they're going to mark him around the 29 and a half or so. So the punt team comes out for the Utes. And thanks to a premature slide by Jordan Wynn, Notre Dame will get the hold on third down. Yeah, he had a chance to make a play there, and I, and I think if you know, no matter how slight you are, you want to drop the shoulder and get the first down there. Sean Selwood will punt it, averaging 42.7 a boot this season. And Goodman is deep for Notre Dame. This is a short one. Goodman is get away from it. Takes kind of a lateral bounce, then a Notre Dame bounce, and will be down around the 40-yard line. So the freshman quarterback, Tommy Reese, back out onto the field. And of course, Reese forced into action because of the incredible string of injuries Notre Dame has had to key personnel. Just look at this. If you see the Kyle Rudolph, Theo Riddick, Armando Allen, Dane Christ, Coach Kelly was telling us they amounted for over 400 yards of offense a game. And yet in the game against Tulsa, they were able to uh, replace that with some 400 yards of offense, but incredible string of injuries that Notre Dame has suffered to key players. You could almost uh, go down the list and not pick out any more key players than the ones that have been felled by injury. Armando Allen on the sideline watching on senior day with a hip injury that uh, had to have surgery. Here's a first down handoff, and it's a good run on this first down play by Jonas Gray. So Gray gets his first carry. That's the best run of the day by the Irish rushing attack. Puts a left guard here, pull out in front. Bang, there's the trap block right there. They move inside of it. Good job by Jonas Gray, who I still maintain at 235, 240 pounds, has tremendous feet for his size, and he's a downhill runner who's a load to bring down. Junior from Pontiac, Michigan, getting some playing time today. There's another gray run, and this time there's a flag down as he has stopped at the line of scrimmage. And Tom, we should mention that that guard pulling last time was Chris Watt. Holding on the defense, number 98. Wow. Ten yard penalty, first down. 
Salinga called for the hold, and that is an automatic first down, so a key penalty again against the Utes. The big question for Utah coming in, Mike, was whether or not they could bounce back emotionally after yep. being defeated in what they saw as a huge game against TCU. The BCS Busters, two of them last week, it was 47-7, so how would the Utes respond? And you'd have to say maybe a little flat with the penalties and mistakes here early. No question, and Tom, what I always look for emotionally, and that's a great point, are penalties and special teams. And that's where they've really let down today. Six penalties, 45 yards. Gray trying to get to the outside and does. He's got a blocker. Jonas Gray down the sideline to the 10, slips and falls. Short of the five-yard line being chased by Lamar Chapman. But it's a 36-yard run by Jonas Gray. Questionable block by Michael Floyd, but it's not called a penalty, and I maintained all season long. Here's Floyd. It's going to bounce, and Michael Floyd's going to get a real good block on the edge on Boo Anderson. Now, I'm not sure if it's on his back right here. Watch him right there. But it wasn't called, and again, Jonas Gray at 235 pounds has better feet than you anticipate, better speed. And that was a huge play for the Irish. The insertion of Gray into the game has put a charge into the running game. And there's uh -oh. Floyd getting tangled up as he went for the end zone and the penalty called. He was tangled up with Brandon Burton. Burton, as we pointed out earlier, only five foot nine. Yeah, Burton's their bigger, more physical quarter. And right here, he loves press gets his hands on Floyd. The problem is he's pressing him, but the ball's already in the air. Once the ball's in the air, hands have to be off. So first and goal for the Irish at the three-yard line. And Floyd in the end zone from Reese for the touchdown. Michael Floyd with his ninth touchdown reception of the season with an impressive drive. They got the running game going with Gray, and then Tommy Reese throws his fifth touchdown pass of the season. Ruffer for the point after. And Ruffer boots it through. So the freshman quarterback getting his first career start throws the touchdown pass to Michael Floyd. And the Irish increase their lead. Notre Dame 14, Utah 3. USA Prime Credit. My name Peggy. You have problem? Peggy? Okay. Lost my card. Need a replacement sent to my hotel tomorrow. One month. Let's try this again. Do you believe in yourself? Yes. I believe in you too, Peggy. You could be my go-to guy. Poor girl. Now stand tall and get out to replace my card. You inspire me. Three weeks. Okay, let's start over. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover. Rank number one in customer loyalty. It pays to Discover. I've been riding since I was 17. Flat out my whole life. Ran into a pretty serious medical issue. I was prescribed one drug one place, another somewhere else. Turns out if I'd have taken both drugs together, I'd have been in real trouble. But United Healthcare spotted the danger and warned my pharmacist in time. We only get one shot, and I want to leave this life exhausted. We're more than 78,000 people looking out for 70 million Americans. That's health in numbers. United Healthcare. Now, when you want powerful Wi Fi, you've got it. With a Verizon Mobile Hotspot, you can connect up to five Wi Fi devices to the internet with lightning fast Verizon 4G LTE speed. A gaming device, e reader. MP3 player. Connect any five for Wi-Fi on the go. Get the 4G LTE mobile hotspot now for only $49.99. Verizon is the place with the largest selection of 4G LTE devices on America's fastest, most advanced 4G network. Again, we believe this has never happened in the 123-year history of Notre Dame football. So as you look at Newt Rockney's statue outside of Notre Dame Stadium getting rained on, he probably would have told his troops, get back out there, leather, football, helmets, and all. But we understand the weather prognosis is getting 
a bit better by the minute. Some nasty stuff uh, continuing to move through South Bend. And for another report, let's send it back down to Alex. Hey, Dan, well, you can see down here outside of South Florida's locker room, players beginning to come out and start warming up. B.J. Daniels has been running back and forth, kind of doing the high knees, keeping himself warm and throwing the ball a little bit. About five minutes ago at about 6.55, both locker rooms were told to expect to come out on the field in 15 minutes. So that puts us at about 7.10 Eastern time when they would be allowed to return to the field. After that, once the field is cleared, they will be given 12 and a half minutes. That has already been determined, 12 and a half minutes to warm up and then the game will start. So barring anything unexpected and some more weather moving in, which I don't believe we see on the radar, we should be playing this game in the near future, Dan. Okay, thank you, Alex. So look at the radar. Again, that is where we are located. And the storm's continuing to move through. And as Alex said, hopefully there'll be a hole in between uh, what's happening now and what may come a little bit later on here in South Bend. In the meantime, we take you back to last November Utah against Notre Dame. Jonas Gray, a 36-yard run, the longest of his career. And an interference penalty against Utah sets up Michael Floyd to receive the 25th touchdown of his career. Rougher to kick it off with Shaky Smithson deep for the Utes. A bounce and bounce. Yes, there's the flag. Yep, field position. So Utah will get great field position as Ruffer uh, sends it out of bounds. That'll get him a, a lecture over on the sideline, too. Tom, I like the structure of the touchdown pass. Notre Dame anticipated and got both pressure and man coverage. Pressure came here, man on Eifert. He's going to sit it down right on the goal line, and then Floyd's going to work right behind the man coverage against Brandon Burton. Eifert sits it down, Floyd goes over the top, and Tommy Reese put it exactly where he needed to, up high for a six foot three wide receiver where only he could get it and Burton couldn't. That's really good of, execution. Kind of what they had in mind in the pass against Tulsa, huh? <laughs> and why did I know you were going to go there, Thomas? So from the 40, after the kick out of bounds, Utah puts it in play. And swing it complete to Asiata. Nice run, crosses midfield, picks up 11 on first down. Brian Smith wrapped him up there. Now, Asiata is an interesting guy. He got a sixth year courtesy of the NCAA, hurt his knee last year, only played in four games. And he's really the heart and soul of their team, a two-time captain, run game, pass game, and pass protection. Matt Mary with three kids. This pass is complete to Brooks, Jeremy Brooks. That's a really nice catch on a low pass from Brooks in between the linebackers to the 42 yard line. Asiata carries for another first down as the Utes now getting their offense moving. They're to the Irish 35 yard line, first and 10. And, and to me, this is Utah football right there. Asiata in the zone scheme, Asiata in the counter, little check downs. There's a false start. Look at this. Wow. Another false start as the penalties continue to pile up against the Utes. That's their seventh or eighth of the uh, first half. Eight penalties with 11.38 to go. Notre Dame has yet to be called for an infraction. And you know what? They're unforced penalties. That's Schlatter off the left guard. That's the third or fourth of those we've seen with the offensive line. And, and it tells me, Tom, that like you said, they're having a little bit of an emotional hangover from the beating. It's an appliance extravaganza through Labor Day at Olam's Appliances and Electronics. Get interest-free financing for 18 months on all of Mana, Maytag, KitchenAid, and Whirlpool Appliances, $4.99 and up. Hurry, sale ins Monday at 4 at Olam's Appliances and Electronics in DeWitt. It's back to huge season, and Billy is packing in the savings all month long this month of September. Hey, folks, it's Caroline and Dave here at Fusillo Kia in Clay. And Dave, what a deal on the Sorrento this month. This is the all-new 2012 Sorrento, and this month at Fusillo Kia of Clay, we're offered for zero down, $339 a month. So $339 a month, zero down. That's a brand new vehicle with That's a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty. Absolutely. Come on down and see us here, and we're going to make you... We'll make you huge. Get back to school and get up to speed with Time Warner Cable Broadband Internet. 
An internet plan for us and all our devices. We connect laptops, tablets, smartphones at ridiculous speeds. Time Warner Cable has plans for as low as $34.99 a month for the first year. Call 855-316-7950 today. So don't get left behind. Before school starts, call 855-316-7950 and get Time Warner Cable broadband internet. It's an appliance extravaganza you can't afford to miss. Through Labor Day at Olam's Appliances and Electronics. Get interest-free financing for 18 months on all Frigidaire appliances, $4.99 and up. Hurry, sale ends Monday at 4 at Olam's Appliances and Electronics in DeWitt. From CNY Central, this is the news at 6. Now in enhanced widescreen. Good evening, I'm Lisa Spitz. We are going to bring you news right now while you wait for football. Happening right now, it is the final weekend of the State Fair. Many of you have been commenting on our Facebook page and on our website that you don't like how there are no attendants in the bathrooms this year. As the fair winds down and officials look ahead to next year, the big question, will there be changes? On day 10 of the State Fair, Chris McGrath takes a look. He has the very latest from the fairgrounds. Well, Lisa, day 10 of the great New York State Fair is certainly a hot one to say the very least, but it's been great for attendance so far. More than 100,000 people are expected to pass through the turnstiles today before it's all said and done. And on this hot day, the hot topic, bathrooms at the State Fair. Of course, new this year, there are no more attendants in the bathrooms like we've grown accustomed to in years past. Instead, State Fair employees are making the rounds to make sure bathrooms are as clean as possible and everyone it seems has an opinion on this subject some say the change is terrible others say it couldn't be more welcome i tell you 100 percent better i mean last year i didn't like the aspect of uh, the people being in there and giving you things for tips and everything like that much better this year a lot more cleaner they're definitely not as clean as they they were before um, I personally would rather tip somebody because I think that it deserves to be a job that needs to be tipped to keep them clean. Overall, you know, we've done very well at it. We had our trials and tribulations the first couple of days, and it's something that we'll continue to monitor, and we'll have a meeting after the fair, you know, to reevaluate the whole set of circumstances and see what we could do differently going forward. Now, State Fair Director Dan O'Hara, who you just heard there, told me he's very open to criticisms and suggestions for next year's State Fair, which he actually starts planning very soon on Tuesday, right after this State Fair wraps up. In the meantime, we'd like to know what you have to think about the 2011 State Fair. We've opened up that dialogue for you on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash CNY Central. Log on, like the page, and tell us what you think. Of course, we'll be sure to interact with you as well. For now, reporting from the New York State Fairgrounds, I'm Chris McGrath. Lisa, back to Chris, thanks so much. Let's take a look at tonight's entertainment at the State Fair. Sugar Land takes to the stage in about 20 minutes from now. That gets underway at 730. And at Chevy Court, the script will be on stage. That show starts at 8 p.m. Remember, shows at Chevy Court are free with your fair admission. If you have been to the State Fair this year, you have no doubt seen one of the many pizza freak stands. It's been a staple at the fair for the past 50 years, serving up generous portions of sugary fried dough. And with the many free concerts being held at Chevy Court this year, pizza freak is selling very fast. The free shows really draw the people in, and they end early enough so that the people stay here. The, 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 the days have been much better. Zazara says that they start making that pizza free at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I can tell you, people were lining up. They were lining up very early today. It's very warm as we take a live look over Syracuse. Many folks will be heading to the fair on this last weekend of the state fair. And Mike, we do want to remind people right now, because a lot of people probably are wondering why we are on and not the football. Right now, they are actually in a weather delay. So we will yeah. be going to football once it begins. But they have a weather delay, but it's beautiful where you are at the State Fair right now. Yeah, the weather has turned a lot more comfortable, Lisa. Earlier on, it was quite steamy. We had the heat index near the middle 90s, and you know what? It's going to be that way again for tomorrow. We want to say hello to some of the fans here that have come out to support CNY Central. What's your name? Alexis. Say hi. Hi. She wanted to say hello to a grandparent. Look at these hats these young ladies have over here. Aren't they quite adorable? I'm talking about the hats. Say hi. 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 All right, so we got some creative people here that are getting ready for the script concert here at Chevy Court. 
Looks like the weather's going to get a lot more interesting the second half of the weekend, a little bit more of a serious tone. Now, this evening, we are dry at the fair. You can see on live triple Doppler radar, dry conditions throughout central New York. There were some isolated showers and storms. There still are down towards the southern tier, but that's it. Those are not moving this way. And I think we're generally dry this evening. Our state fair forecast calls for a low of only 70 tonight. And coming up on Sunday, 89 again. It's going to be steamy. The day will deteriorate. The morning dry with sun and clouds. Then the clouds increase and we'll find isolated showers and storms popping up midday. And then towards the late afternoon, they become more numerous and they could pack a punch with some damaging winds. And later on tomorrow night, the threat for some very heavy rain, which is not good news, of course, after Irene. We'll talk more about that and your Labor Day forecast in the seven day. Lisa, back to you. Governor Cuomo has created a $15 million recovery fund to help farmers who were hit hard by Tropical Storm Irene. The governor toured a farm in Schoharie County today that was damaged by heavy rain. It is estimated that the storm caused $45 million in farm damage in New York State alone. About 140,000 acres of farmland have been lost. Cuomo says farmers need the recovery money to help them rebuild and recover. Yes, times are tough. But we're tough, too. And we've dealt with tough times before. And the way we do it is we come together, shoulder to shoulder, and we work together. And that's exactly what we're doing here. The recovery money will also go to repair stream banks and restore vineyards. Happening right now, Tropical Storm Lee is ruining the Labor Day holiday for residents living and visiting the Gulf Coast. Much of that area is drenched right now. Tropical storm warnings run from Alabama to Texas and flash flood warnings extend from Alabama to the Florida Panhandle. Drew Levinson right now has the very latest. Tropical Storm Lee is flooding parts of the Gulf Coast. Forecasters predict it could dump up to 20 inches of rain. In New Orleans, which sits below sea level, some streets are underwater. But the city's pumps are working, pushing the water into Lake Pontchartrain. For some, that's a problem. That's Lake Pontchartrain right there, the same level as in my boathouse. This man wielding a toilet plunger spoke to the local CBS affiliate. Besides trying to take matters in your own hands, what else are you doing here today? Uh, I'm raising all my stuff in my boathouse, trying to save it because I didn't really expect to get this high. So far, Lee's storm surge has not penetrated the levees protecting New Orleans. Six years ago, Katrina's fury ripped apart some of those levees, flooding 80% of the city. They've been rebuilt and appear to be holding. Lee is wreaking havoc in the tiny town of Jean Lafitte, Louisiana, where there's a mandatory evacuation. With Lee's drenching rains and floodwaters, emergency rescue crews are urging people to stay inside, off the roads and out of the water. We're from Utah, we don't know any better, and uh, we don't know anybody to tell us it's crazy, so we're going to go out there and uh, see if we can catch a few catfish. The storm is expected to continue causing problems along the Gulf Coast through the weekend. And that was Drew Levinson reporting the worst damage so far includes downed trees and power lines. There are reports of more than 35,000 customers without electricity, mostly in the New Orleans area. Back here in central New York, we have new information tonight about the suspect in a murder for hire plot in DeWitt. 39 year old Marnie Nappy is accused of trying to hire someone to kill a man who police says wife she wanted to further her relationship with that man was not hurt nappy is being held tonight without bail syracuse police have confirmed nappy is the daughter of michael nappy in 1991 he was killed on southwest street in the city police say that case remains unsolved 20 years later. An update tonight, staffers at the Salve Clinic that was overwhelmed by abandoned kittens are putting out a thank you tonight. All 13 of the kittens are now in foster care. True Blue Veterinary Health Center began caring for the kittens after they were found abandoned in a box near Syracuse's zoo. The kittens are in foster care for now, but not all have permanent homes. Some will be available for adoption in four to five weeks. Stay with us right now. We are waiting for football to begin and until that happens we'll be back with a full look at your forecast. In bad economic times we all need to help those who are less fortunate than ourselves. The Ford Best Place to Be sales event. It's a great place to be. Check out the Ford Escape with hands-free sync technology and 28 miles per gallon on the highway. Current competitive lessees, lease a 2011 Escape with Sun and Sync for just $179 a month. 
Applebee's two for 20 is back and fresher than ever. Whoa. Hey, Chris. Hey, Jesse. Hey. Ready to order? Yep, two for 20. One appetizer, two entrees, and layers of fresh flavor. So who's paying this week? Uh, call it in the year. Tails. <laughs> Pony up, Palmer. So come on in for new favorites like new creamy chicken fettuccine carbonara, new bruschetta chicken, or classics like the 7-ounce house sirloin. That's one appetizer, two entrees, 20 bucks. You got off easy, my friend. It's the freshest two for 20 yet, only at Applebee's. Now serving half-price appetizers late night. The Ford Best Place to Be sales event. It's a great place to be. Check out the Ford F-150 with exclusive EcoBoost technology. That's 22 miles per gallon on the highway. Current competitive lessees. Lease the fuel-efficient Ford F-150 for just $249 a month. Looking for information? Click on Best Bets at CNYCentral.com. Here's some real classic cozy customers that got real results. And they installed a new furnace. They installed a new hot water heater. They installed um, insulation throughout the entire house. And now we are currently having new, brand new windows installed, which we're extremely happy with. We noticed a 50% savings on our energy bill from month to month. It's just been a great experience, and we're very, very pleased. Classic Cozy participates in the Home Performance with Energy Star program. Call today or visit us online at ClassicCozy.com. Starting right now, everything's on sale at Raymore and Flanagan. It's the Labor Day sale. Open up a world of possibilities. Designs from Kathy Ireland, Broyhill, Natuzzi, and more. Every living room, every dining room, every bedroom, all on sale. Interest free till 2015. No money down, delivered in three days or less. The Labor Day sale going on at Raymore and Flanagan. Everything's on sale. Each year, 17 billion toilet paper tubes are thrown away in the U.S. alone. That's enough to fill the Empire State Building twice. Introducing Scott Naturals tube-free bath tissue. Now you can get the softness you need without the wasteful tube. That's green, done right. Welcome back. We just want to thank all of the wonderful people who have stopped by the CNY Central booth at the State Fair to say hello. I was out there today with reporter Jessica Kane, sports director John Evanson, and his daughter Maya. You can see she was signing autographs as well. We really have enjoyed seeing everyone in this morning. We were really happy that the weather cooperated. Mike, it's one of the best parts of the fair is, of course, meeting all of the folks out there who watch us all the time. And I know some of them are with you right now. That's right. It's great to see everyone. Really, you think about it, we had one day with bad weather here at the fair, and that was last Sunday with Irene. Could be one more out of the next two. But we've got the script up on the Chevy Court stage up here. It's some fans of CY Central that want to say hello. <laughs> now, I asked you guys before, where are you from? Uh, Albany. Seattle, Washington. Buffalo. Long Island. And I said, how are you guys all together? They're uh, Lemoyne students, so you're just starting up the school year, right? Yeah. All right, well, good luck to you, and hopefully we'll have some luck tomorrow here at the fair. There is a threat for showers and storms, especially late in the day. Here we'll lead off this forecast with Tropical Storm Lee. Everyone wants to know what's going on with that. It's still a storm, not a hurricane. 60-mile-per-hour winds and moving very little to the north at 3, and it's going to produce a lot of heavy rainfall. Once again, like we've been talking about, I'm sure we'll start to see some flooding images coming in the next 24 hours. Here's what to expect weather-wise locally in central New York. What to expect for Sunday. It's going to be a steamy one once again, and that'll fire up some strong thunderstorms as the afternoon progresses. A lot of the day will be dry. I'd say the best chance for this activity is late in the afternoon into the evening with damaging winds, a distinct possibility, maybe some heavy rainfall as well working into the evening. Heavy rain could be a problem also on Labor Day, not going to rain all day long like Irene did to us, but we will find showers and storms. And Tuesday, a fall feeling in the air as the kids go back to school. Here's live triple Doppler radar. And you can see dry conditions throughout central New York. I can actually see the top of the thunderstorms down in the southern tier as you look to the south. That's the anvil, the blow off off of them. You can see in southern Tompkins County some of the rain from that, but no lightning being reported. So our future cast will put it in motion and you can see that uh, a cold front is just up to our north on the future cast. And it's trying to push this way, but there's also a warm front back to the west. So that cold front is going to slow down and then lift back to the north. We don't tap into cooler air for Sunday. It looks like it'll be another day where we're flirting with the 90 degree mark, high humidity, make it feel more like the middle 90s when you're talking about the heat index. We'll put that into motion and you'll see just a low threat this evening for an isolated shower or thunderstorm. And then as we progress through Sunday, 
We can put that map into motion, please, Lisa. Uh, we'll see during the day th Sunday, most of the time it's dry. It's not until late in the day that we see a better chance for showers and thunderstorms, especially after 3 o'clock and towards the evening with the actual cold front coming through heavy rain is a distinct possibility so our forecast for this evening temperatures sliding into the 70s you'll want to keep that air conditioning right on there is a low risk for a thunderstorm but i think most places stay dry including the fairgrounds for the concerts this evening late at night down to 70 degrees the seven day forecast for tomorrow sunshine and clouds leading to a mostly cloudy sky isolated thunderstorms by midday and those become more numerous and stronger late in the day monday we fall to 70 We'll find showers and thunderstorms. Some of them could produce heavy rain again in the afternoon. Tuesday, clouds and showers to start. They should be light and increasing breaks of sunshine. 67 for a high, rather cool. And then we stay in the 60s and 70s after that. A chance for showers next Wednesday and Thursday. Live at the New York State Fair, I'm meteorologist Mike Brookins. Hey, Mike. I'm hoping you bring me back some fried pickles tonight. That's my favorite. I know you like those fried pickles. I like the fried dough myself. Oh, we've had plenty of that today. All right. And, Mike, we want to thank everybody for joining us right now. We are going to send it back to football. We'll see you tonight at 11 o'clock. Tracking storms threatening your neighborhood, exclusive technology, and the experience to track severe weather. The CNY Central First Alert Weather Team. Weather happening now. That's what he calls himself. No, well, that's fine. Guys, I'm kind of freaking out. I have to upload a movie project for finals or else I won't graduate. So please, shut that stuff down until I'm done, okay? Sure. No problem. Living with Wi-Fi hogs? Let me play. No. Get super fast wideband from Time Warner Cable. Thank you. Thank you. You can go back on now. I got it. You are lifesavers. All the bandwidth you could ever need. Sure. No problem. From our fastest internet ever. People to the... Nissan's bottom line sales event has been extended with better availability than Honda. Chosen to shift gears even more as Tommy Reese is going to come in at quarterback. And Notre Dame will kick things off to finally begin the second half. There is a fired up Tommy Reese as he'll get his chance in a few moments to take over the Irish offense. Kyle Brinza kicking off for Notre Dame. Lindsey Lamar back deep for South Florida. Dangerous return man. Had a couple of touchdowns last year that he brought back on a kickoff. And finally underway again as Lamar takes it at about the one. And good coverage by Notre Dame. Stops him short of the 20. As Bennett Jackson, last year a wide receiver, this year a corner. The constant is that he's been a great special teams player both years. So the Bulls are going to take over at their own 19-yard line. B.J. Daniels at the helm. Again, took care of the ball in the first half. Three turnovers for Notre Dame in the opening half. None for the Bulls. A look at B.J.'s numbers in the first half. And they're starting off in their 20 formation right here. They run a lot of option out of this. The fake give, and they swing it up top to Lamar and good coverage by Notre Dame that was number 98 Sean Swinar the junior I also like that Fleming and Fox didn't lose contain remember first half on the zone read that happened several times Second and ten, they give it to Scott. Had a number of carries in the opening half, but a fired up Notre Dame offense. Manti Teo must have got a pretty spirited text from his father, who made the trip from Hawaii to be here. The eye of Manti Teo. They put him on the edge and blitzed him that time. He came in from behind and got a piece of the tackle. This is for Notre Dame, third and eight, a big play. And for South Florida, you got to calm this thing down. Daniels to the air, 
and incomplete. That was intended for Lamar over the wrong shoulder, it looked like. And so it's going to bring up a punt for Skip Holtz and the Bulls. They went with a single high free safety, man to man. And what Notre Dame wanted was a three and out, and that's what they've got. Justin Brockhouse Khan with a punt. And it's not a good one. It bounces short of midfield. And Notre Dame's going to take over its opening possession of the second half in Bulls territory with Tommy Reese at the controls. You get a big tackle by Bennett Jackson. You get a three and out by your defense. You get a four punt by South Florida. Now you need Tommy Reese and the offense to step up and continue the momentum. Totally different feel from when we left the first half a couple of hours ago when Dane Chris was the quarterback. So they take over just inside Bulls territory at the 49. The three by one with their best player backside by himself. And the first play in 2011 for Reese is a swing to four on the near side. That's what you like. Three men to the front side, your best player backside. The corner is soft and off. Throw it out there. Look at this. Are you kidding me? Take advantage of that all day long. Little hitch. Six foot three, 225. Drop your pad level and you pick up seven. Very easy yard. That's the third catch for Floyd. He could be on his way to another receiving record for Notre Dame. Second and three after the game of seven. Sierra Wood picks up the first down for Notre Dame. Lungy inside the 35, brought down by Quentin Washington. Really good blocking up front. What I liked was the physical finish by Wood over Quentin Washington. Inside zone, makes the cut right up inside. Now watch him finish. Drop the pad level, run over the smaller corner. Good physical, aggressive run. And right back to work is Reese, and he's got Floyd again for another catch. Different kind of pace, Dan, huh? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you found your best football player two out of the first three plays, and the other guy maybe is your next best weapon, Sierra Woods. So I like the distribution so far for Notre Dame. And Washington, the fifth-year senior for the Bulls, has been on Floyd. Jump off. Second down and six. Moving up front. They're trying to confuse pass protections here. A lot of guys walking around, only two defensive linemen with a hand in the dirt. And Reese is three for three. He's got T.J. Jones who hangs on this time. Kayvon Webster on the coverage. That time out to the wide side of the field, and, and Dan, you're 100% right. T.J. Jones finished the play. Good cut block on the edge, gives Tommy vision, falls a little bit high, but T.J. comes down with it. Jones just short of the first down, so third and one. Now they've got two tight ends backside, that's the run strength, and now they've got receivers, including Michael Floyd, on the front side. Make a decision, defense. And up the middle, stop short of the first down. Corey Griffin, Corey Griffin yeah. right in there. His nickname is Pork Chop, and he's 335 pounds. So, so, so that nickname is obvious. <laughs> all right. Now so, all, what do you do? You go for it at fourth and short. He, about a yard or so. He didn't even, didn't even hesitate. He put his field goal team out there. I think some of the guys on the sidelines are trying to tell him to go for it. And if you're Coach Kelly, uh -uh. one of the great stories in college football, David Ruffer, who hit the first 23 field goal attempts of his career after coming out of the inner hall. Program here at Notre Unbelievable. Dame. 42-yard field goal attempt. They got the Bulls are outside. They got the jump. Huge play. They got Ryan Giddens. And and do you notice anything? All of a sudden, South Florida and Notre Dame because they changed uniform. Watch 97 Offside, right in the middle of the screen. Defense number 97. That's so off comes first the down. field goal unit and Notre Dame with a first down as Giddens jumps off. Wow. One of the big recruits by Skip Holtz. He chose South Florida over USC, Florida, Florida State, Miami. But he's just a redshirt sophomore who jumps off sides, and Tommy Reese is back out onto the field. Perfect three for three. As this drive continues at the 20 of South Florida. Reese with a quick kick to Florida again. Trying to get around the edge. He's got the first down. And all the way down as they spot him at about 
Bubble screen, Theo Reddick with the key block out wide. Five Dominic yards it on him. There's the block right there. Gain of 15 for Floyd. John Legist finally wrestled him down. Pretty amazing, Dan. Penalty now for South Florida. Gives Notre Dame the opportunity to convert for points. Everything completely 180 degree different than the first half right now. Reese from the five. And that bounces up and is picked off by South Florida. Number 55, Michael Linares, got the deflection. He, wow. To TJ Jones. And Kelly might be at an all time overcooked state right now. bringing it straight to you. Introducing NFL Mobile for 2011. Built to bring you the game. Only from Verizon. Built so you can rule the air. Now's the time to move from where you are to where you want to go. Look up with U.S. Bank. Let's get the wheels turning. Use our strength and stability to open new opportunities. I can see clearly to lend and lift every business, every dream to new heights of prosperity. Good things are happening. Just look up with U.S. Bank. Six point nine is a breakthrough. Six point nine is a physics lesson. Six point nine is the outer limits. Six point nine is an explosion. makes this the lightest ever. I really thought Tommy Reese was going to look at the tight end Eifert in this hole, but watch what happens with T.J. Jones' backside. I don't know of any routes where you don't look for the football when you're down the field as a receiver. It hit him literally right in the shoulder pad. Great interception by Linares, but watch. Why are you not looking for the football? It hits you right in the shoulder pad helmet. Linares very alertly grabs it. Brian Kelly was apoplectic. And that's one of the reasons why, because Jones didn't even see it coming. So South Florida takes over deep in its own territory as Daniels hands off to Scott. So Mike, three trips to the red zone for Notre Dame, three turnovers. And it, it's an implosion, and what I don't understand, and I'm not trying to get on T.J. Jones crazily, but even if you're not the primary receiver, it doesn't mean you're not looking for the football as a receiver. I don't understand that at all. So second down and six. Daniels rolls out to the right. He's got Griffin. And Griffin picks up the first down. Zeke Mata on the coverage for Notre Dame. But let's uh, go back to these red zone debacles by Notre Dame. Deep in territory. Opening drive. Jonas Gray has it stripped out. They go back all the way for a touchdown return. And then a costly interception thrown by Chris. And then that, the latest one, third trip to the red zone. Deep in the Bulls territory. Coming up with nothing. First down and 10 now for Daniels and Daryl Scott. Slips on the turf just across the 20. Maybe a little bit of an indication of the moisture on the field caused by all the rain that uh, we've experienced. Zeke Mata brought him down. 236 pound tailback trying to get out wide. He's going to plant the left foot. Boom. Goes out from under him. Good job to staying alive. But that's, that's what I meant by the playing field. Second down and seven. Bulls from their own 21. The fake to Scott. Daniels deep down the field. It's going to be incomplete. He had A.J. Love down there, but he was well covered. Robert Blanton 
the main cover guy for Notre Dame. I think Lance has played a good football game so far, as has most of this defense. But I can't get over the red zone that you just talked about, Dan. And to me, that's a minimum of 13 points because obviously the fumble went back to seven points. But worst case scenario, you're kicking field goals on the two interception. Daniels on third and seven. Oh, good time. Complete, and that is dropped by Deontay Welch. That was a first down all the way, and Welch just dropped it. I love the throw by quarterback D.J. Daniels. It was on time. All it is is a speed out right here looking to get a first down. Deontay Welch breaks it off. The ball's right in his hands. But I'll tell you, the quarterback, look where he put it. It was a sprint to his right. The ball was thrown on time. That was beautiful by the quarterback and horrible by Deontay Welch in his first game as a redshirt freshman. College debut out of Williston, Florida. Welch dropped what would have been a first down. And Justin Brockhouse con with a punt. Notre Dame should be able to get pretty good field position as Riddick calls for a fair catch at his own 33. So another Notre Dame drive ends up with a turnover. So back comes Reese out to give it another go. It seems everyone is saying they have the best unlimited plan. Here's the truth. AT&T and Verizon give you unlimited text and talk, but charge you extra for going over two gigabytes of data. T-Mobile claims they're unlimited, but use your phone a lot and they slow down your data speed. With Sprint, you don't get charged extra, you don't slow down, and you get unlimited data, text, and calling to any mobile for only $79.99. The best unlimited plan wins. Sometimes your hands could use a hand. Delta Touch 2O technology is now in the bathroom. Another way Delta is more than just a faucet. See what Delta can do. are cracking down on drinking and driving. Drive sober or get pulled over. Welcome back to Notre Dame. Irish offense back on the field. And they'll begin first and 10 from their own 34 as this first down line is brought to you by Xerox. Looks like South Florida already making an adjustment. How many times can you knock on the door and get turned away? Reese going to the air again and knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Patrick Hampton. Fifth year I like senior. Hampton. Yeah, he, he's an undersized defensive end working against the right tackle, Dever, coming right off the edge here. He does a good job bending, and when he sees the quarterback getting ready to throw the football, he stops, elevates, and gets a piece. Hampton finally getting his uh, shot in the starting role as the right end out of Lithonia, Georgia. Very quick Bulls defense. A lot of their players not as big and physically as imposing as especially some of the younger Irish players, but they are quick and they make up for that. Being told that there was an official timeout. Looks like they're having some problems with the uh, first get, down marker there. Yeah, they're there. trying to get two to follow one instead of four. <laughs> Is that what comes down? <laughs> there you go. Always good to have the backup first down stick. Apparently, this is a bizarre day, and I put it on you. You do? I do. When was the last time you were here? Well, we're not going to even go there. Okay. We're right. not. I'm putting this whole thing that on was, you. That was a few years ago, and I didn't quite turn out for the Irish faithful. Second down and 10. And Reese, way over Michael Floyd's head. There's a disconnect there. I mean, four man rush, they drop seven. Michael, look, he's having a conversation with Floyd right now. I mean, Michael Floyd stopped anticipating sitting down and throwing the football. And Reese threw it out deep. You can't put that on a backup quarterback saying he didn't get reps in training camp because he did. So now you've got third and long. 
And I think they're going to play this safety over top of Floyd. Try to take him out of it. Race down the middle, complete to the tight end. Eifert, he's got the first down, and he's still on his feet. They finally drag him in, drag him down inside the 30. Gain of 38. Sam Barrington finally ran him down as Eifert got in clear field. Sierra Wood in pass protection. That's the first key to this play. Sees the blitz come. I don't like him turning sideways, but look at the tight window Tommy Reese fits this into. Comes back to Eifert into a beautifully tight window. That's as accurate a throw as you can get. Big first down. Eifert, big play tight end. Proved it last year. Another example there. Reese keeps the play alive and tosses it out to Sierra Wood. Linares brings him down. So here we go. The Irish knocking on the red zone door again. With 748 left in the third. I keep going back to yardage and total offense. The Notre Dame at this point unofficially has 267 yards versus South Florida 163. So they're outgaining them by over 100 yards, yet they're being shut out. Dane Chris watching from the sidelines was the starter in the first half before Kelly made the change. You know, there's a chess match going on right now with these coaches, and what they're doing is putting him into the boundary almost every snap and forcing South Florida to make a decision. From the Bulls, 24. Reese to It's a touchdown for Michael Floyd. Reception 29, a category that he already leads all time in Notre Dame history. Exactly what I just spoke about. One on one on the edge. He's working against Jockway Jenkins. And if you've got your All American wide receiver in the red zone, one on one in press coverage, you have to throw him the football. You got to feed him. Ruffer on for the extra point. And I guess the fourth time is the charm. Kelly still talking, still barking, and Notre Dame is finally on the board for the first time in the 2011 season. And it's their All-American Michael Floyd from Tommy Reese to make it 16-7. Tired sucks. Not end of a long day tired, but middle of the day. Places to go, things to do, deadlines to meet. But all I want to do is close my eyes tired. Five-hour energy fixes tired. Fast. One shot, back to work, problem solved. Five-hour energy fix the tired. Dominate your fantasy football draft? Go to rotoworld.com for your fantasy football draft guide with customizable cheat sheets, mock drafts, and player outlooks for proven results. Rotoworld.com. Dominate your draft. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Audi Zero Five Star, 6.9 ounces, the lightest ever. By Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL by U.S. Bank, member FDIC. And by Xerox, with Xerox, you're ready for real business. Notre Dame on the board with a 24-yard touchdown reception by Michael Floyd. 
Six catches, 87 yards for him. On a touchdown drive that took just five plays and went 66 yards all through the air. Kyle Grinza kicking off. Back deep for the Bulls is Lindsey Lamar. Bennett again. Number two, Bennett again. He was the special teams player of the year from Notre Dame last year. Has a championship special teams belt to prove it. Back to the touchdown now to Floyd. When Tommy Reese identifies this safety coming up in the box and this safety rotating, he knows he's got single coverage on the edge. By the way, that corner is their third corner, Jock Wes Jenkins. Wonderful pre-snap identification and a perfect throw. And whenever you're in press, man, there's going to be some infighting. Good job, I believe, by the referees letting that play go. So South Florida starts this drive at their own 19. 16-7. Bulls lead it. And there is Lamar. Saw a lot of this when we looked at the film down in Tampa at the South Florida football complex, but no problem for Notre Dame shutting that down. Mentioned that Michael Floyd is on track to hold just about every wide receiving record in Notre Dame history. He came into the game third in career yards, needing 54 to tie Jeff Samarja as Daniel swings it out again to Lamar. And he is wrestled down to the ground by Darius Fleming. Carlo Calabrese, the inside linebacker, does a great job blowing up the halfback screen. What they like to do here is bring this guy out wide with the tackle. Watch from inside out right here, Carlo Calabrese blow this thing up. Here he is. There's the identification. He blows up the blocker, gets a piece of the ball carrier. Really good team defense there. Darius Fleming cleans it up. Brings up third and six. Notre Dame crowd waking up a little bit. Daniels fires for a first down. He's got Sterling Griffin. Gary Gray on the coverage for Notre Dame, but not before a key third down conversion. Daniels to Griffin. Good job by B.J. Daniels reading off coverage again. When they're off and soft on third down, why not use that big body wide receiver and throw it at the sticks? And Sterling Griffin with another catch. Daniels has him up to the line quickly, fakes the play action. He's got A.J. Love, and A.J. Love looking for the first down marker brought down. You know, that kid is an interesting story, Dan. You know, we talked to the coaches about A.J. Love. Sixth year. In 06, he was a red shirt, did not play. A year ago, tore his ACL in camp. They use him to block the perimeter, and they use him for big body throws. And you love to see a kid who's hurt get opportunities to come back and take advantage of it. Blacks come in. You're right, both A.J. Love. Ball start. Offense. Number 55. Five-yard penalty. Jeremiah Warren jumps off sides, but both A.J. Love and Sterling Griffin missed the season. Yep, and Griffin's got seven catches today. He's been the star of the show as far as their pass game is concerned. And Daniels a perfect three for three on this drive. He so far has avoided the big mistake, the big turnover on second and seven. Back five, right there to sniff it out is Blanton. When you miss a tackle, excuse me, when you miss a block as a wide receiver on bubble screen, you're going to get somebody blown up. Watch what happens here with Blanton. Knifes in and makes the hit. You've got as a receiver to protect the inside. Once he runs right by you like that, and that was A.J. Love who let him go by. Great job by Robert Blanton being aggressive and taking a wonderful angle. That's a loss of three, so it's third down and ten. Daniels incomplete, intended for Victor Mark. And that'll bring up a punt situation for South Florida. Yeah, Catherine Lewis Moore did a nice job forcing this ball to go out late and high. Coming off the edge, great move to the inside and now the outside. So he had nowhere he could go. From the back side they had it, from the front side they had it. Catherine Lewis Moore forced the elevation of the football. So Brockhouse Khan into punt with Theo Riddick standing back at his own 25 waiting for the fair catch ah, he bobbles it but he's able to hang on at the 34 yard line wow 
I returned punts in college. I was officially the worst punt returner in Boston College history. And look at the adjustments. He, he never gets his feet under him in a position where he's just slowly waiting for the football, jumping all over the place. Notre Dame getting on the board, but they still trail it. 16-7. The 2012 M Class continually monitors blind spots, scans the road to reveal potential threats, even helps awaken its driver if he begins to doze. So, in the blink of an eye, it will have performed more active safety measures than most cars will in a lifetime. Introducing the all new 2012 M Class, quite possibly the most advanced SUV ever from Mercedes Benz. The best or nothing. Sarah. Every day spent with you has been a gift. So here's a gift for our new life together. With over 165 years of experience, New York Life can help ensure your loved ones are always taken care of. It's the most selfless gift you can give. You know, I've been looking at the numbers, and I think our campus is spending too much money on printing. I'd like to put you in charge of cutting costs. Calm down. I know that it is not your job. What I'm saying, excuse me? All right, fine. No, you don't have to do it, okay? Notre Dame knows it's better for Xerox to control their printing costs so they can focus on winning on and off the field. Are you sure I can't? Okay, no, I get it. With Xerox, you're ready for real business. We have it in us to be the better men. We already are. Who's with me? X-Men First Class. Thursday, it's time to get back to football. A new NFL season kicks off with a meeting of the past two Super Bowl champions. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers take on Drew Brees and the Saints. NFL kickoff Thursday night on NBC. Again, Tommy Reese into the game for Dane Chris. Off to a good start, 7 to 10, 97 yards, one touchdown to Floyd, and the one interception was not his fault. It bounced off the face mask shoulder pad of T.J. Jones. So Notre Dame beginning, call it the 33-yard line with a first and 10, trailing 16-7. And Reese on the man, it's complete to Theo Riddick for a first down in the Bulls territory at the 40 after a gain of 27. Theo Riddick does a little stutter go at of the number three receiver on the inside. Boy, was that sweet. Notre Dame jumping over the ball quickly. You notice the difference in the timing since Tommy Reese has been in. Everything is on time. And they keep it on the ground. It's been a while since Wood is out of carry. But a pretty decent game close to the 35-yard line. Michael Linares brings down Wood. Now, on that previous play, the throw to Riddick, I want you to see the timing and the route. Here he is right here. It's going to be a little stutter right here and go and get in behind. This ball's got to be thrown on time where you got no shot. A little stutter, get over the top of the linebacker, boy, and you can't bring the safety in because it's thrown on time. That's beautiful. After the gain of six by Wood, you look at his numbers, approaching a 100-yard gain. Second down and four. Reese to the air, complete. Michael Floyd, and Floyd breaks clear. Out of bounds inside the 20 before John the Gist finally forces him out. But a gain of 15 from Reese to Floyd. They are taking advantage of that matchup out here. Soft and off. Give him the football now. That's Kayvon Webster misses the tackle. Floyd at 6'3", 225 is just toying with this, these guys. That's what, his seventh catch yep. of the day? And he's over 100 yards. And that's another one of those lists that he continues to climb up. Came into the game tied for second in career 100-yard games with 13. Just got his 14th. Here's what they're doing again. Into the boundary, forcing them to make some decisions. First down and 10. Just inside the 20 of South Florida. Notre Dame trailing 16-7 inside the three-minute mark of the third quarter. And they give it to Wood. And he drags and bowls with him inside the 15. Good power run by Wood. Ryan Giddens a part of the South Florida defense. They got him. Well, here is the pursuit of all the Notre Dame school records that Michael Floyd is on. Another touchdown brings his uh, already first place total to 29. Receptions now, 178, still second there. Receiving yards, he moves into the second spot. 
By the way, a career high for Sierra Wood, 19 carries, 103 yards. Second and five, Reese to the air. T.J. Jones. So to me, turnovers, red zone. What are you going to do this time? So far today, the one touchdown pass to, to Michael Floyd, the lone highlight offensively for Notre Dame. You've got to take advantage of red zone opportunities. You don't know how many you're going to get. So third down. Call it a long three. As T.J. Jones split out. Far on the bottom of your screen. Again, match up. Will he come over the top? I almost guarantee you they won't let Floyd catch a fade in the corner of the end zone this time. Race with time throws it away. Sierra Wood in the vicinity, but he didn't have many options. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that decision. You come away with Ruffer, one of the most accurate field goal kickers in college football history. I don't think Kelly's. I don't think right Brian's it. good with it though. Right. <laughs> Brian coaches his quarterbacks hard. You've got to have a little bit of a thick skin to be a quarterback here, and, and again, that's okay. So if you kick a field goal for one possession game. So this is Ruffer into attempt, a 30-yard field goal. Again, just so accurate. Coming into the game, 23 of 24. Oh, and he missed the last one of the season that he attempted last year. And he misses this one as he was trying to get another streak going. 18 for 19 last year. Here's the hold. Remember, it's a little slippery. It's either a hold or a plant foot, I would guess. Does that left foot slide a little bit? It looked like he hit it okay. I don't know. You're the golf guy. Tell me what he did wrong there. Well, he pulled it. He hooked it. <laughs> Bottom line is he missed it. 16-7. Another good thing about Geico is they've got, like, real live people working there 24-7. So, like, say you need to report a claim, right? A real person will be there to help you. Then you can use Geico.com to view photos of the damage, track your claim, print an estimate. You want an English muffin? They literally hand you a toasted muffin with butter and jam. <sighs> oh, it's tasty. That's a, that's a complete dramatization, of course, but you get my point. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. There you go, big guy. And? Wow. You've got the job. And? Stock options. Those are nice jeans. And? I can have it for. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm in a timeout because apparently riding the dog like it's a small horse is frowned upon in this establishment. Luckily, though, I, you know, I can conceal this bad boy underneath my blanket just so I can get on E-Trade, check my investment portfolio, research stocks. Wait, wh why are you taking... Oh, I see. Solitary. Just a man and his thoughts and a smartphone with an E-Trade app. Nobody knows. E-Trade. Investing Unleashed. Yes, sir, no Does smoking. Country is free, huh? Put it out. Huh? Maybe I'm I put you out. Move. Hey! That's right. You see? Thank you. Prime Suspect, coming to Thursdays at 10, 9 Central on NBC. Rare missed field goal attempt by David Ruffer. He had missed just one time in his entire career here until he just missed a 30 yarder sets up bj daniels in the bulls at the 20. daniels is just knocked down for a huge loss ethan johnson the leading active sacker for notre dame coming into this game was a part of the pressure but a loss of six and the key here was in the secondary looking for a deep crossing route comes off play action which is what they're big on but this crossing route here is covered Pulls it down. Great job by Ethan Johnson forcing it back up in there. Second down and 16. And the South Florida is backed up inside its own 15. Daniels with pressure again. This time gets it away. And A.J. Love's got a first down. Look at that. Helmet came flying off B.J. Daniels. I love the patience and timing on this route here. It's just a curl route. 
He's going to wait. Sits him down right in the hole, right there. Wide open in the zone. Good patience and timing by Daniels. He's played a pretty, pretty clean game so far. First down and 10 for Daniels. And a give is to Daryl Scott. And that brings us to the end of a swift moving third quarter after we waited some two hours for it to begin. So Tommy Reese in for Notre Dame has produced their first points of the game. The end of three, 16-7 South Florida, watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Time Olympic gold medalist and defending champion Sean White joins Paul Rodriguez as they rip up Salt Lake City at the Toyota Challenge. Coverage begins next Saturday on NBC. Hi. Starting right now, everything's on sale at Raymour and Flanagan. It's the Labor Day sale. Sealy and Serta Queen sets just $3.99. Save $2.50 on Stearns and Foster, up to $500 on Simmons. Plus, we carry Tempur-Pedic. Get interest refinancing till 2015. No money down. Free next day delivery, set up an old mattress removal. The Labor Day sale going on now at Raymour and Flanagan. Everything's on sale. The original Labor Day silence sale is on. It's a sensation. Take advantage of the last silence sale of the year. Thousands and thousands of vehicles are clearly marked with sensational silence sale pricing. Shop when we're closed Sunday and Monday, then save like never before on Tuesday and Wednesday. Shh, it's the Labor Day silence sale. At Burdick Chevy, Burdick Ford, and everywhere in Driver's Village. Senior homeowners have been feeling anxious about money lately. The good news is that you can do something about it now with Home Equity Relief. Stop the worry and stay in your home. Find out how much money you can receive every month with a reverse mortgage. I'm just one of half a million seniors that sleeps better at night. It's true. A government-backed reverse mortgage stops the concern about money and keeps you self-reliant. After Phil died, my home equity release covered missing Social Security payments and kept me safely in our house. Maybe you should re-examine this government-insured program, too. Be smart enough to look for yourself. Receive our new information kit when you qualify. Only Comfortable Retirement offers home equity release, the new reverse mortgage program designed for active seniors. Lock in the cash value of your biggest asset and maintain your independence. After all your hard work, you're entitled to a comfortable retirement and never having a mortgage payment again. Jim Kenyon, only on the networks of CNY Central. For those of you tuning in to see Game Time tackling the pass that will be seen in its entirety immediately following the conclusion of this game, which again was delayed by weather after the first half. Second down and nine for South Florida as we begin the fourth quarter. Notre Dame trailing by nine. Daniels close to the first down to Sterling Griffin. And a flag comes in. Wow. Yeah, they're going to call him on a late hit over there. Gary Gray puts the big hit and he's soft and off. This is a good read by the quarterback B.J. Daniels. Notre Dame shifted late. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense number four. 15-yard penalty, first down. So Gray's going to drive on the football. It's well thrown right at the sticks. He's out of bounds right there. I've been in that position as a defensive back before. When a guy's skirting the sideline like that, trying to stay in, it's difficult not to hit him. You don't know it. Eh, maybe he was out. I always try to defend those D-backs. I know you do. Clearly out. Regardless, an inopportune time for a penalty. So South Florida now with a first and 10. And they're at the Notre Dame 42. Daniels swings it out over the head of A.J. Love. And that'll bring a second down and 10. Yeah, good job by Jamar Slaughter coming over top. B.J. Daniels, we mentioned in the first half, which was a long time ago, that he did take a trip to South Bend when he competed for the South Florida basketball team. His parents, Bruce and Rhonda, from Tallahassee, made the trip driving in a car all the way from 
Tallahassee. They picked up the grandparents in Daytona, and they picked up his uncle in North Carolina as this pass is batted down at the line of scrimmage. And his uncle played basketball at Auburn with Charles Barkley. So all of those guys in one car making the trip up, driving from Tallahassee to watch B.J. play. I, I hope they're enjoying it. And when they get in this set, it's a lot of halfback screen. They put a slot receiver in there at the halfback position, Joel Miller. Incomplete in another big third down situation on the plus side of the 50. They like to the sprint out of this formation to the field with all these receivers front side. Daniel Spires and it's complete and getting the first down Andreas Shields. And he is slow to get up. Gain of 11. Good job sneaking Shields into the flat underneath coverage. It was third and long. And this little check down worked out pretty well. Here he is. All he's going to do is come out here. And once he gets the ball in the flat, everybody's inside on coverage. That's an inside out job for the linebacker. He gets there late. That's actually the nickel safety, Jamara Slaughter, excuse me. And then at the end, we had an injury. Andreas Shields mm. tackled there. Never like to speculate. Shields with his first catch of the game big one that gives South Florida the first down redshirt junior another one of those players Mike that stayed in Tampa I mean you look at the roster of South Florida and it's just amazing how many players from the state of Florida on the South Florida roster then you look at Notre Dame and of course all over the country West Coast Midwest East Coast just another tribute to uh, the job that Skip Holtz and the staff are doing if, if you can recruit at home in the state of Florida, you're going to be a good football team. So from the Notre Dame 30, already up 16-7. And keep it on the ground to Murray. And Murray with a good game. Good cut block that time. Joel Miller on the nickel linebacker, Zeke Mata. Watch it up, up outside. You can't see it on this but you'll see it as the play progresses. Zeke Mata right here gets cut. Good job by the slot receiver. That allows him to turn the football upfield. And again, it's Murray. Murray for first down yardage. Well inside the Notre Dame 20 after a gain of six. And this Daniels is just a complete different player. You talked about it at the outset, how inconsistent he was last year. And again, we mentioned this is the first year that he's had the same offense. The same offensive coordinator after two different coordinators in his first two years as the quarterback. Murray again with a good game. Interesting what Skip Holtz is doing right now. And let's face it, he's challenging Notre Dame with the run game. Todd Fitch, the offensive coordinator. They've made a decision collectively right now to run the clock. Once the minute Ruffer missed the field goal, it stayed a two possession game, two touchdown game. Excuse me, a two score game. Right now, they're up nine points and knocking on the door again. Second down, long seven. So milk the clock and get points out of it and put the pressure on Notre Dame. Murray again with Ryan. First and goal, South Florida. Jim Morris Slaughter finally brought him down, but he got 12. The right tackle Eaton and beat up on Aaron Lynch a little bit. The, the heralded recruit. Check this out right here. When Terrace Eatman, he gets it. They keep it on the ground on first and goal. And this time Notre Dame is there to force him back. That was Murray again. Remember earlier in the game, it seems like hours and hours ago, they tried to quick snap Notre Dame and they had him, but they didn't snap the football. That time they did. But Notre Dame ready for it. Second and goal. 13th play of this drive. Okay, he's got man coverage out on both corners. Whistles stop the play as a flag comes in. Conversation here because two there was movement on both sides, I believe. The nose tackle for Notre Dame twitched. There is no foul on the play. 
The players reacted to a whistle in the stands. I, I don't know about that one. <laughs> That's like, we're not I sure don't we should have blown Kelly a whistle. doesn't know about it either. We're, we're going to try that one over, fellas. Now, what do you do with the play clock? They put it back to 25. I think Lewis Nix twitched a little bit, but never jumped offside. Daniels in control. Second and goal from the Notre Dame three. The fake. Daniels is going to run it himself. Down to the one. Third and goal. Manti Tail there to meet him. Zone read. Darius Fleming kept contained that time. Zone read. Keep. So here's Fleming. He can't lose contain. He doesn't. He plays off the block. Does an excellent job forcing it back inside. So a big play. In the first few minutes of this fourth quarter. Can the Irish defense stop the touchdown and make the Bulls attempt a field goal as Daniels wants to talk it over with Holtz? South Florida, that is their first time out. First the time out. And we'll take a break as well. South Florida on the doorstep of, the, of another score in South Bend, already lead it by nine. So, how smart is your business security system? Is it lean? Is it efficient? Is your system a catalyst for new opportunities? Can it help your whole operation run better, safer, faster? Can it help optimize your business? So, how smart is it? Is it ADT smart? ADT Business Solutions. Security is just the start. What if we told you that Cadillac borrowed technology from Ferrari to develop its suspension system? Or what if we told you that Ferrari borrowed technology from Cadillac to develop its suspension system? Magnetic ride control, pioneered by Cadillac, perfected in the 556 horsepower CTS-V. We don't just make luxury cars, we make Cadillacs. It seems everyone is saying they have the best unlimited plan. Here's the truth. AT&T and Verizon give you unlimited text and talk, but charge you extra for going over two gigabytes of data. T-Mobile claims they're unlimited, but use your phone a lot and they slow down your data speed. With Sprint, you don't get charged extra, you don't slow down, and you get unlimited data, text, and calling to any mobile for only $79.99. The best unlimited plan wins. Huge play in this game coming up. 14th play of this drive, third and goal at the one, in a drive that's already taken about five minutes off the clock. They're gonna spread them out a little bit, which I thought they do. Try and get an open formation. They've got a run ability back this way, and they only have 10 players. That's that, that might help. Yeah, that might help. Adjustment here. Down to 15 on the play clock. Plenty of time. Spreading out of the field was Evan Landy, and now Flat right. comes in. Evil substitution. Offense uh, number nine, five-yard penalty, third down. That was Landy that came sprinting onto the field for South Florida. Boy, does that change things. Third and goal from just inside the one-yard line to back at third and goal on six, at, at six. E.J. Daniels highly frustrated. They're having a conversation about personnel groupings over there. Trying to get the right people in the game. Costly time for a oh, mistake. Yeah, that yeah. was just a personnel yeah. error on the part of the Bulls. So third and goal. Daniels floats it up to the end zone. That was Griffin trying to get it incomplete. And a flag comes in as Gary Gray was on the coverage. South Florida did to Notre Dame what Notre Dame's been doing with Michael Floyd. They went three to the front side. They put their best receiver, Sterling Griffin, into the boundary. That's and interference. Defense number four. Since the penalty occurred in the end zone, the ball will be placed at the two-yard line. First down. Pre-snap, they knew they had man-to-man. -man. Good. Right there, you're good. But if the ball's in the air, you can't be pushing. Once the ball gets in the air, it's in now. Hands can't be on. The other thing you've got to do is turn around and locate the football, which he never did. So the ball is down, first and goal now at about the two-yard line. Daniels is going to run it, and he flips it into the end zone for the touchdown. 
Kevin Landy, the guy that came in with the illegal substitution with a touchdown catch. And that's a mismatch. He was a wide receiver last year, a tight end this year. He's working on inside linebacker Carlo Calabrese. Calabrese has good coverage, but he can't find the football. It's just that little route right there. Good coverage, has no idea where the football is, and Landy makes the adjustment. Calabrese does not. Just got turned around at the wrong time. But Nanny on to attempt the extra point to make it 23-7. South Florida with 11.05 left in the game. 14 plays, 80 yards, which took off more than five minutes. And again, Calabrese, it's a mismatch. He's got great coverage, but he's not used to having the final football. It's 23-7, Bolts. Look at all this stuff for coffee. Oh, there's tons. French presses, espresso tampers, filters. It can get really complicated. Not nearly as complicated as shipping it, though. I mean, shipping is a hassle. Not with priority mail flat rate boxes from the Postal Service. If it fits, it ships anywhere in the country for a low flat rate. That is easy. Best news I've heard all day. I'm so amped. I mean, not amped, excited. I mean, that's sort of amped, really kind of in between. Have you ever thought about decaf? You think that'll help? Yeah. Priority mail flat rate shipping starts at just $4.95, only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. Chloe is nine months old. <laughs> she is the greatest thing ever. One little smile, one little laugh. Anybody? <laughs> we would do anything for her. My name is Kim Bryant, and my husband and I made a will on LegalZoom. It was really easy to do. <laughs> <laughs> we created LegalZoom to help you take care of the ones you love. Go to LegalZoom.com today and complete your will in minutes. At LegalZoom.com, we put the law on your side. An Irish blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. We are the University of Notre Dame. I just couldn't help myself. I make more money than my father. Don't let the fluffy tales fool you. Call the police. You killed the wrong guy. The Playboy Club, coming to Mondays, 10, 9 central on NBC. Evan Landy, the guy that ran out of the field as what turned out to be the 12th man. <laughs> A little different than the Texas A&M tradition, however. So Landy ends up making the two-yard touchdown reception from B.J. Daniels. And Marvin Kloss set to kick off. 11.05 left in the game. Notre Dame trailing by 16. And coming out is Austin Collinsworth. And he is banged down just across the 20-yard line. Huge hit there made by Mike June. Here's the sequence now. Here comes Landy now. He's the 12th man. And that's an illegal substitution call. At that point, check this out. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Look ten, at eleven. You and here comes twelve straight. right there. I have never done that before, and I can't believe it worked. <laughs> well done. And then, of course, you come back off that, and they throw him a touchdown pass. <laughs> That's just an amazing turn of events. So the mountain that Notre Dame has to climb just got even higher. 23-7 as Reese. Fires across the middle, and that one is dropped. Theo Riddick had a chance. Should he have had this one? Oh, are you kidding me? I mean, I'm not sure why he looked like he was mad at somebody. Oh. You can't throw that any better in a flag football game. I mean, that's put right on him. Catch the football. I mean, there's nowhere else for Notre Dame to point the finger other than at themselves. And I give South Florida a ton of credit for taking advantage. There are a lot of players on Notre Dame's sideline that have made critical mistakes. Tommy Reese just came into the second half. He's been pretty solid, hasn't made a huge mistake yet. Michael Floyd with the reception. Again, the interception that he tossed wasn't his fault. Came off the body of T.J. Jones. You know, the one thing I would say, Dan, is at 23 to 7, the differential obviously is 16 which could be two touchdowns with two two-point conversions. That's the way Notre Dame's got to be thinking. 
third and four from the 30. And Reese complete to Floyd. And that is the ninth reception for Michael Floyd. And he moves past Jeff Samarja. Just another record for Michael Floyd. 180 career receptions, the most in Notre Dame history. And this time it's incomplete. Reese was looking for TJ Jones. And as Notre Dame gets ready on second down and 10, today's first down line brought to you by Xerox. 10.05 left. In the season opener for Notre Dame and South Florida, first ever meeting between these two teams. Please reset the game clock to 10 minutes, 14 seconds. So what's going on now? South Florida, the last two plays have rushed three and dropped eight. So they're going to bleed the clock. And Tommy Reese and Notre Dame's got to get the football. Well, Ten, look a, at the clock, 10.05. By itself, it went to 10:41. Maybe that the, had something to do with leprechaun? lightning strikes. Maybe the gremlin. <laughs> I don't know. Seen a little bit of everything. That's bizarre. We had a first down marker that, that wouldn't move. Lightning. Now, again, Notre Dame has got to start getting the football down the field at least to intermediate length. A lot of time. Ten minutes left, but you need two scores, two conversions, and several defensive stops in between. Reese with time incomplete, and Tyler Eifert was interfered there by Quentin Washington. Pass interference, defense number two, ball be placed at the spot of the foul, first down. Really thought he was become one of their better defensive players. Here he is right here. He's going to redirect, he's playing zone, reads, coming back out, and makes the hit too early. I think he's become a more physical and tough player since they played Miami last year. He's elevated his game. Ball spotted at the 39, first and 10. Reese to the air again. Floyd gets up and grabs it for a first down. Another example of what he can do. Six feet three, 224 pounds. Climbs up above the defender and hauls it down. And there's going to be safety help over the top here. He puts this up real high, and this is one guy beating two. Michael Floyd beat Jarrell Young and the corner Washington, and this is what you're going to have to do. Just throw the football up to the big fellow and hope he can bail you out. Into South Florida territory, 137-yard day for Floyd, and that is Eifert complete just short of the first down. Michael Floyd was reinstated to the team after the DUI arrest, which came after two previous citations for underage drinking as they're working on B.J. Daniels on the sideline. But it was Brian Kelly who thought about it long and hard and decided that Michael Floyd should be given another chance after he was convinced that Michael Floyd had changed his life. So here he is, a junior now. Many thought he might go to the NFL last year, but electing to stay at Notre Dame. Got a linebacker bumping him. They want him out of the game. Reese with pressure and he gets it to Floyd. And another first down. They had D.D. Lattimore, the weak side linebacker, all the way out on him just so they couldn't throw the football. They're trying to take him out of the football game. He can't let Floyd in the inside. Floyd takes it away. Lattimore reaches with the wrong arm, and Michael Floyd right now is dominating this game. Yeah, on his way to a monster game. Floyd, 11 receptions, 146 yards. Already the touchdown from Reese. So another first and 10 for Notre Dame at the 21. Reese going to the end zone over the head of Floyd. A reminder, because of the weather delay, for those of you who are tuning in to see game time tackling the past, it will be seen in its entirety immediately after this game is over. My, Michael Floyd's looking for something. He's going to the sideline. He's been giving hand signals to Brian Kelly. I've watched everything since that last snap. He's asking for the football. Well, with the way he's going, I'd give it to him. And 
this has got Jones. First and goal, Notre Dame. Sam Barrington with a stop. They sprinted away from Michael Floyd that time. Took advantage of the defense with so much effort on Floyd. Just a good throw and catch. And if you bang this in the end zone now, you're back in the football game. Greece, 12 of 18. Replacing Dane Christie went the entire first half. Kelly made the change. And Reese with a chance here in first and goal. Double team up at the top on Floyd. He can't throw to him. Complete down to about the one yard line to Riddick. Second and goal. Good to see Riddick hold on to the football. He's had a tough day both as a punt returner and a receiver. Took a hard hit and held on to the football. Player down on the field for South Florida. And that is number eight, John Legist. And this was a rocket by Tommy Reese. Tommy throws everything on time. Bang, it's out. He put it right on his number. Legist, one of the biggest hitters I've seen in the entire country. And we watched tape the other day, and everybody talks about the, the hit Legist had against Louisville a year ago, which was a, a highlight hit. But every tape I put on, the kid had a big hit. He, he's a tough, tough kid. Well, Michael Floyd has been an integral part of the second half, hooking up with Tommy Reese. All of this action from the second half. Here's the touchdown. Tommy reads correctly on that, and here we go again. Double coverage, he puts it up high. Safety Jarrell Young can't get there. He beats the linebacker, D.D. Lattimore, inside. They're double teaming him consistently in the second half, yet Michael Floyd continues to dominate. 11 receptions tonight, ties a career high. Floyd moved on campus this year. He is in Dillon Hall, and he moved into a, a room surrounded by four freshmen. <laughs> How would you like to be checking into Notre Dame your first year and you got Michael Floyd living with you, but I look at it the other way. How'd you like to be Michael Floyd <laughs> as a senior and you're surrounded by four freshmen? Well, that was a part of the plan to change his life. Get him on campus. Get him in Dillon Hall. I thought he had a pretty cool attitude about it. You know, he hangs out with him occasionally and uh, he showed some humility in his situation. And, and if this kid wants to be a high draft pick and, and go on to the next level, he's going to have to show that kind of humility. And Brian Kelly says that's what makes Notre Dame life distinct. The players in with the halls here on campus. Sierra Wood trying to get in on second and goal. There was a lot of scramble for the there. football. Yep. And the whistle didn't get blown for a long time. He got close to the goal line. Corey Griffin, good job inside, as does Julius Forte. They're trying to strip him from behind. You can see Jacquez Jenkins. Third and goal. And this time, Will is in for the touchdown. So do you go for two? I think you have to. There it is, real good push on the left side. In, in, in my opinion, there's no doubt here. You got to go for two. You don't know how many possessions you have left in this ball game, Dan. 23-13. Again, it would make it 23-15. Get them to within another touchdown and another two-point conversion. Hey, let's go into overtime and stay here all night. Hey. I'm, in, I'm in. The lights are on. I'm in. So Notre Dame is going to, looks like they want the ball on the hash. You have the option in college football to place it anywhere between the hashes on the three-yard line. So you, that, by definition, gives you a wide side of the field. And guess what they're going to do, of course, there's, is they're going to put our guy Floyd. into the short side of the field and say, are you going to put two guys on him or not? If you do... I'm out. Notre Dame, that is our first time out of the half. Kelly is blowing his stack again. If you can read French, watch out. But but he basically said, what are you doing? I just set everything up. Why are we doing that? Now, I, I, I would submit that the more important thing right now is to get a good play called and ensure that you get the two points. Doesn't matter who messed up there. Now you got now you got to get a play called and score, score a two-point conversion. I understand his frustration, though, because it's a time management issue right now. You're down 10, hoping to make it 8, and you need all your timeouts. So 
So again, they're going to set up a situation with the ball on the three yard line near hash. If you want to double team Michael Floyd, that's going to leave a one on one elsewhere. And that's the read that this young kid, Tommy Reese, has to make. Here's Floyd. And here's the two point conversion for Notre Dame to make it 23 15 with seven and a half minutes left in the final quarter. Reese with a quick strike and it's knocked down. Flags come in from Flags all everywhere. directions. I don't know what that was. Oh, I know what that is. Oh, that, that was a hole in the slot receiver, I believe. There are two fouls by South Florida on the play. Offside, defense number 36, personal foul, face mask, number 36. <laughs> what, the one penalty will be enforced, half the distance to the goal. Repeat the try. Both of them on Sam Barrington, who basically mugged the slot receiver, Riddick. He's offside because his foot is in the neutral zone. And then he's going to hold and face mask right there. Obvious call. And now the ball will be put on the one and a half yard line, and Notre Dame gets a retry. Two point conversion has taken as long as the <laughs> weather delay after the first half. You got one on one here now. No help. Reese to floor. Incomplete. You got to throw that in bounds. You, you can't, even if he came down with it, he was out of bounds. That's a young quarterback's mistake there. He went to the right guy, but you got to throw it up high in the corner and let your best player make a play. Good job by Quentin Washington getting hands on. But look, he goes up to catch it. Even if he comes down with it, he's out of bounds. It's got to go back by the back pylon, not where it goes. So with that key two-point conversion, Notre Dame's going to need a couple of scores late in the game. USA Prime Credit. My name Peggy. You have problem? Peggy? Okay. Lost my card. Need a replacement sent to my hotel tomorrow. One month. Let's try this again. Do you believe in yourself? Yes. I believe in you too, Peggy. You could be my go-to guy. Or girl. Now stand tall and get out to replace my card. You inspire me. Three weeks. Okay, let's start over. Want better customer service? Switch to Discover. Ranked number one in customer loyalty. It pays to Discover. I've been riding since I was 17. Flat out my whole life. Ran into a pretty serious medical issue. I was prescribed one drug one place, another somewhere else. Turns out if I'd have taken both drugs together, I'd have been in real trouble. But United Healthcare spotted the danger and warned my pharmacist in time. We only get one shot, and I want to leave this life exhausted. We're more than 78,000 people looking out for 70 million Americans. That's health in numbers. United Healthcare. Now, when you want powerful Wi Fi, you've got it. With a Verizon Mobile Hotspot, you can connect up to five Wi Fi devices to the internet with lightning fast Verizon 4G LTE speed. A gaming device, e reader, MP3 player. Connect any five for Wi-Fi on the go. Get the 4G LTE mobile hotspot now for only $49.99. Verizon is the place with the largest selection of 4G LTE devices on America's fastest, most advanced 4G network. Brings up to kick off for Notre Dame with 7.35 left in the fourth. Notre Dame needing two scores here to try to pull even with South Florida. Lindsey Lamar back deep. South Florida has the hands team in just in case. Just in case of an onside kick, but brings it, boots it to Lamar, brings it out from the one. And Lamar with a good return. As we remind you to turn to verses before every Notre Dame game, where we'll get you ready for kickoff and following every game. Head back to verses for a breakdown of all the action. We've got Notre Dame Saturday covered not only here on NBC, but on verses as well. Okay, we just heard from Alex Flanagan while we were away down on the sidelines that B.J. Daniels has been fighting through cramps and he hurt his hamstring a little bit before the end of the first half. 
They're going to look to run the football. I'm not sure how, how athletic he can be on the edge right now. And Alex Tonis has been on the bike repeatedly trying to loosen up. Demetrius Murray gets the call. Notre Dame there to stop him for a loss. Ethan Johnson, one of the first to get to him. Notre Dame with a couple of timeouts left as the clock rolls on, approaching the seven-minute mark. Can't panic here. Seven minutes, you get a three and out, and you still have a great chance here if you're Notre Dame. Michigan. South Florida, every first down extent just shortens this game. Score the roll by there. Michigan, the Notre Dame opponent next week, getting the victory over Western Michigan. Loose to Notre Dame Sports right now as they are down to South Florida. The Bulls at the 30 on second and 12. And Daniels tosses it to Murray. And he gets across the 35-yard line. Harrison Smith with a stop, but a flag comes in. I think we got an unsportsmanlike. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 90 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Ethan Johnson. That's killer. You want to talk about just continuing to hurt yourself. Here's Ethan right there. Why jump on him there? He's down. I mean, that's losing your composure. That, that's a, instead of a third down situation where you got a chance to get the football back, they're now on your 48-yard line with a first down. And that's a senior, a guy that's played in, well, now his 39th game here at Notre Dame with many, a penalty. How many penalties has there been on Notre Dame today? So that moves the ball into Notre Dame territory at the 48. And South Florida with a first and 10. And they keep it on the ground to Murray. Makes his way inside the 45. To answer your question, Mike, eight penalties for 72 yards for the Irish. Almost double what they averaged last year, which was four and a half. Most of them key penalties. One took a touchdown off the board. Brian Kelly has got to be as frustrated as he's ever been in his career. Penalties, turnovers, everything you tell your team and your staff before the season starts, especially in the opening game. And I'm a coach's son. That's what I remember that when I was a kid, my dad talking about opening game. Penalties, turnovers, Drop tackling balls. and special teams. Drop balls. Murray as the Bulls keep it on the ground on second and six. Darius Fleming brings him down. There's got the freshman Aaron Lynch in yep. there as well. You see him. 6'6, 265. King Coral, Florida. Fabio Diaco, the defensive coordinator, calls him a compelling player. That's well, better right. be for the right now. Yep. Committed to Florida State. Here we go. Big play here. Play clock down to four. Daniels is going to eat some time. And carried it along the left side short of the first down. Fleming is there. Daniels effectively on one leg. Trying to make a play. Notre Dame takes their second time out. Just one left for the Irish. Trailing by 10 with just 444 left. Six point nine is a breakthrough. Six point nine is a physics lesson. Six point nine is the outer limit. Six point nine is an explosion. Point nine is ounces, and that makes this the lightest ever. You know, I've been looking at the numbers, and I think our campus is spending too much money on printing. I'd like to put you in charge of cutting costs. Calm down. I know that it is not your job. What I'm saying, excuse me? All right, fine. No, you don't have to do it, okay? Notre Dame knows it's better for Xerox to control their printing costs so they can focus on winning on and off the field. Are you sure I can't? Okay, no, I get it. With Xerox, you're ready for real business.
see you before you see them. Cops are cracking down on drinking and driving. Drive sober or get pulled over. Next Saturday on Versus, top-ranked TCU takes on Air Force, and legendary USC welcomes Utah to the Pac-12. TCU and Air Force, Utah at USC. Next Saturday, only on Versus. Notre Dame football is brought to you by ADT Security Services, always there. By the U.S. Postal Service. By Sprint, all together. And by LegalZoom.com, we put the law on your side. Notre Dame has played 122 season openers in its history and have only lost 15. Wow. Since they started playing football back in 1887 in South Florida, from Tampa, Florida, on the verge of knocking them off in 2011. On fourth and two, the Bulls punt it away and calling for the fair catch at the nine yard line. A bit of another adventure for Theo Riddick, but he hangs on. It's been a night of adventures for Theo Riddick back there. He dropped the first one. Made a great catch on one he probably shouldn't have caught after that. I, I think he's had trouble just adjusting to the football. Late foot. I, I think he's late with his feet getting under the ball. Too much body movement. All right, Daniel. 437 left. One timeout. Down 10 points. It doesn't matter if you get the touchdown or the field goal first, but you got to get one you gotta of them. You got to get two scores. You got to get two scores. So you need one of them, and then you got to kick on sides and go get it. One timeout left. Tommy Reese undefeated in his four games last year as a freshman. Feels the pressure, steps up, and he's going to run it out of bounds. Hit Florida, South Florida only brought four that time. I think you're going to see a combination of them bringing three, bringing four, maybe occasionally bringing just a little pressure to keep them honest. Skip Holtz and his entire staff has done a wonderful job, I believe. And their kids feel like they're every bit as good as Notre Dame or any BCS program. This was a program that, for the first six years of its existence, operated out of a trailer in Tampa. In fact, they nicknamed it the Ponderosa. <laughs> Being suspended because of weather conditions. Oh. With 421 left, we just heard the public address announcer a few moments ago warn the crowd that more weather was approaching. And again, this was the second bit of weather that we did expect to come through South Bend after the first one delayed the resumption of the second half for a couple of hours. Look, I give Skip credit. Look at him. He's not upset. He can't control it. He's going to go get his guys now. He wants to hear what's going on. And so now the public address announcer is once again running down all the buildings on campus here in South Bend that the fans can take shelter. Brian Kelly and his team head of the locker room for the second time because of weather. And we're put on hold with the Bulls up by 10. This is crazy. Building towards a compelling finish. Not only the first initial weather delay in Notre Dame history, but we've got another one. <laughs> and Alex Flanagan has been all over Notre Dame Stadium this afternoon and tonight. Oh, Dan, it's a crazy scene down here. I'm just walking in uh, back in the tunnel with some of the players, and there's a lot of confusion going on. They're looking at their coaches saying, wait, is, is this the end? Is, this, is it over? Nobody seems to know exactly. We did hear on the PA uh, down here on the field. They gave the code uh, instructing the ushers to evacuate the stadium. They've been waiting on this other cell to come through that's supposed to have some high winds and some severe lightning. So they're taking the precautions necessary to make sure that nobody uh, gets hurt by the storm. And so we'll start this process all over again. Well, Mike, we've had a monitor in our booth here dedicated to the Weather Channel's radar. And there is some mean green looking stuff coming in you, you from know, no, the west. No offense to the Weather Channel, but I'm tired of this thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, and okay, we're right here again. I, I, we're right in here somewhere. Uh, I, I don't know. I've, I've never seen something like this. Not once, but twice. What's the What's the Notre Dame saying? 
Shake down the thunder. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a literal song. translation. Yeah. You're taking some li liberties with. Man. Wow. Is that frustrating? You know, we had a pretty good game going in the second half. Notre Dame missed opportunities. South Florida just continuing to close the door. When Ruffer missed that chip shot field goal. 30, 30 yards. yards. That would have made it a one possession game. Let's go down and check in with Alex Flanagan. Hey, Mike, well, I know it's a little frustrating uh, with the game here going in and out and the weather delays, but remember, you know, there's been a number of incidences related to weather, and I think officials here, Jack Swarbrick, the AD, of course, has to be sensitive. As I'm standing here talking to you, the winds are beginning to really swirl, but it, remember Declan Sullivan last year, the tragic, unfortunate death of a Notre Dame student because of weather and high winds, and then more recently at the Indiana State Fair, remember during a concert, weather came through, nobody was expecting it, a tornado hit, and a number of people were killed there so I think given the past those recent experiences that Jack Swarbrick and everybody here at the Notre Dame Stadium is really uh, taking this serious and taking the necessary precautions when it comes to weather. Absolutely Alex. In fact uh, the family of Declan Sullivan a part of the uh, flag presentation before the game here at Notre Dame with a couple of other families the videographer who lost his life. Uh, last year, last October. And so no way they want to get this many people in any kind of possible uh, further weather danger. So the second delay, fans uh, filing out. With the South Florida Bulls on top by 10 with 421 to go. Well, Mike, uh, I swooped in here on the telecast with uh, Tom Hammond covering the World Track and Field Championships in South Korea and uh, brought you some bad weather luck. I'm sorry about that. It's okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I love the game of football. If we get to finish this thing, I'm a happy guy. I just uh, I felt like we finally had a football game here in the second half, and, and I did feel like Ruffers missed field goal, uh, which would have brought them back within six points at that point and really made it a different kind of game. And then South Florida took the ball, went 70 some yards and ran five minutes off the clock. Uh, to Notre Dame's credit, they were able to rally and, and score again. But uh, the missed two point conversion. And again, for me, Tommy Reese had an opportunity to make a play there. He threw it too wide. And, you know, Michael Floyd's played great. But at the end of the day, they've imploded. And let's face it, South Florida's taking advantage of it and outplayed him in every phase. Based on what you saw from Tommy Reese coming in for Dane Chris, good decision by Brian Kelly to, to make the, the change? Yeah, I, I think it was the right decision. I really do, and, and especially in hindsight. You take a look at that. Tommy played well. Ball came out on time. He was very accurate. He helped bring them back. Uh, my only criticism, again, is that two-point conversion where you've got to give your playmaker a chance to make a play. You can't throw it out of bounds. Public address announcer just announcing to the crowd here, or the crowd that has left here, that it is a 30-minute delay. There was a more than two-hour delay of the first one. And so you see a lot of the students still hanging out, waiting. Skip Holtz will wait a little longer to try to pick up, which I would have to believe might be the sweetest victory of his uh, college coaching career you'd have to think if he's able to hang on and if we're able to get this in a little bit later on from Notre Dame Stadium another weather delay at South Bend with the Bulls up by 10. You and I got a lot in common. Really? You're tied to a chair and I'm here with a gun in my hand. I knew I'd find it. He's like a father to me, right? If you don't do this, it's a dead man. Then he's gonna come back for me. And when he does, he's your worst nightmare. Now the drums are off. All right, let's finish this. What are you doing? Let me keep my watch back. Killer Elite, rated R. Start September 23rd. One, two, three, hit me! A jump start for your game, not your nerves. Watch me! Proven push, stamina in a bottle, the original Gatorade. And thirst quenching protein that helps restore your body while cooling you down. Prime, perform, recover. The G Series from Gatorade. We love ordering sushi, but it was getting expensive. So to save some money. Looks great, huh? And we're not real proud of this. No, we're not. 
We, um... Have you guys seen Captain Stewie and Little Miss Neptune? Did you look all over the place under your desk? All around? They're fish. They live in a bowl. What are you gonna do? There's an easier way to save. Whatever. Get online. Go to Geico.com. Get a quote. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Tomorrow, only 100 remain as the second leg of the PGA Tour playoffs begin. The Deutsche Bank Championship tomorrow live on Golf Channel and at 3 on NBC. It's 1 versus 100. Four minutes, 21 seconds left in the fourth quarter when the second weather delay hits here at Notre Dame Stadium. The Bulls lead by 10, so we take a break, send it to our Notre Dame studio in New York with Liam McHugh. Again, we'll wait here at Notre Dame Stadium for another resumption of play. Dan, thanks so much. Mother Nature, the big star of this game so far. Liam McHugh alongside Doug Flutie. 421 remaining. Another weather delay. South Florida leading a 23-13. Skip Holt's homecoming game. We knew emotions would be high. Are you surprised that Notre Dame seems to be the team that's sloppy and South Florida is poised? I really am. I mean, the South Florida kids, no crucial penalties, no turnovers. It was Notre Dame with the crucial turnovers that take points off the board. Bad penalties. Even once they gain the momentum, Defensively took two personal fouls that cost them first downs and moving the football for South Florida took crucial time off the clock and again a two score lead. And you see Brian Kelly clearly fired up throughout this game. Regardless of what happens though down the stretch in this one do you think Notre Dame has solved their quarterback situation is it going to be Tommy Reese going forward? I, I believe so Tommy looks very relaxed. Very comfortable. Tommy's throwing a ball on rhythm, on time. Well, according to Brian Kelly, as we've seen on the sideline, he thinks he's missed some reads. But overall, he's moved the ball well enough to win this game and come back. However, they didn't polish off one drive, and defensively, they haven't come up with enough stops. So it could be Tommy Reese under center next week when they take Absolutely. on the Michigan Wolverines. Speaking of those Wolverines, another team dealing with weather issues today. Brady Hoke making his Wolverines debut as Michigan was taking on Western Michigan, getting some help from his defense midway through the second. Pass deflected, and Brandon Heron is going the other way. Look at the stride on him. I mean, this was all set up from pressure on the quarterback, deflecting the pass, getting it in the air. Great job of catching the ball and finishing this off and we'll see this again 94 yards just like South Bend play suspended in Ann Arbor because of lightning at the start of the second half after the delay Wolverines more defense big pressure again and who's got it Brandon Harrod taking off for his second defensive touchdown of a game I'll tell you what pressure on the quarterback can solve a lot of ills in the secondary and cause havoc then the lightning and the rain came. This game actually called in the third quarter, the final in this one, 34 to 10. As for Heron, he's first time in Wolverines history. A player has returned an interception and a fumble for a score. Michigan obviously has a lot of history, 34-10 the final. You know, number one Oklahoma will visit Florida State in a few weeks. This week, Florida State making light work of Louisiana Monroe. Second quarter, Colton Browning's pass, a little ambitious there. <laughs> a fair catch for the interception. And then E.J. Manuel, a Heisman candidate. Great job of standing in under pressure, taking a shot under the chin, and putting the ball perfectly out in front for the big touchdown. I'll tell you what, he, he is the best quarterback in the ACC. Greg Dent, the reception, he walks in the 50-yard score. Manuel, 252 yards, two TDs. Seminoles defense pitches a shutout, 34 to nothing. To Stanford and everybody's favorite architectural design major, Andrew Luck making his season debut against San Jose State late in the first quarter. Stanford at the one. Luck bootlegs right, and he's racing for the pylon. He's not supposed to be mobile. He's a pocket <laughs> pastor. He stands in there. He makes something out of nothing. Here he is, standing tall in the pocket. Beautiful corner route. That's what we like to see out of Andrew Luck. The Heisman favorite looking very comfortable in there. Stanford rolls in this one. First game of the David Shaw era is successful, 57 to three. Nebraska's in the Big Ten, which has 12 teams, and they're taking on a team from the Southern Conference. And this was the Taylor Martinez show. <laughs> Early on, a seven-yard run, and this is vintage Martinez making people miss stuff. You know, decision-making, running the option, and of course, he's got the natural athletic ability, but it's all about the decision-making of pulling the ball, reading the defensive end, reading the pitch, guy he makes the right decision and then has the athleticism to finish it off a 43 yard TD run a 47 yard TD run score one for the schedule makers Nebraska has won 26 straight openers 40 to 7 
USC and Minnesota. Matt Barkley and the Trojans opening their season against the Gophers at home. And a big day for Barkley and sophomore receiver Robert Woods. Five minutes into the second, Barkley airing one out, 43 yards and hooking up with Woods. All day to throw the ball, step into the throw, and Woods does a nice job of bodying up the defender and shielding the ball. This one got interesting. Fourth quarter, Minnesota trailing by two minutes remaining. Max Shortell's pass, not so much. No, Shortell did lead a nice drive down the field to get them in a position to have a chance, but throws a crucial interception at the end. Woods, a new USC record, 17 receptions. Houston and UCLA, Case Keenum entering his 16th, excuse me, sixth year with the Cougars. <laughs> Second quarter, Houston running back Michael Hayes showing his diligence here. That looks like Herschel Walker lowering that shoulder and running over people. Amazing effort. Keep the feet driving. When you keep your feet moving, good things will happen. So no Case Keenum in this highlight, a running highlight for Houston. You don't see that often under Kevin Sumlin. 34-yard score there. The Cougars beat UCLA final score, 38-34. Keenum did have 310 yards passing. Skip Bolt's not the only coach playing his alma mater, the Crimson Tide, opening their season at home against Kent State, where Coach Saban played football. Alabama's got themselves a new quarterback. His name's A.J. McCarron. McCarron, good timing on this throw and a nice touch on the ball up and over for the touchdown down the middle of the field. Trent Richardson here. Heisman hopeful, not big Heisman numbers, just 37 yards, but three scores. Yeah, he got in the end zone three times, but did not have a good yards per carry day. Kent State 0 for 22 all time against ranked teams. Stay in the SEC defending BCS national champion Auburn getting a scare from Utah State fourth quarter 31 28 Utah State fakes the field goal. That's a third fourth down conversion. This one's the fake field goal that leads to the touchdown to put them up by 10. Utah State is up 10 with three and a half to go. Great onside kick with a high bounce recovered by Auburn. They're off and running. So Auburn caps an eight play 56 yard drive as Michael Dyer dives into the end zone. They grab the lead for good Gene Chizik. Oh, <laughs> sigh of relief as he hugs Gary Anderson. The final in this one 42 to 38. So Auburn escapes. But right now let's head back to Dan Hicks at South Bend. Well, the rain really coming down right now at Notre Dame Stadium, the second weather delay of the season opener between South Florida and Notre Dame. The Bulls players, along with the Notre Dame players in the locker room, killing more time again with South Florida up by 10 with 421 left. Cheerleaders doing the same. And a reminder for those of you tuning in to see game time, talking with the past, that is going to be coming your way in its entirety. And when this game resumes, uh, the conclusion of it can be seen on verses. So South Florida with a 10 point lead. Another weather delay. The first evacuation of Notre Dame Stadium in history a couple times tonight with lightning striking in the area. We're going to try to get this game in. But again, tune into the movie right now on NBC. And again, we'll have the conclusion of the Notre Dame season opener on Versus a little bit later on, hopefully on Versus. So, so long for now from Notre Dame. That's our Super Bowl trophy. We call it the Lombardi Trophy. Back to football! Yeah! The past two Super Bowl champions face off. NFL kickoff Thursday night on NBC. When he enters a room, he owns the room. I put a spell on you. Look at my eyes. He sees in them what they can't see in themselves. I sit across from a man who wants to be younger. He wants to be attractive. Yes. Robert California, welcome to the office. Stop trying to figure me out. I just didn't. You can't. It's dumb. No, it's not. I know you now. He creeps me out, but I think he might be a genius. I'll put a spell on you. Jim Kenyon, investigation. Do you have any comment on his No comments. No comments. None. The tough questions. Well, I might have believed you. 
after all that evidence. Exclusive stories impacting your community. Four children were living in this squalor. You can see evidence that they did live here. Fighting to protect your family. So overall now, what do you think of this home affordable program? It's, it's a whole lie. It's wrong. Jim Kenyon Investigations, only on the networks of CNY Central. Starting right now, everything's on sale at Raymore and Flanagan. It's the Labor Day sale. Save on brand name sofas. Gorgeous dining rooms reduced. Save on luxurious bedrooms. Every style, every budget on sale. No interest till when? 2015. No money down delivered in three days or less. The Labor Day sale. It's going on right now at Raymore and Flanagan. Everything's on sale. Hey, Freddie, since we announced that Billy is buying cars, they're coming in from everywhere. Look, David's over here appraising this one right here. We, we've got a lot of vehicles. You bring your car in, we'll appraise it on the spot, we'll give you a check on the spot. We're buying cars. Forget about the gold. We're buying cars. 90s, 2000s, we'll buy an 11. Bring your car down, see one of the man.